access granted. Hey, how you doing there, folks? I hope you're well. Uh, and just to uh, take us right off the top there, let it be known throughout the land. BBC 2021 is over 9,000. So it seems, Scotty. How you doing? How you doing, my lovelies? Let me uh, just sort uh, Scotty's uh, a flax out here. Oh, hush. Hush, sorry. I thought I got everything set up. <laughs> <laughs> oops oops that part had it wasn't set up there's always something i think i've got everything else set up uh <laughs> blind by the seat of our pants aren't we that's how we do that's the new show for you how you doing guys damn 33rd flex uh for uh scotty there rolling out from under Athelene. uh <laughs> to uh to be uh on a level uh playing field so to speak um how you doing guys are you well who's here uh urchins how you doing buddy are you well thank you for coming in right away first first up in there seven how you doing uh nice emote seven that's not one you've done is it that's not one of yours uh i like the um the uh hypnotic swing on it uh so to speak <laughs> uh hit sway not swing sway um but yeah how you doing scotty squidge Atheline, how you doing? I hope you're well, guys. Welcome in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, he is immune to praise. He is. He is seven. Uh, he's um, he's like, nah, I'm kind of shit. And I'm like, mm. I suppose it's better to be good and uh, proclaim your shitness than to <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> I'm amazing. You don't know a bit like me, dear. Oh, my God. Um. Inde indeed, Af, indeed. <laughs> uh, not that time. Excellent. Well, either way, I, li I, I do like it. Um, how are you doing, guys? Um, uh, I've uh, I heard from uh, Cage uh, this morning, last night, this morning. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but he's not. He, uh, I was like, yo, Cage, um, no rush. We do just chatting for like as long as these crazy kids want to do. So don't you know don't rush out on uh you know for my benefit um but uh yesterday he was like no no i'll be there on time but um you know it's where it, he'll turn up when he turns up uh but how you doing guys i hope you well i think everything's sorted on my end um but tell me how are you doing uh yes ha happy tuesday have you recovered from your weekend squidge uh and uh scotty um well i know you probably can't talk at the minute because you've just started work hopefully your first day uh went well sir well, I say you just started work. I guess you're, um, I think you said you're not eight till four or seven till three, something crazy like that. So you've probably been at work an hour or two already, but, um, excellent app. So am I. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll go well. Obviously, I, you know, guys know me, I can talk for a long time. Um, but talking ad lib and actually reading from a script is two different things. So I'll, um, I'll do my best. Uh, I'll give I'll try and give my best enunciation. Um, you know, I'm not you know I'm not a uh, I'm not the best of readers in the world, but uh, you know we should be fine. I'm sure. <clears throat> oh oh damn! 
Uh, so, uh, did, did either of you get COVID before now? Um, and yeah, I mean, if Pip's going to get it, it's, I mean, I don't see how you're going to avoid it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Eggston 7, that is good to hear. That is very good to hear. Um, yeah, you don't, well, you don't need to worry about it, Squidge. Uh, I just know that you were one of the people who expressed an interest in what we were doing today. Um, but yeah, it, you know, you can always catch it afterwards, um, as needs be. Um, um, yeah, it's all on these things. I feel that I don't think I've had it. I don't know. I've never been tested. I had, um, it's about six months ago now, I think. Was it about six months? I don't know that. Uh, I had like one day. I just woke up and I felt like terrible. Like no appetite, fever, super tired, uh, headache. And then 24 hours later, I was perfectly fine. Um, it, could that have been it? I don't know. Um, I hadn't been anywhere. Uh, and I guess that would the only that would mean my brother would have got it, but he would have been asymptomatic. Uh, I don't know. No worries, Cage. I'm in uh, collab one. You dive in here, sir, whenever you're ready. Uh, there is absolutely no rush whatsoever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, bless, bless little Flaco. X. Okay, so. So he's a little old man, is what you're saying, a seven. But considering he's a little old man, he's got, you know, he's doing all right. He's got you looking after him. Um, excellent. Not a problem with Snickers. <laughs> uh, I didn't realise your other doggo is called Snickers. Excellent. Um, God, I could go for a Snickers right now. Uh, <laughs> but guys, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're excited. I'm excited. Uh, and as always, if what we're doing today is uh, of uh, not really any interest to people, they're like, well, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do. We'll be back on. Uh, we'll be back on um, Elden Ring tomorrow. I remind me when Cage comes in. Here, I need to check with him. Um, what if he, has he got hard out? Uh, that's what I need to check. Um, so obviously we need to honor his his time um and if we are in the middle of it uh then we'll just put a bookmark in it and come back to it next time um and if we uh wrap it up today and we've still got time on the stream um we'll see what cage wants to do but uh i guess we'll play a little bit of elden ring if we've got time at the end of the day we'll see, we'll see how it goes uh urchins you found your fir first gray hair oh, i remember those days back in the day <laughs> the the real question is where was it because <laughs> you know uh i uh i'm starting to go gray on the on the head of the sides now I, I shave my hair anyway but now i feel i have even more reason to not that there's any shame or you know being gray it's just you know i don't like the reminder that <laughs> or like look in the mirror and like, oh damn it is you joke about being old all the time but actually <laughs> Like, you know, you might be halfway through, buddy. You might be halfway through. <laughs> exactly, you know, Squidge has got blue to cover it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, ex <laughs> exactly, Squidge. Um, yeah, nothing wrong with grey. Uh, I had a teacher at, at high school who was um, Mr. Parks. He was a science teacher. He was never my teacher, but uh, all the girls fancied him. Um, he was in his mid-20s, maybe late 20s at most and full head of gray hair uh and he was a good looking fellow but uh it's almost that that definitely added to his appeal the fact that he was like i'm distinguished i'm like bro you're like <laughs> i think now me i'm like if i if i went back in time i'd be like bro you're a little kid <laughs> it would, to me he would be a little kid now um only 28 yeah um i think that's when my first one started coming in uh urchins it's nothing to do for it. It's, just, it's what it is. <laughs> uh, like I say, you know, you can uh, yeah, colour your hair or cut it all off like me or you just got to suck it up. You know, there's, they, there's basically your three options. Accept it, change the colour of it, 
cut it off <laughs> wherever these gray hairs may be um oh bless you oh uh, well you know i guess it is quite a shock the first one isn't it um but uh wait what, what are you gonna do um oh bless oh bless <laughs> uh Seven's just sent me some uh, pictures of uh, Snickers there. And, well, and Flaco as well. Um, awesome. Yo, Lee! Leedipus, how are you doing, sir? Are you all right? Are you looking after yourself, Lee? I know you've had a bit of a... Um, you had a bit of a hullabaloo and a barney. And uh, a, a, a bit of a to-do over the past little bit. Um, obviously, I don't want to like necessarily allude to anything new about your personal life. So, you know unless you're you know you want me to um but are you hanging in there sir are you well i'm always here if you need me leaf you want to chit chat one weekend you can we can you know, we get me um damn seven that's yeah i know you said it's like super long it's still super long it's just shorter than it was uh is that just because it was getting a bit of a pain or or uh yeah what was that was the I don't know if I've got the, uh, your thought process of that, Seven. Um, damn, Atheline. Well, la-dee-da. <laughs> I suppose excellent genetics, Ath, in, in some regards. Maybe not so excellent in others. Um, but, you know. Rough with the smooth. Take some of your, uh, you, uh, you know, you win some of your lose some, don't you? Um... Yeah, there we go. What all we're saying, uh, <laughs> all we're saying, urchins. Apart from the amazing and incredible Atheline, uh, everyone else here is in. We've all been through it, buddy. We've all been there. It's not. <laughs> yeah, there's. You know, we we get it. Um, you're not, are you, Lee? Well, I can't do much for you, bud. But I can, uh, you know, be a shoulder to cry on, or you can rant at me, or you can vent to me. Uh, I can even try and. I don't think I'm probably the worst person to offer advice. But, I mean, what even is advice? I guess it's like having some kind of insight. I don't have the insight, but I could <laughs> tell you what I would do in your situation or somebody else's situation. Is it the right thing? Is it the sensible thing? Probably not, but, uh, I'd, you know, I can uh, I can think about it at least. Um, Yeah, okay, fair enough, Lee. Um... No, thank you, buddy. Oh, yeah, it's so lovely to see, uh, see you in chat. Uh, oh, and it's always a pleasure to hear your voice. But yeah, you get at me, Leaf. Um, I'm, um, I guess the only day I'm practically free is probably Sundays, really, for me. Um, Monday to Friday, I'm just caught up with a stream. Um, Saturday, um, I'm not streaming, but by the time I've got up, got coffee in me, uh, got through my workout, showered and had my dinner it's getting a bit late anyway but um always here if you need me lee wolf guys let me tell you this uh caged wolf there has just yesterday uh signed on as our latest assistant producer wolf bro thank you so much um if, if you just want to do it for this month that is fine you know you want to keep it going that is also greatly appreciated but it's never any pressure buddy you um you know i i appreciate the support greatly i'm gonna be here regardless um hopefully you'll be here regardless um no pressure in that regard either but thank you so much sir greatly appreciate it. any questions about it or anything else um you get right at me um okay yeah yeah and, and as hair gets uh longer it gets like that doesn't it seven my um my first girlfriend had very long hair and was also a hairdresser and she was trying to grow it, and she'd, you know, very frequently be just snipping the ends off. And I'm like, hey, I, I thought you'd grown it. She's like, I am, but, you know, it's all raggedy on the ends. I was like, okay, well, I, I don't know, do I? I'm just a kid. So, uh, so in Zelda, don't ask me, I'm just a kid. <laughs> I, and I was. <laughs> so, um, but yes, no, I, I get it. I get it, Seven. It makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, the tangled part. Yeah, long hair's like great uh, for how it looks, but then um, and it can keep your head warm, but also hats can do that. So, <laughs> uh, 
otherwise, um, just just go uh, just just go my route. That's my recommendation. Um. Right, okay. Fair enough, Seven. But yeah, you know, it's... Uh, don't be scared of change, folks. Uh, I mean, nobody... Some people, some, some people like it. Some people lean into it. You, you should try and lean into it. But, um... Uh, I'm not a fan of it. If, <laughs> if I'm living here and still running the Snip show, like many years in the future and my life is perceivably no really not really any different i'll be very happy with that I'll, i wouldn't have a problem with that at all um so yeah strange uh, change can be scary and weird um but you also however scary and weird it is you have to understand that that is the nature of the thing that we are in and a part of you can um lean away from it but you can't get away from it um and depending on the circumstances, sometimes it's better to lean into it because of that. And sometimes it's not. Um, every, every situation is different. But um, living in denial of the fact or like horror of the fact of change is um, you're not helping yourself out at all. Um, <laughs> there you go. Perfect example. Perfect example. Seven. Cream cheese is icky. Oh wait, actually, let me try that again. Oh no, it's not. Yeah, God, I was a I was a massively picky eater when I was a kid. Um, seven. I like to, but it's so long ago. I don't really remember now. There's not anything I won't really eat. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, what traffic likes without change is um. I mean, that's that's define their entire existence right there. We can't have that. <laughs> um <laughs> but um yeah um okay i think i've got everything set up over here um but yeah thank you for being here guys um when cage gets in here we'll just check with i want to just check with him um how, you know how he's doing obviously um but you guys get to see him some of you may not know legion cage so you get to see his beautiful face on stream and hear his beautiful voice uh for maybe for the first time um you know exciting for me this was his very first appearance uh on the channel um which is uh surprising to think about but i guess that's just the way uh things have uh, turned out um uh but i appreciate him uh giving giving us his time um i do want to ask him about pokemon because uh before we get into the lone wolf stuff just because uh i think he got the new pokemon and, um, you know, we're all knowledgeable on video games. I feel, um, I feel like Legion Cage has, like, a slight edge on the, the average gamer. Um, because he, one, you know, he's, he's an old man like me. Um, <laughs> uh, two, he, uh, he worked in video game retail for a very long time as, a, as management. Um... And uh, three, he's uh, you know he's he's a he's a guy who's uh, very into uh, facts and figures, and uh, research and collating information and finding things out. Um, so he you know he might look at it um, with a more critical and knowledgeable eye than uh, you know say like a, an idiot like me. Um, I don't know. Hey, roots. How you doing there, Roots? Are you well? Welcome in. Yeah, you get on that tea, Squidge. Um, I don't think I need tea at the minute. We'll see. I'm feeling pretty good at the minute. Um, <clears throat> but, um, yeah, what else? What's going on in the world? I don't know. Uh, I, um... I've, uh, I've been watching uh, on netflix a, a new documentary series called uh ancient apocalypse uh hosted by a fellow called uh, graham hancock who um who posits the idea that um human history is not uh the the proper textbook version of it and he goes around the world and looks at ancient sites that there's you know there seems to be a lot of dogma within archaeology um about what is or what isn't uh, and kind of maybe because 
as a field, but like an individual is all different. But yeah, very fascinating, interesting. Re completely recommend it. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, I've not read any of his books. Af. He gets attacked by mainstream science, uh, particularly the archaeology field, just because he has wild theories. But I, you know. I, I feel that any theory for any subject is valid as long as you as the um, positor of the theory are willing to engage in conversation and uh, do some research towards it. That just makes you as valid just as everybody else. Um, the people who are wrong are the, you know, the, um, the you know, the dogmatic uh, types who are like, no, you're wrong. Why? Because we've already established this. It's like, well, ha have we? How do you know that? Well, this is what I was told. <laughs> so it is the way it is. It's... Okay, well, what about this evidence that doesn't answer the whole question, but contradicts the established narrative? Well, let's just brush that under the rug. That's not helpful. That's not science, bro. That's not fucking science. Science is you look at all data and you test it. That's science. Science isn't, oh, this data's inconvenient. Let's ignore it. That's stupidity. Anyway, so I don't know anything about him, but I know the, the establishment uh, as, a, as a go at him. Um, um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's basically his uh, theory, Urchins. Um, um, but yeah, also Assassin's Creed. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't know if he's leaning in. I don't think he's going with the aliens like uh, Assassin's Creed does, but kind of similar, kind of similar idea. Um, yeah, that's the thing. It's... There's no, there's, just because uh, there may not be an answer to a question doesn't mean it's not worth asking. I think there's some sci some scientists who kind of, uh, to me, are misunderstanding the purpose of science. You know, every question is valid and should be encouraged, regardless of field, regardless of uh, simplicity or depth of complexity. Um, every question is valid. Just to go, ah, that's stupid. You know. Um, I guess we'll take an extreme modern example. I know some people who agree with this. Uh, there's a lot of people running around nowadays who are like, yo, the earth is flat. A flat earth. Now, to me, my initial reaction is, oh, well, that's just silliness, isn't it? Of course, it's been proved that the earth is not flat. But for me to just run hate on them and go, oh, shut up, you idiots. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. I can't prove shit. Um, so how about I sit down and I shut the fuck up? How about I do that? It sounds wild. It does, you know, my instinct tells me they're wrong. But you know, I, I've got no proof of anything. Have I? So I should shut up. <laughs> right? Um... <clears throat> Yeah, and this is the thing, uh, Root. I, I, so much history has been lost. I'm not even talking about like ancient, possible ancient civilization that existed before, you know, the hunter gatherers, um, or alongside them. Um, all the books have been destroyed, burnt, stolen by <coughs> the Vatican uh, and others. You know, um, it's. Uh, we have to be be aware. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, Rue. And you do your best, don't you? Like, hmm, my feeling is that there might be this. What can I do to try and find that out? Let me go and do that. Take it, from, and then you take it from there, don't you? And then you, te you know, uh, any hypothesis. As a good scientist, you should be attempting to disprove yourself. Not attempting to prove that your hypothesis is wrong. Attempting to prove that your hypothesis is actually incorrect. That's what good scientists does. 
And then when they fail to prove that they're incorrect, then they go, huh, huh, let me keep trying this. Let me get my peers to have a look at it. You know, let's let's keep it going. It doesn't science doesn't end. There's a lot of people who feel it does, but um we can do Red Mage. How you doing, bro? You well. Um Yo, Cage, are you are you ready, buddy? Do you wanna get in there with me? You gonna get in bed with me? You're not Hey, he's here. Yo, Cage, Legion Cage. I was gonna say I've been here. <laughs> Bro, I <t> <laughs> <laughs> what don't be waiting on me here we go legion the vo that voice you hear folks that's the voice of legion cage let me um let me pull you over here buddy when well when you're ready to turn your cam on i'll uh i'll pull us over to our screen um how you doing bro <coughs> yeah, you doing all right you're doing all right Sorry are you sure delay no don't worry about it buddy you're all right what's that you're chugging on hang on guys let me um let me get a cage set up here I uh, started getting ready and everything and uh, realized that I had an animal mess that I had to take care of, so... Oh, that doesn't sound good. I'm no. sorry you had to do with that, buddy. Mm. But, you know, if you... <laughs> so you've you got... know any animals. Yeah, so you've got one doggo and how many? Two cats? Two cats. Yeah. Was it... Which one was it? Was it a cat or a do the doggo? It was... I guess I can't really prove which one of the three it was, <laughs> but I'm 99% sure it was one of the cats because uh, someone made a mess up on the couch. Oh, dear. And the dog sleeps in the bed with me, and he doesn't get out of the bed until I get out of the bed. So, right. And he wasn't left alone long enough to get up and do something up there today. God damn. Yeah, that's the worst. I, um, a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, my brother's cat kind of, uh, just randomly pukes in the house. And I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing, cat? Calm yourself. Sort your life out. But it, my brother's like, hey, it just eats grass. And I'm like, why is the fucking cat eating grass? Apparently they do that to, like, make themselves sick. I don't know, buddy. But, um, they eat grass. They eat, they, they like chewing on plastic bags. Cats are weird. They are. They are, dude. But how you doing, uh, Sir Legion Cage? Are you well? Doing all right. Doing all right. Oh, we got a, got a raid raided from Vince. <laughs> all right there, Vince. <laughs> how you doing? Hello, come in. On, come in, folks. How you doing? We are just uh, doing a little collaboration here with the, the legendary Legion Cage for the first time on the Isnip Show. I'm very excited. Uh, thank you for the shout out there, Scotty. How you doing, Vince? Welcome in. Welcome in, folks. Uh, if you don't know me, my name's Isnib. This gentleman next to me is Legion Cage. Far more amazing than me. So if you think I'm good, go check the... <laughs> you are talking about? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yes, Vince, uh, how you doing? Kingdom Hearts, excellent. Uh, yeah, Scotty's like, uh, this guy, a gentleman. Well, Scotty knows you better than I do, Cage, so I can't really... <laughs> I can't really say anything, can I? Um, <clears throat> but welcome in, guys. Uh, we are going to be basically very roughly before we get into the details uh cage has uh very kindly uh he offered to uh join me on this collaboration we're basically doing a choose your own adventure uh fantasy book uh where i'm going to read the story and cage is going to make the decisions he's going to be the character the the reader as it were uh um and uh yeah we're good we're good vince uh, so if you've got, I won't give you any of the, uh, the rest of the blabber, but if anyone's got any questions before we get in, you, uh, you let me know. But, um, Cage, firstly, buddy, how, uh, how long do you have today? Do you have, like, a hard out at some point? Uh, hard out by one thirty, so, like, four hours from now. I mean, okay, I cool. How, I didn't know how long we were planning on going today. We didn't really discuss that. No, so. no, that's, that's fine, buddy. No, yeah, uh. Any time you can uh, give us is perfectly fine. I don't know how long it's going to take. I know that um, my estimate was it would be like one book per stream, but not knowing exactly um, how long each one would take. Probably not a ho whole stream. And obviously, you won't, can't be here for the whole stream anyway. But um, uh, I think for today, it might take a little bit longer. 
because uh obviously i need to explain to you and all the viewers kind of the um the background of the setting and also the uh the kind of the rules and stuff however you know fairly simplistic they are um but yes if anyone in chat has any questions for cage or myself you just uh get ours um once we get going though folks of course i'm going to be reading and my attempt to cage and obviously the rest of you i'm not going to be able to respond to everything in chat um cage you feel free to talk to these guys uh as, as you like or completely ignore them that's entirely up to you um if uh i'm sure i uh you, and you, Cage, you, I know you're a moderator of this channel. You certainly don't need to keep an eye out. But um, if I can't imagine we're getting any random weird trolls or anything coming through. Um, but if we do, if there's a mod around, just feel free to yeet them. Um, and if not, we'll pick it. Uh, we'll deal with it. Um, also, uh, if anybody has anything they like, an urgent question uh, or something they need to get at me personally. Um, you uh you know highlight a message and then i'll try and pick up on it and we'll take it from there um we do have channel point redemptions um for this uh series when i find them uh yeah there we go um which we have uh two basically um the being a game book it's based on dice rolls um as you can see just below me on the screen there we've got a uh, dice is, the dice rolls go from zero to nine i'll talk about that in a minute you know a d10 is why is it not going one to ten i'll talk about that in a minute <laughs> um so uh if you want to influence a dice roll if cage rolls the die and you want to do, you want him to roll it again you're like no cage you can't have the result roll again whether you're trying to help him because he rolled a shitty number and he wants a good number or whether you're trying to troll him because he rolled a good number and you want him to have a shitty number that's entirely up to you so we'll try and keep an eye on that I will apologize if we uh, happen to miss it, if we're in the throes of things. There's also another one. Um, because obviously, technically, it's not difficult to get through these books, really. If you know, Cage is a sensible gentleman. Uh, you know, he's, he's well-versed in games of all kinds. Tabletop, board game, video games, uh, all sorts of nerd genres, fantasy, sci-fi. You know, you know, he knows more about stuff than I do. And I, I know a fair amount. Um, and he's also, you know, he's got a... Um, you know, Final Fantasy Tactics is one of his favourite video games of all time. He's, you know, he's got a tactical mindset. He's not an idiot, is what I'm saying. Uh, he's a smart gentleman. So he's not going to be making stupid decisions. Or is he? We shall see. Uh, but there is the possibility that he could technically die. Now, usually you die if you get really unlucky in combat. Or there are insta-death moments in, in the books. Um you hope we're going to avoid those um if it does occur obviously we kind of have to take it we can't just be like oh well, let's pretend that didn't happen but that, that that would actually mean the end of the series whether we're one book in or 10 books in not that I, cage hasn't committed to doing more than today he might find this boring and annoying and not want to be here again and that's in, and he's welcome to do that but uh, we won't know uh until we get into it so but i would plan to keep the series going anyway even if cage uh decides he does want to step down that's entirely up to him um but what, regardless if so if someone cage or someone else were to die that would be it we would be over we'd have to kill the whole thing because without the threat of death you're just playing the video game on god mode aren't you and that's pointless um but to circumnavigate this there is a chonky chonky channel point redemption for twenty thousand points to uh you know step in as the god of time and reverse a an untimely death um let's hope that's not needed um nobody needs to have those points you might be like i ain't saving cage's life i want two flexes bro that's up to you <laughs> nobody has to do that uh but we shall uh we shall see um cage uh i don't you've probably got the stream up if you want to keep an eye on things in discord i have shared my obs if you want to keep it you know because i'm sure the stream is like a few seconds or maybe a little bit behind what is actually live between you and me so if you want to keep an eye on anything that's on the screen i have shared that so um you let me know if you uh need anything else um uh right okay uh we covered everything oh yeah sorry before we get into lone wolf i wanted to ask you uh, cage you've been playing the uh new pokemon game right played it uh one time so far yes 
and have you come across any jank in it yourself uh so <laughs> uh being not very far uh there hasn't been a lot of opportunity uh definitely some frame rate issues are noticeable uh i've heard it's worse if you're playing direct just on the handheld itself and right. not in the dock but honestly the internet is just bitching bitch. <laughs> is that your interpretation <laughs> yeah it's, so it's calm literally down. what they do i mean i'm this sure there true. are glitches that i just haven't run mm. into yet but i mean not only have i played it i've watched i watched the entire stream um on sunday of uh ben and isaac from the gaming avengers two with swan and ravion playing together uh and i played no with short and sweet uh steph babies and casual murder uh i've watched that casual gaming guy play it i've watched uh i, I lurked on trouser schnauzer playing it um i you know i wasn't sitting there like you know no no but dissecting you... it all but I, I I did not really see any major glitches that have been talked about on the internet. Right. You know. So. Okay. No, I just wanted to get your perspective really so far. of it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um. Th yes. <laughs> so it sounds like uh, and also uh, Root here was uh, has been playing it um as well, and they've not had any issues with it um uh relatively, but uh I just found it interesting. So yeah, it seems like. The issues are extreme, but f maybe far and few between. Only some people are dealing with it, but I don't know. Um, I just find it curious. That the thing to me was the fact that uh, the series itself is kind of not really known for having issues. I'm pretty sure all the other games that have come out over the previous years have been pretty stable, and this has not been a thing. But Yeah, um, and I would say that's accurate. Uh the biggest things the biggest things about it um you know first and foremost like i said the internet's just bitching to bitch um it <laughs> i do that <laughs> it reminds me of when fallout 76 came out now pokemon's a different beast than fallout but fallout is a very beloved series mm. and fallout 76 definitely had its issues but everyone that was a content creator whether it was twitch youtube wherever just jumped on board with bashing fallout 76 for its glitches and issues because that was the popular thing to do and they were just trying to get hits and you know mm. likes and subs and all that kind of stuff that that's literally all they did this is reminding me of that same thing right. again pokemon is a more beloved series uh it's a better series overall it's you know, and yes, it does not have a history of any type of major glitching, but it also doesn't have a history of being a giant open multiplayer esque game either. Mm. This is Nintendo's first foray, similar to the idea that Fallout seventy six was kind of uh, Bethesda's like first foray into the massive open world multiplayer that uh, Fallout seventy six did. You know, they've only done one other, like, truly open world game, and that was mm. uh, Legends Arceus uh, that came out at the beginning of this year. And, you know, that game had a few issues with it, but it wasn't it wasn't crazy either. Mm. You know, it, but it wasn't multiplayer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This one, they designed, they wanted you to be able to play with up to four friends for the entire game. Right. Okay. I think that's what I missed out on. I didn't realize it was actually, I thought all multiplayer in pokemon was just trading but it's actually a co-op multiplayer game mm -hmm. uh, yep. okay so give them a bit of slack they're finding their way so what you're saying cage is it's just the the peoples of the internet are just being little bitches basically yeah okay there you go Sh oh my god shock <laughs> who'd have thunk of such a thing right anyway i just that <laughs> yeah um Oh no, I don't know. Yeah, Af, what? You're not going to save uh, Cage's <laughs> life? Say, wait a minute, what did I do? Yeah, I don't know. He's um. Is it because I said that uh, that uh, Pokemon was a better series than Fallout? <laughs> oh uh, yeah, no, uh, maybe. Uh, Athlean does is a massive fan of the Fallout series. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, and I wrong. would say I that. love Fallout too. I'm just I'm just saying overall, it is 
it, it is a maybe not better no bigger, yeah yeah i think popular game. yeah you maybe you prefer it cage i don't know but yes yeah, so it's definitely you can't deny that pokemon has more cultural influence than fallout that's i, I feel that's undeniable the, the 500 plus hours of gameplay that i have in fallout 76 there you might go say otherwise as far as how much i enjoy it there you go <laughs> indeed uh vince do you take care buddy thank you for the lurk good luck at work and thank you so much for the raid i appreciate that my friend um you take care um but anyway i just want to get your uh, thoughts on that so guys turn into lone wolf um i think i must mentioned the uh, the brief bits and pieces so um yeah, Cage, we'll do the dice roll on the uh, uh, random.org. I know you said you had dice there, but and I'm sure you're a man of honor and would not, uh, you know, tell me that was not true. But <laughs> I mean, just... technically, I have, a, I have a second cam that could point down. There you go. I tray. mean, <laughs> if, if you wanted to set that up and, you know, although I don't know how we'd get two cams through Discord, that might be tricky. I don't know. We, I've already got it set up. We'll just use that. But <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um but yes uh here we go let me uh jump over here so uh firstly uh i'll give you the the story so far folks listen up cage has already read this as the producers have i gave them a little sneak peek to it um but i'll read it for them and also for everybody else um i guess it's a, a typical fantasy setting but it's um it's pretty well developed considering the uh the i want to say shallowness lack of depth of the medium considering it's just a fighting fantasy book series uh you think there will be less to it but um we shall uh you can be the judge of that guys but here you go <coughs> <coughs> sorry <coughs> <coughs> the story so far in the northern land of summerland it has been the custom for many centuries to send the children of the warrior lords to the monastery of Kai. There they are taught the skills and disciplines of their noble fathers. The Kai monks are masters of their art, and the children in their charge love and respect them in spite of the hardships of their training. But one day, when they have finally learnt the secret skills of the Kai, they will return to their homes equipped in mind and body to defend themselves against the constant threat of war from the Dark Lords of the West. In olden times, during the Age of the Black Moon, the Dark Lords waged war on Summerland. The conflict was a long and bitter trial of strength that ended in victory for Somlending at the Great Battle of Markengorge. King Ulnar and the allies of Durinor broke the Darkland armies at the Pass of Moitora and forced them back into the bottomless abyss of Markengorge. Vashna, mightiest of the Dark Lords, was slain upon the sword of King Ulnar called Summersword, the Sword of the Sun. Since that age, the Dark Lords have vowed vengeance upon Summerland and the House of Ulnar. Now, it is the morning of the Feast of Feymarn, when all the Kai Lords are present at the monastery for the celebrations. Suddenly, a great black cloud comes from out of the western skies. So many are the numbers of the black-winged beasts that fill the sky that the sun is completely hidden. The Dark Lords, ancient enemy of the Somlending, are attacking. War has begun. Uh, on the ah, I should probably just mention. Uh, of course, it being a fighting fantasy book, the, the story is written in second person, so I'll be constantly saying you, 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 uh, and I'm obviously talking to, directly to Cage as he is the protagonist. Uh, on this fateful morning, you, Silent Wolf, or uh, Lone, uh, or Silent Cage, maybe. <laughs> Uh, on this morning, you, Silent Wolf, the name given to you by the Kai, have been sent to collect firewood in the forest as a punishment for your inattention in class. Fuck's sake, Cage. <laughs> <laughs> as you are preparing to return, you see to your horror a vast cloud of black, leathery creatures swoop down and engulf the monastery. 
Dropping the wood, you race to the battle that has already begun. But in the unnatural dark, you stumble and strike your head on a low tree branch. As you lose consciousness, the last thing that you see in the poor light is the walls of the monastery crashing to the ground. Many hours pass before you awake. With tears in your eyes, you now survey the scene of destruction. Raising your face to the clear sky, you swear vengeance on the Dark Lords for the massacre of the Kai warriors. And with a sudden flash of realization, you know what you must do. You must set off on a perilous journey to the capital city to warn the king of the terrible threat that now faces his people. For you are now the last of the Kai. You're now the lone wolf. There we go, guys. Okay. Um, so, Cage, or anybody else in chat, any questions about that uh, setting there? It's all I'm gonna fairly have to straightforward. That about a thousand times uh, as we go through this. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Yeah, I think I've already uh, tagged you with it if you need to. But uh, yes, very uh, simply put, uh, to break it down, um, the Kai monks uh, at the monastery kind of um, they're not um, they have special abilities and uh, martial skill, um, but they're not wizards. They're not mages. Um, they're kind of like, think of a fantasy Jedi, essentially. That's a kind of the closest thing I can think of, um, pretty much. And um, their ancient enemy, the Dark Lords, we don't know too much about them, apparently they've got leathery flying beasts on their side, have just yeeted all of Cage's uh, friends. All of the uh, warrior monks are now deaded. Cage is the only survivor. He is Lone Wolf, and his mission currently is to get to the capital city as quickly as possible to warn the king of what has happened because um you know uh the, you know the dark lord's not going to stop at that that wasn't just this one was a hit and run this was just the first battle of uh an impending war um yes exactly root yeah cage of the only hope um so, <laughs> so that's kind of set the scene there um so now uh just give you a bit of an understanding give you some context for the rules we'll, you know we'll get into the uh the rules here um so yes as you can see on screen we have basically a character sheet for cage that's uh it's very simplistic there's not too much to it um but we do need it there to keep a record of things um i if you need to to check anything on their cage or if you want to make a note of this yourself buddy i should have uh, checked with you if you want to keep your own version there with you you can copy it over now or later that's entirely up to you but you know i'm, I'm not gonna uh, cheat you out or anything obviously um so uh yes here we go getting the rules during your training as a kai lord you have developed you. fighting prowess combat skill and physical stamina endurance so they are basically the two stats in the game, guys. Only two stats. Combat skill and endurance. Endurance is basically hit points. Uh, and combat skill obviously speaks for itself. Uh, before you set off on your adventure, Cage, you need to measure how effective your training has been. Uh, to do this, you take it... Oh, you know, <laughs> we need to roll numbers. This is the very first of the dice rolls of the whole game here, folks. Um, and could um, this... Uh, we would turn in Cage's two stats... These could be the most important roles of the whole series, potentially. Um, so, uh, you know, that being said, you could get the minimal amount uh, and still should be able to get through the adventures. But if you want an edge, this, uh, this you're hoping for a high number here. Um, I should probably just mention the dice rolls. The dice roll is a D10. For some reason, it goes from 0 to 9, not 1 to 10 doesn't matter that's fine uh obviously in most situations you want to roll a high number um anytime we're rolling a random number we want to go high nine is good zero is terrible there is one exception to this uh which is combat on the combat rolls um zero is is this is the same but zero is actually the highest number it's like the if you think of it like cards it's an ace um so uh, zero is the worst, nine's the best, except in combat where one's the worst and zero is the best. Uh, you just get stuck at the top there. Why they do it like that, I have no idea, but 
Um, so here we go. Live on stream. We are rolling for your uh, combat score. Oh, and just to say... Let's go. Good number. Excellent. <laughs> uh, it's this number plus 10. Um, so it's going to be between 10 and 19. So obviously that's quite a difference there. Um, endurance is bet uh, plus 20. So it's tw between 20 and 29. So here we go for your combat score, Cage. You've got a three. Uh, are you going to take that? <laughs> Are you going to re-roll? Does anybody else want to give Cage oh, a re-roll? I forgot that I can re-roll that. You Ooh. can re-roll if you've got the... Ch ch oh! Ryan's got there before you. Excellent. Thanks, Thank Ryan. you, Ryan. God, Ryan's a good guy. In fact, he's arguably the best guy. But, um... We're not <laughs> Here we go. So, first re-roll. Thank you, Ryan. Got a six. Much better. There we go. Are, we, are you going to stick with that? Are you going to try and go for higher? Uh, I will happily stick with it. Obviously, I have no control over No, does anybody does. else want to force Cage to change that? He's happy to go I with mean, a six. I've, I've started a whole thing in your chat. <laughs> That's all right. You do that. <laughs> and, you know, I might have some people who don't like me very much anymore. Well, because you're bigging up Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Appar apparently. Uh, I, I should clarify that I love Fallout. And I have put more time in Fallout 76 almost than almost every other game that I've ever played. <laughs> Thank you. But uh... indeed, okay. I mean, I I I feel uh, Fallout is way better than uh, Pokemon, but you know, um, you know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we, we're all friends here. It doesn't matter. Sea Star, how you doing? I hope you're well. And Ryan, thank you for the gifts up there. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Um, so yes, it looks like if nobody wants to get that re-roll in, we shall stick with that. 16 is a pretty good number, Cage. Could be better, but it is really not bad at all. So I'm going to add that into your character sheet there. That's your base. Um, of 16. Combat skill. Excellent. So, uh, jumping over to your, um, endurance, your hit points between 20 and 29. Let's go. Three. Do you want to re? Do you or anyone else want to re-roll that? <laughs> oh, what is with the three? Um, it, I mean, random.org. It doesn't get more random, apparently. <laughs> Bless your cage. Yeah, you, I think you've got a. Uh, oh, Aft's gone for it. Okay, we'll let the we'll let the viewers. We'll let you keep your points, Cage. I'll I'll get it for you. Nope, you got it. No, that's all right. I'll, don't worry, I'll do it, buddy. Um, thank you, Af. There we go. So re-roll on your hit points. Six again. Going to stick with that? Anybody else? Six. Yes. Yeah, 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 double six. That seems cool. That seems good to me. Thank you for not hating me. <laughs> right, there we go. So uh, 16 combat skill um, and 26 endurance. They are... Um, they are uh, slightly better than average. So that's I think that's a good baseline there. Uh, also, I should say thank you very much to Atheline for putting together the character sheet for us. Mine, I did one, and it looked way shitter. So uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Af. Uh, I appreciate it, my dear. Um, but yes, there we go. So that's that taken care of. These, are, these numbers will never change for the whole series. There will undoubtedly be things that will increase or decrease them as we go along obviously as you take damage your hit points will go down um and obviously you can't have higher than your natural uh hit points there that, um, that kind of uh i'm sure that stands to reason um <clears throat> uh yes and then and aside from insta death if your hit, hit endurance ever gets to zero cage then you are dead um how does uh how does that work as far as so obviously it's like hp mm. so i lose hp when do i do i can i only gain it back uh via like my healing ability or um resting pretty or... much uh there are okay. thing you will there are healing potions there are various ways of getting it back um moving on to skills now the kai disciplines um you some of you guys may have noticed directly on the character sheet there um the five uh, skills uh, that Cage has chosen before this stream. Um, he had a choice of, there's 10 to choose from. When you start this book, you get five. Uh, and one of them is healing, which uh, is um, 
pretty handy um but yeah you don't need to uh you you'll uh you'll see as you go along um but anyway um the kai disciplines over the centuries the kai monks have mastered the skills of the warrior these skills are known as the kai disciplines and are taught to all kai lords you've learned only five of the skills listed below um the choice of which five skills these are is for you to make uh, as all of the disciplines may be of some use to you at some point in your perilous quest, pick your five with care. Uh, the correct use of a discipline at the right time can save your life. Um, so here are the choices. Um, <clears throat> I'll just read these to you. Obviously, Cage has already read these. Uh, camouflage. This discipline enables a Kai Lord to blend in with his surroundings. In the countryside, he can hide undetected among trees and rocks and pass close to an enemy without being seen. In a city or town, it enables him to look and sound like a native of that area and can help him to find shelter or a safe hiding place. Sounds very handy to me if you're trying to stay under the radar. Um, hunting. One that uh, Cage did not choose. This skill ensures that a Kai Lord will never starve in the wild. He will always be able to hunt for food for himself, except in areas of wasteland and desert. The skill also enables a Kai Lord to be able to move stealthily when stalking his prey. Um, next one, Sixth Sense, which, uh, as you can see, Cage did go for. This skill may warn a Kai Lord of imminent danger. It may also reveal the true purpose of a stranger or strange object encountered in your adventure. Um, next, we have Tracking, which Cage did also chose not to go for. This skill enables a Kai Lord to make the correct choice of a path in the wild, to discover the location of a person or object in a town or city, and to read the secrets of footprints or tracks. Sounds handy. Obviously, Cage felt there was uh, handier ones. Uh, healing. Uh, I did give Cage a little clue and say that I feel that this is arguably the, the most useful uh, ability as you will uh, hear in the description uh, this discipline can be used to restore endurance points lost in combat if you possess this skill you may restore one endurance point to your total for every numbered section of the book you pass through and which you are not involved in combat um, of course only if it's below your original level um, essentially what that boils down to folks is that like, that's like a slow tick regen he has on all time um it's <laughs> if if cage gets into a fight takes some damage as long as it's not too much and there's a decent amount of time has passed before the next fight he may be fully healed just from the use of his healing ability passively i find it to be arguably the the most useful of the 10 skills um so uh i am for, we're gonna have a bit of a house rule i will amend that slightly if um if depending on the action cage may not be in combat but there's a lot of shizzle going on, like he's running for his life. I would say he can't, like, stop to heal him. <laughs> he can't passively heal him, sir. He's not, he's not an actual regen. It's something he has to actively do, like meditation, think, concentrate. Um, so I may veto the lack of that ability, depending on the circumstance, but that would be fairly extreme. Right, moving on. Weapon skill. Upon... Entering the Kai Monastery, each initiate is taught to master one type of weapon. Now, Kai warriors can use every kind of weapon very well. Uh, cages as skilled as any kind of mercenary or mana arms with any and all weapons. This is just above and beyond that he spent time training specifically. Uh, if weapon skill is to be one of your Kai disciplines, it, right? this is another house rule. It says you need to pick randomly. I think that's ridiculous. Why you would be like, hey, guy, you're using this weapon. And you're like, well, maybe I can choose. <laughs> um, so uh, the choices are of uh, different weapons in the uh, game are um, sword, short sword, broad sword. Apparently it's an, a distinction between those three. Uh, dagger, spear, mace, axe, warhammer, and quarterstaff. At least in the first book, this is what you're given. Um, I... Uh, cage did choose and he um he chose sword uh was there a particular reasoning behind that cage you chose sword over any of the other options no i just like swords 
That's fair. Uh, I didn't know if you <laughs> thought, like, oh, maybe that's, like, the most common type of weapon. So I would, you know, it might be more available. Um, this is not to say this is the weapon that Cage has at the start of the game. This is just what he has extra skill in. So, um... Yeah. Go ahead, I sir. would imagine, honestly, that uh, that swords probably are not the most common mm. um, for a couple reasons based on the weapons that you gave me. A, I would say a quarter staff probably one of the more common mm. ones just because it's a non-bladed weapon. It's just a stick. You know, yeah. how easy is it to just pick up a stick and use it as a weapon? That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. If you're not know, talking daggers, soldiers. Yeah. Yeah, daggers are small, so they're they're cheap, they're easy to get. Same with a short sword. So, like, it, it definitely point. was not what I would think would be the most common. Axe is probably more common than swords because those are a useful tool. Yeah. Um, so but... I'm talking about, folks. This is why I want a cage, because he thinks about these things. <laughs> <laughs> but needless to say, uh, cage went sword because he thinks swords are cool. And who can really argue with that? Uh, what that effectively does for him is um so all weapons for you know for lone wolf function the same unless there's specific um reasons that it will describe in the text why they don't but the weapon skill of sword gives a cage a plus two to his combat skill um in combat if he's using a sword so if he's using uh, say a dagger we just go with whatever his combat skill is if he's using a sword of some kind he gets a plus two bonus so uh i yeah, and I've got that on his character sheet there with sword plus two. So it's combat. I, I had a yeah. thought about um, why why the the it would be random, right? Mm. So a Kai Lord is trained in every weapon, mm. correct? Um, the reason why I think that they would have you have it chosen at random would be because as you're trained with every single weapon yeah you might have like the preference of i want to go in with the sword type thing mm. but as you just learn because you're training with every weapon you might be more incredibly adept with a quarter staff mm. just because as you found through your training that is just a weapon that just seems to work with you and you feel so that the uh, the instructors would be like, yo, you're better with this. You should develop this further. Yeah, because you figure the person who's training you, you know, I don't know if you've ever taken any type of like, you know, martial arts or anything, but like they're going to, you know, those people who have trained like their entire lives to train other people, mm. they're going to easily more identify something that is better for you. Like if you're taking, you know, if, you're taking some form of martial arts and you're better at kicking than you are at punching they, they're yes, going to probably they might. focus you more on on any type of attack with kicking that's true that's true um yeah make yeah no, actually that does make sense it's fair enough but uh like i say i <laughs> i just wanted to give you the option rather than i go ha ha you are skilled this you no, like i appreciate that <laughs> but <laughs> that's just how i played it as a kid so i was you know um not there's anything wrong with it but yes uh moving on to that other skills we have um mind shield and this is kind of where um the jedi vibe comes in for me mind shield the dark lords and many of the evil creatures in their command have the ability to attack you using their mind force the kai discipline of mind shield prevents you from losing any endurance points when subjected to this form of attack um cage uh that obviously I didn't make the cut for Cage, so he's uh, gonna just do the best he can. Uh, and uh, co but consequently, on the other side of this same coin, we have Mind Blast, which Cage did go for. Um, this enables a Kai Lord to attack an enemy using the force of his mind. It can be used at the same time as normal combat weapons and adds two extra points to your combat skill. Not all the creatures encountered in this adventure will be harmed by Mind Blast. Uh, you will be told if a creature is immune um so that's using his psychic attack to i guess it i guess it could equate to kind of like um like giving them a headache um making them dizzy making them distracted uh, or some equivalent that pans out to give you an edge to your combat skill so um there we go that's an extra bonus that uh 
cage has got there. Um, let me uh, put that in there, in fact. Uh, mind blast. Uh, oh, I can bloody spell. Uh, there we go. Um, so, if Cage has a sword and is able to use his mind blast, suddenly his combat skill is now at 20 rather than his base 16. Um, most enemies will... you be able, So, basically, wild animals... Uh, random people will totally be susceptible to mind blast. It's all only more kind of, um, you know, magically inclined monsters and stuff that will uh, be immune to it. Um, definitely advantageous, I would say. Uh, moving on, uh, next skill, animal kinship. This skill enables a Kai Lord to communicate with some animals and to be able to guess the intentions of others. So a bit of a, an animal vibe. Uh, which uh, Cage did not go for. And finally, Mind Over Matter. Going back to a bit of the Jedi vibe. Um, mastery of this discipline enables a Kai Lord to move small objects with the power of his concentration. Um, so if we uh, scroll back up just to recap, uh, Cage went for Weapon Skill Sword, Mind Blast, to help with his attack, healing for his regen, stay alive, and then also in Camouflage and Sixth Sense. Um, is there anything more, anything more you want to add to that, Cage, about why you may have or may not have chosen certain things? Um, I mean, all of the abilities seem like they're going to be useful, mm. and I believe you told me I can earn more abilities as we go along. So That's correct. It was just a matter of which ones I felt would be the most useful at the start right yeah. now. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, this is tr this is correct, folks. Um, assuming uh, Cage is successful in his adventure, makes it to the end and reaches the king and alive, um, and he completes the uh, the book. Um, and he wants to continue. Uh, he earns an extra skill, an extra discipline of the one of the five that of his choice that he didn't choose at the start to add to his repertoire. Um, being that by the end of book five, he would have all ten skills. Um. You might be wondering, oh, well, what happens then is you would have to wait and see. Um, so that's uh, that summed up the uh, disciplines there. Um, and Cage, for you, uh, as we're going through the story, um, most of the t apart, obviously, apart from your mind blast and your sword skill, they will not be mentioned. We just factor in those numbers in combat. Uh, but save like your camouflage, your sixth sense, or maybe sometimes your healing if you're using it in a uh, a, a story capacity. Um, anytime the text says do you have this skill do you want to use it it's very rare not always but it's very rare that it's an ever a negative to do that so if it says do you want to use your camouflage your sixth sense or not and do something else typically you're going to want to rely on your disciplines but again it's your choice at every a step of the way what you want to do right so we've got a uh, cage's skills sorted out um we're going to sort out his starting equipment now um yeah, you are dressed in the green tunic and cloak of a Kai initiate. We don't need to write your clothes on the uh, on the character sheet. That's uh, kind of a given. Um, you have little with you to arm yourself for survival, however. All you possess with you are an axe. You've, there you go. As you are out cu cutting wood, you uh, do indeed have an axe. So let me write that on your character sheet. Not a sword, but still better than your bare fists. I should also mention um, on the character sheet, if, you, if Cage is ever unarmed for any reason, he has no weapon, he gets a minus four to his base. So the difference between having a weapon and not is a whole four points of combat skill. So um, he can probably fight better than most people being a Kai uh, monk than unarmed, but, um, you know, still better with a weapon. Uh, you also have uh, one meal in your backpack. In your backpack, you can carry uh, up to eight items, Cage. Um, um, if you, uh, as you come across items in the story, you can take them with you if, if it offers. If you are ever full of all eight items, then you would have to make decisions about what you may want to discard and what to keep. That is, entirely, of course, entirely up to you. Meals have been um, a very particular item. Um, at certain times during the story, you will be told you need to eat a meal or you lose hit point endurance. So that's what they're for. That's typically their only use, unless you're giving food to somebody else, maybe. Um, but 
with your healing ability, even if you go hungry, within a short amount of time, you can probably make up the difference. So meals are important, but arguably not as important as other items um, because you have your healing ability. But again, that's for you to decide. Um, also, hanging from your waist in a leather pouch contain gold crowns. Uh, gold crowns are the typical currency in this part of the world. Um, there are other currencies elsewhere, but they're probably quite far away. Um, to determine how many gold crowns you have to start with, we roll a random number. You have four. You have four gold coins. Uh, <laughs> not much, but uh, better than nothing. Uh, unless, you, of course, you want to re-roll that or anybody else wants to re-roll that. I'll put it in there for now. Um, I'll let someone get on that if they want. Um, the maximum you can carry in that belt pouch is 50. So if you happen to become super wealthy, you found a, a hoard of treasure, um, you can't carry more than 50. Unless, of course, it's in coins, if it's some kind of other treasure you'll be putting in your backpack. But um, So for the crowns, right? Mm. Can you give me an example of like a like an exchange rate so I kind of have like an idea of how much yeah, they're um, worth? Like how much does something that's really common in this world cost? cost yeah, that's pounds? a good question. I I can't quite recall. We'll have to find out as we go along. But I believe uh, compared to mm, kind of most fantasy stuff or... Uh, I mean, I've been playing a lot of Skyrim recently, so we could use that as an example. Sk the gold coins in Skyrim are basically worthless. You'll be, um, you know, you it, things are like, oh yes, that's that broom, hundred gold. You're like, what? <laughs> How plentiful is gold in this world? <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe you could probably buy, uh, if you went to a tavern or an inn, you could probably buy, uh, food, drink, and a night at the inn for anywhere between one or three gold if they were charging you more than three gold crowns you'd be like what the fuck? what is this place that's a rough estimate um to buy a good decent sword or weapon maybe between five and ten gold crowns that's just okay. guessing so compared to your average fantasy i feel that um gold is fairly rare and a single gold crown is it's a pretty decent amount of money. It's uh, not to be sniffed at. Um, um, so yeah, the fact that you can carry up to fifty is uh, is uh, fairly reasonable. Like, if you have fifty and you're leaving money lying around, it's not necessarily a big problem. Um, Quite also, aptly, and there's nothing that costs more than twenty crowns. Yeah, I'll be. I, I can't even remember anything that costs that much. But yeah. But it's, it's definitely worth picking up if it's not uh, an inconvenience to do so, because obviously it's an extra resource. Um, but even if you find yourself without any money for, at all for any reason, it, it's unlikely to be the deciding factor of success or failure. It's just an extra helpful resource. Um, right, also, you have a uh, you discover amongst the smoking ruins of the monastery a map of Summerland. So I can show you the map briefly. Um, there you go. You find that. Um... Map of the Last Lands being the Free Kingdoms of Northern Magnamund. So Magnamund is the name of the world, or at least the gigant gigantic supercontinent, con uh, which you don't have uh, the full um, uh, idea of yet. Um, but it's not the best map. It shows you more than you need to see, and it's not that clear. Uh, so if you look over to the western edge, you will see the Kai Monastery just east of the mountains there. Um... And all you're trying to do is head to southeast to Holmgard. That is the capital city of uh, of Summerland. Uh, or everything to the east there, the Wildlands and uh, Durinor, the kingdom over there. They're like an ally kingdom. They are friends uh, of uh, Summerland. But Summerland is basically just this tiny little bit of green. Uh, and I think a bit to the south as well that's not on this map, uh, on the west here. Um you probably won't need to reference this map really because it doesn't really show you much. You just know that you need to head southeast. <laughs> uh, the only things that may be of use to make reference to are the uh, there's a, a river to the, your south running uh, west to east, and there's a main road to your east running north to south. They're both kind of 
lead in the rough direction of Hongard. Um, aside from that, there's not too much use of that map, but if you ever need to refer to it at any time, Cage, you let me know, and I shall pull that out for you. Um, okay, you also find one of the random following items. Now, this is random, so we'll do a roll for this. I won't tell you what the results, uh, what the uh, you could possibly have. We'll just roll and see what you get. Zero is... I find it's at the bottom here. A broadsword. A second weapon. A broadsword. Uh, now, if you, you or anybody else wants to randomly roll to see if we can get something, cage something different or more interesting, obviously not being a larger sword, cage will not get any benefit of this, but he does have a second weapon. Um, Wait, so a broadsword would not be considered a sword? It would be considered a short sword? Because broadswords usually are bigger swords. Yeah, it's the largest sword. Uh, <laughs> um, you 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 are proficient in the medium sword. <laughs> um, well, there was no option for the large sword. Yeah, broadsword. Yeah. No, I'm, oh. I'm Unless you want to change it, but then I'd have to re really kind of roll, re-roll that. <laughs> um, I mean, I, personally, I whether you re-roll or not, I if it if I were you, I'd be quite content with your skill of sword. Yeah, the, this game is a, is a bit silly in the sense that it d differentiates between a a sword, a short sword, and a broadsword. Unfortunately, that's uh, the way it goes. <laughs> It's up to you, Cage. Gotcha. Unless you or somebody else wants to do a reroll to maybe get something more interesting or useful to start you off. That's entirely up to you, buddy. Why not? Uh, Let's roll the dice. Yeah. Give okay. me a new item. Yeah, because <laughs> you've already got an axe, so there's, unless you lost one of those weapons, it wouldn't uh, really have too much effect. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, and since the weapons are all the... You you know combat figured out the exact same exactly uh, doesn't make any difference if i have a sword yeah yeah okay so we've got an eight now which is uh eight is uh a spear <laughs> um so i will say a lot of these are just weapons there are i can probably tell you what's on there um you, there's also two items of armor uh there is some food as an option there is a healing potion as an option and there's more gold crowns ha about half of them are weapons though so you're cool buddy you've just mm -hmm. traded in your, your broadsword for a spear though <laughs> there we go I'm gonna go for, gonna roll the die again okay yeah we'll do it one more time <laughs> You get that broadsword back, bro. <laughs> Probably. That's my luck. Uh, here we go. A five. Let's hope this is something interesting for you. <laughs> yes. It'll be different, at least. A five is a mace. <laughs> All right, well, I'll keep my mace. There you go. You got an axe and a mace. There you go. You can dual wield. Just smash them up. Okay. <laughs> um, I feel it's not. It's not massively important, but uh... <laughs> I was kind of hoping to get the. Uh... Honestly, I didn't necessarily want like. I mean, if a sword came up, yeah, right? that would make sense. Yeah, but uh, I I was hoping for something, any, more anything, more food or armor or yeah. Like, when you mentioned that healing potion, I was like, Ooh, mm. that would be could be useful, useful in a pinch. Yeah, uh, never mind. You, I'm sure you'll be fine. I should probably should just mention how armor works in this game. Uh, not really to my taste. Basically, it, you don't need it, and if you get it, it's a nice little boost. It just gives you, it increases your max hit points, your max endurance, which is cool because it gives you more hit points. But I don't like the idea of it because if, say, you have a a helmet that gives you plus two hit points, and then you get knocked down to one hit point, you you remove your helmet and you just fall down dead. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it doesn't make sense, does it? <laughs> I mean, if you if you look at it that way, sure. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I would look at it as it just gives you a higher max. It's still up to you to fill said max. So yeah, if I true. Took off the helmet, true. Then I just wouldn't have those extra max anymore. 
Okay, that's but that's fair enough. That's you're the dungeon thinking. master here, sir. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter if if you come across armor, definitely worth having, and it should really never be, you know, you should be able to manage without it. But there we go. So you've got two weapons in case you like lose one for some reason. Um, so uh, I think is that everything? All right, moving on. Right here we go. I should explain the rules of combat to you, Cage. They are very, very straightforward and simple. Um, here is the combat chart here. Uh, looks complicated, folks. It's really not. So any time uh, Cage is in combat, we get the same two stats that uh, Lone Wolf has. Combat skill and endurance. Each round of combat, we roll a random number. As you can see down on the uh, the uh, y, y axis, X axis, I don't know, choose which. <laughs> on the side down there. Uh, and this is where uh, the zero comes into play, being the ace, uh, being the actual best number. The first thing you do before rolling the die is you compare Cage's combat skill with all modifiers to the enemies. And you, that's the, called the combat ratio. And you look across the top there. Um, so you compare, you cross-reference the combat ratio of a, a positive number means Cage has greater skill than the enemy. Negative number means the enemy has greater skill than Cage. And then you cross-reference it with your die roll. Um, then you go across and the uh, each of these squares that are cut uh, uh, diagonally, the um, the first number is how much uh, how many hit points endurance the enemy loses, and the lower number is how many endurance points Cage loses. And that's it. That's a round of combat. And then you do the second round. It's very simple. You may be able to tell a couple of things from looking at this uh, briefly. One, um, although combat ratio is very important, yeah, you know, well, it definitely helps to have more combat skill. Um, uh, the better your random number has more significance, has more weight. You can be way underskilled to what you're fighting and roll a decent number and get a much better result than if you have a great skiller, much greater skill than the enemy, and roll a shitty number. Um, it's entirely up to you. You would, can definitely look at the results of this each round of combat. See if you want to do a re-roll at all or not, Cage, or anybody else. That's entirely up to you. Um, you'll also notice that, um, generally speaking, the numbers are fa favoured towards Lone Wolf. There are... It, this, it, if you look at anything that's equal... There you go. Let's take that. A roll of three, which is terrible, with a negative one or two combat ratio is an equal result for you versus the enemy in terms of uh, damage. It's definitely skewed in your favour. Um, so, you know, because obviously then the guy wants you to get through the book. <laughs> um, but you can still definitely die. The only other thing to notice on here, if you have an extremely high uh, combat ratio and get a very good roll, you'll see the K rather than a number. That is an insta-kill. If you are skilled and lucky enough, you can insta-kill your enemies in a single hit. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you are extremely unlucky with your roll and are very extremely unskilled compared to the enemy, you can also be insta-killed yourself. There's only three opportunities for that on the whole table, so it's very unlikely, but something to be aware of. I won't leave that up on screen, but obviously we'll bring that up anytime we're in, in a combat situation. Um, but that's how do you figure out the combat ratio? You compare your uh, modified weapon combat skill to theirs. So at the minute okay. yours would be twenty. If the you fight, you find an enemy and theirs is twenty, the um the combat ratio would be zero. If you are oh, there okay. eighteen, so the it'd be plus two. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I like, got you. Yeah, yeah. So if you were twenty and theirs was thirty, you'd be down here in the negative ten column. So yeah, all very straightforward, and then you just comp you keep that going until either Cage is dead or the hopefully the enemy is dead. Um, and typically speaking, unless you're getting very unlucky, uh, you should be able to win. It's more a case of how much damage did you take uh, to recover from. Um, the only other thing to add to combat is you can evade combat if you want. You can only do it if uh, the the text of the book says you can um gives you the opportunity if it doesn't you have to basically fight to the death um and if you choose to escape uh it will usually say how many rounds of combat you have to fight before you can um make the attempt 
and if it doesn't, it means you can attempt on the first round. You still have to do one round of combat, but the enemy doesn't take damage, only you do. Uh, and then you've successfully evaded, ran away. Um, it, it doesn't happen often, and from my experience, typically there's not too... Unless you're, like, in a very precarious situation, um, I'm inclined to just kill everything you come across, but, again, only you can uh, determine this, Gage. Um, only other thing I should briefly mention, uh, we've got the ranks of the, uh, the Kai, uh, monks, um, cages, and which is tied in directly with the, uh, disciplines, uh, K Lone Wolf, Cage is an initiate, uh, which is the fifth rank of ten, uh, one being novice, uh, ten being master, um, uh, which at that point they're basically sent back out into the world to go and do good for your kingdom and the rest of it, um, uh aha final points here kai wisdom before we get on your journey uh your mission will be one of great danger for the dark lords and their servants are a cruel and fierce enemy who will give and expect no mercy use the map to help you steer a correct course for the capital mm, maybe not that useful <laughs> in this particular adventure the map can be very useful in some but never mind um, make notes of your progress to the story. For they will be a great help in future adventures. That is up to you. You don't need to make notes if you don't want to, Cage. Uh, or anybody else here. That's entirely up to you. Um, many things that you find will aid you in your adventure. Some special items will be of use in future lone wolf adventures. And others may be red herrings of no real use at all. So be selective in what you decide to keep. There are many routes to the king but only one involves a minimum of danger. With a wise choice of Kai disciplines and a great deal of courage, any player should be able to complete the mission, no matter how weak their initial combat skill or endurance point scores. The honour and memory of the Kai Lords will go with you on your perilous journey. Good luck. There we go. Now, uh, we'll take a brief moment before we get in this uh, cage. Or I forgot to say, if you need to run out to get a drink or piss or anything, dude, you just go. You let me know, uh, as I will do. In fact, I might even take 60 seconds right now. Um, uh, any questions for anyone before we dive into the story, leave them in chat. Um, on, on that note, I will run away. Uh, welcome to the cage show, guys. The uh, lone cage show. <laughs> uh No, he doesn't. You do. Af, you need to use channel points to pee. Anyway, be right back. Oh, he ran off and left me on screen. Hi, everyone. It's very early. I'm not quite awake yet. How are you all doing today? Sweet, what's going on? No, Scotty. <clears throat> I wish I could work from home. That'd be nice. Scott, he's telling us to wake up. I need to... Yeah, he's uh... telling me to wake up. All right. Okay, well, if he wants to waste his points on that, he can do. Uh, yo, Travis, anyway, anyone, anyone, Sween, how you doing, lovelies? Uh, sorry if there's anybody who's coming who have not had opportunity to say hello to. Uh, I, I hope uh, you are all well. Um, Seven, you're doing shit. No, don't do shit. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, Cage, if you, uh, like I say, if you uh, need anything, buddy, uh, you need to, a moment or whatever, you let me know. Anyway, I think we are ready to get started, folks. If you are, Cage, no one's got any questions? Let's get to it. Yeah, th thank you, Travis. I uh, I saw you pop in there, but when I was in, in the depth of explaining. Okay, let's go. 
You must make haste, for you sense it is not safe to linger by the smoking ruins of the ruined monastery. Uh, remains. Ruins, not... Sorry. Smoking remains of the ruined monastery. The black-winged beasts could return at any moment. You must set out for the Somlending capital of Holmgard and tell the king the terrible news of the massacre. That the whole elite of Kai warriors, save yourself, have been slaughtered. Without the Kai lords to lead her armies, Somaland will be at the mercy of their ancient enemy, the Dark Lords. Fighting back tears, you bid farewell to your dead kinsmen. Silently, you promise that their deaths will be avenged. You turn away from the ruins and carefully descend the steep track. At the foot of the hill, the path splits into two directions, both leading into a large wood. Um, so your options are to take the right path into the wood, uh, follow the left track, or if you wish to use your Kai a discipline of sixth sense, which I, as you do, I would assume that you would like to do that. Yes. Your sixth sense has warned you that some of the creatures that attack the monastery are searching the two paths for any survivors of their raid, but you can avoid both tracks by making your way through the undergrowth of the woods. Um, so uh, sometimes uh, you get a choice and sometimes you uh, don't. So it's assumed that you are going to avoid both of those tracks, uh, yes, which sir. makes sense. Um, but you, your options are you can turn uh, south uh, through the uh, undergrowth, or you can uh, cut through the heavier foliage towards the northeast. Well, considering the capital is to the southeast, it makes no point to go to the northeast. So we'll cut down south towards the river, I guess. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know how many miles it was. Uh, let me pull up the map briefly if we can uh, just get an idea. That'll probably help. Um, it looks roughly about maybe 75, 100 miles, roughly, to the capital. So it's quite a, quite a little walk away. You, you know, it's going, to, it's going to take a few days to get there. Um, but yes, heading south. Let's go. You underestimate my speed. No. <laughs> uh, you hear the scream. Probably much worse than that. Of a large winged beast above the trees. It is a crane. A deadly servant of the Dark Lords. Quickly you hide beneath the thick fronds of fern until the horrible shrieks have passed away. As you go on, you discover a forest path that divides at the point you join it. Um, you can go to, on the South Fork or the East Fork. Um, you would also have the opportunity to use your uh, discipline of tracking, but you do not have that. So, um, South or South. East. South, South again. Or east? Yeah. Um, keep going south. Keep going south, okay. Uh, you're in a clearing where several trees have been cut down to make a rickety watchtower. Below the tower are three paths leading off in different directions. Uh, you can go south again. You can start heading east. Or you can go southwest. Or you can choose to climb the watchtower. Climb the watchtower. Let's see yeah. if there's anything good up there. Or yeah, or maybe just get a lay of the land, possibly. Um, yeah, I guess, but loot. But loot. <laughs> uh, the old watchtower ladder is rotted, and several rungs break as you climb. Pick a random number. Uh, here we go. That's my random number. Zero. Um, yes, if the number is four or lower, you've fallen. Do you want to re? Do you or anyone else want to re-roll re that, or do you want to take the fall? You'll suffer uh, two points of endurance damage, and presumably the ladder's broken as well. You can't get back up there. <laughs> presumably, are you sure? You sure want to take that cage? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take your bumps. Cage has got a bunch of uh, channel points here, folks. If you didn't, <laughs> one hundred and fifty-six thousand. Ah! I've got to get through them somehow, buddy. Sorry. I'm I was going to say, you designed this totally to just make me spend my chance. I mean, <laughs> it's a complete coincidence. All right, re-roll. There you go, five. Okay, that will allow you to not uh, fall down. Presumably. Oh, there's my... There we go. Um, there you go. You, do not, you have not fallen. Okay. 
Um, from the top of the tower, you can see above the trees in all directions. Far to the north, a column of jet black smoke rises high into the sky. Small orange tongues of flame flicker at its base. Your heart sinks as you realize that the port of Turan is ablaze. Um, from the southwest, the wind carries the noise of battle. It is close, no more than five miles at most. On the floor of the watchtower is a large oblong box. Um, you can open the box or you can leave. Open the box. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's hard not to, isn't it? Um, inside the long box is a quarter staff wrapped in leather. You may take this weapon if you wish. Uh, you close the box and descend the ladder to the clearing below. So you could take the quarter staff if you want, Cage, but you'd have to leave either your mace or your axe to do so. Again, for combat purposes, doesn't actually make any difference to you, but for personal preferences. And and that's all it's that's all the weapons are used for. They're not used for unless there's a way. unless there could who knows there could be a story purpose where a guy's like, "Yo, bro, have you got a quarter staff?" And you're like, "No, I've got a mace." And he's like, "Screw you!" I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's entirely up to you. I'll leave the mace to take the quarter staff. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maces no. are dumb anyways. <laughs> what's a what's a quad staff? Oh my god. I need to be able to spell dinner. <laughs> Crying out loud. Sorry, we from Boston. Yeah. Quad staff. <laughs> uh. There we go. Is that there we go, we got it. Sorry. <laughs> right. Um moving on right yes you now you descend um so you can so you would you want to head south east or southwest you heard the sound of battle to the southwest but the capital is southeast right? the capital is southeast yes roughly from where you are currently uh well my duty would be to go investigate the battle like in normal circumstances mm. but i am on a mission to get to the capital that to makes sense war the king so indeed i'm gonna go southeast uh it's right it was south or east oh yeah you've been you've been going mostly south so far but you know you can, can, can keep going or turn east at this point i'll go i'll keep going south okay uh, you reach the top of a small wooded hill on which several large boulders form a rough circle. Suddenly, you hear a loud growl from behind a rock to your left. Okay, it was louder than that, but you got the gist. Um, your options are draw a weapon and prepare to fight, or take evasive action by running as fast as you can over the hill. Draw a weapon and prepare to fight. All right, here we go. Now it is the time. Uh, from, from behind the rock, a huge black bear comes into view. It advances slowly towards you, its mouth open and its face lined in anger and pain. You notice it is badly wounded and is bleeding from its neck and back. You must fight it. Um, so here we go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's already beaten up. It's got a combat skill of uh, 16. So you're using, uh, presumably going to use your mind blast on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that gives you a, a ratio of two. You've got the slight advantage over it. So first round of combat. Zero. Oh, damn. Um, your random number generator is full of crap. <laughs> no, no, that's the best score, buddy. Oh, oh in oh. combat, zero is the, the ace in the hole. Is, yeah, there you go. No. Okay. <laughs> it, no, it's not. It's, tr it's, fr no, it's a true random number generator. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you've just done not taken any damage and just done 14 points of damage to the bear. Um, I should have mentioned, uh, yeah, and you just yeeted it because it was already injured. You just murdered the bear. One turn, one hit. Um, Cage, his very first combat showing off to us, folks. If you win, you have clearly won. No damage. Wiping the bear's blood from your weapon, uh, or, you know... Maybe not blood. You just whacked around the head of your quarterstaff. That's up to you. 
Yeah, you don't need to specify if you, <laughs> unless there's a particular reason to. Um, wiping the bear's blood from your weapon, you notice the mouth of a cave hidden behind the rock from which the bear attacked from. Do you want to investigate the cave or ignore it and press on? Uh, ignore it and press on. Yeah, presumably it's just the bear's cave, so it's all right. You know, you've got no real reason to be going there, unless you, you know, curiosity. Uh, eventually, you come to the edge of a fast-flowing icy stream. Now, presumably, that's not the, the big old river um, to your south, I assume. Icy stream doesn't sound like it. Um, the white water cascades over the mossy rocks and disappears towards the east. Um, your options are follow the stream to the east or explore upstream. So presumably, going uh, heading west or up some other direction that's not east. We're going east. Okay, carefully you follow the stream as it makes its way towards the east. Suddenly you notice something in the distance that brings you to a halt. Lying in the rushing water like a great black dam is a dead crown. You creep nearer undercover the foliage until you see three arrows deep in the beast's chest. Trapped beneath the beast is the body of its rider. It is a Giak, a spiteful and malicious servant of the Dark Lords. Many centuries ago, their ancestors were used by the Dark Lords to build the infernal city of Helgadad, which lies in the volcanic wastelands beyond the Dern Crag range of mountains. The construction of the city was a long and torturous nightmare and only the strongest Giaks survived the heat and poisonous atmosphere of Helgadad. This creature is the descendant of these Giak slaves. It seems that this one must have drowned. Um, the Giak's pouch contains three gold crowns. Okay, you're searching it anyway. I assume you want to take those? Yes, oh, sorry, sir. Let me get rid of the uh, combat chart. Then. Yeah, you know, can't leave money lying around. It'd be uh, a bit weird too. There you go. So you, you got seven now. Nice. A bit of money to spend. Well, I'm sure spending money is the least of your worries at the moment. Um, your options are continue downstream or leave the stream and make your way on foot through the wooded hills to the south. How would I have gotten across the river? It's not, uh, it's not that big river on the map. It's just a little stream, relatively. Oh. Yeah, you can easily get okay. across it. Um, so I guess it's east, keep following the stream, or screw the stream, jump over on the other side and start heading uh, south through the wooded hills. We'll keep following the stream. Okay. Uh, you've reached a small bridge. A track follows the stream towards the east. A much narrower path disappears into thick forest towards the south. Um, there is an option to use a sixth sense. I would assume you would like to do that. Yes, sir. Uh, your Kai sixth sense warns there is a fierce battle raging in the south. Your common sense tells you that the south is also the quickest route to the city. Right. So there's so south is the faster route, but there is uh, the sounds of battle, or go east, go the long route, and avoid the fighting. We'll keep going east. Okay. Uh, after a few hundred yards, the path joins onto a, another one running north to south. Uh, go head, start heading north if you want, Cage. <laughs> or uh, or turn, keep going south. You know, let's, uh, let's <laughs> play things wild. Let's head... No, I'm kidding. Uh, keep going south. Okay. <laughs> After a few minutes walking, you find a mossy hut set back from the path. You are hungry and must eat a meal here or lose three endurance points. Now, I assume you would like to you eat your meal. Your other option would be to go hungry and then hope that you regen the, uh, the damage in a few turns. Uh, you take three points of in uh, damage if you don't eat. So, it, according to the... Um healing thing mm. 
uh, it's for every numbered section of the book that we pass through. Yeah. So are we still on the first numbered section, I assume? Oh, no. Every time I've given you an option, every time oh, you've made Jesus. any decision, that is a numbered <laughs> section. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, we're, we're, about, we're about 20 sections through it. Yeah, no, it's way, it's way overpowered. That's why I'll keep okay. a tab on it. All the time you're just walking on your own, being unmolested by uh, monsters and stuff, and not really find anything, I will let you heal that. So you may have that healed back in a, in the moments. Okay. Um. Let's go ahead and go ahead and eat our meal. Anyways. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're for. You see what I mean, though, when I say uh, healing is a little bit OP. But, it, you know, if you... If, say, if you didn't, and then the very next section you're in a fight, you're already three hit points down. So, you know, it does help you in that regard. Okay, cool. So you've not lost any hit points. You've eaten your food. Uh, as you eat, you notice that the path starts to curve towards the east. You can follow it, uh, or you can come back the way you came. Um, and continue along the, the previous path you were uh, following. Uh, continue along the previous path. There was nothing in that hut, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, that's taking you back to the north-south uh, direction, though. So the other option would be to go north. So I'd assume you'd pr rather leave and go east through the path in the woods. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it wasn't obvious there. Um, oh, you're good. Uh, you follow the track for nearly an hour when you come to a crossroads. Uh, you can go east, north, south, or west. So I assume you've not gone along any of those paths. You've just emerged at a crossroads from out of the, uh, from out of the forest. So, compass direction choice. I would, I'm guessing again, you would prefer to go east or south, but it's south. It, choice is yours. Okay, heading south again. The forest begins to thin out until finally you can make out a road through the trees ahead. The highway is full of people heading south. Many are wheeling their possessions along on handcarts. Um, you can jo so two options are join the refugees and perhaps learn more of what's happened in the north. Or continue to move south, but under cover of the trees. Go ahead and join them. Okay, Dyke. Um, the people look tired and hungry. They've come many miles from their burning city. Presumably Tehran, I would uh, I guess, to the north. Um, suddenly you hear the beat of huge wings coming from the north. Kron! Kron! Hide yourselves! The cry goes up along the road. Just in front of you, a wagon carrying small children breaks down, its right wheel jammed in a furrow. The children scream in panic. Ah, ah, ah. Or, so, or something as such. Uh, do you want to help the children, or you can run for the cover of the trees? Well, you're going to make me be that guy, huh? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm not making no. you do anything. <laughs> We will help the children. Okay, good, good man. Uh, you sprint towards the wagon. Uh, people are running everywhere in panic as the Kran make their attack, carrying their poor victims off into the darkening sky. Jesus. A large Kran is hovering above the wagon, and, th and three snarling Giaks drop from its back onto the startled horses. You must fight them or leave the wagon and run to, uh, to safety of a nearby farmhouse. There are your two choices. How many of them are there? There's three. Jeez. You probably, okay. you may fight them as one. They're like stats may be rolled into one. Uh, possibly. Or usually in this series, if you're fighting multiple enemies, you kind of just fight them one after the other. But it's still three. So they might have really good stats or you might have to have three easier fights back to back. Why not? Today is a good day to die. Let's fight him. Ah, I'm sure you'll be fine. Uh, stepping up to the Gax. Um, the ghoulish creatures thrust their spears at you and attack. Uh, fight these creatures as a single enemy. Uh, combat skill 15, endurance 13. They're pretty weak compared to you. Um, so uh, let me pull up the co uh, combat chart. Um, so uh, you are rocking 18 at the minute with your skill, aren't you? 
So that's uh, plus five you've got. Six. Damn, you take one point of damage compared to their 11. And second round. Two. Right, seven and three. Okay, so you've taken four points of damage total, Cage. But you've killed them in two rounds. Let me just type that in there. Okay. I'll put that in for a moment, but I'll keep track of that. So, uh, assuming nothing crazy is happening, you uh, you should have that healed up in a minute. Um, um, if you win, now you can have the choice of running to the farmhouse or diving back into the woods. Did I save the children? Presumably. It doesn't say. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Running back to the farmhouse or diving back into the woods? Uh, yeah. I'll just dive into the woods. Okay. Uh, as you race across the open field towards the wood, a crown dives at you and claws your arm before you can fight back. It's flown off again, shrieking with cold malice. You enter the wood, but you've lost two endurance points. Damn. Okay, you're on 20 now. As you run in, I won't allow you to heal there, but we'll see how we go. Um... You've not gone far when you hear the sound of battle to the west. Uh, you can he head west towards the sound, or you can continue south. South. Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, I'll give you one, one point back there. Uh, in the distance, you can hear the sound of horses galloping nearer. You crouch behind a tree and wait as the riders come closer. They are the cavalry of the king's guard, wearing the white uniforms of Her Majesty's army. Your options are call out to them or let them pass and continue on your way. I let them pass. Okay, cool. I think we've got our first uh, actual uh, illustration here. That we've come across. There we go. You see this. Uh, night is starting to close in. The shadows of the forest are growing longer and darker. Just as you're about to stop and rest, you see through the trees a line of people moving south along a wide highway. Moving closer, you notice a large merchant's caravan in the centre of the dusty turnpike. It is drawn by six large horses and is moving much faster than any of the other traffic. This could be your chance to reach the capital as quickly as possible. Um... Your options are use uh, your camouflage to hide in among the packing cases strapped to the roof, or uh, just or don't and just jump on the caravan. I assume as you have your camouflage ability, you would like to uh, make use of it. Yes, indeedy. You pull yourself to the top of the opulent caravan and nestle amongst the travelling cases and bags. Night will soon engulf the highway. A chill wind blows from the west and you pull your cloak around yourself to keep warm. You listen to the voices below, and you can smell the mouth-watering aroma of spiced meat. Ow! It reminds you that you're very hungry and must now take a meal. Uh, no, you have no food, <laughs> so you take damage. Um, but you have just, uh, gone through, um... We'll give you a heal for that, uh, one, and you're probably, you know, ha about to have another one. So I'll just give you one point of damage there. With your total. Um, uh, the fatigue of your ideal finally catches up with you and you drift off into a restless sleep uh, rough first day in the office I would say um, you are awoken by the cries of a crane circling above the caravan it is early morning and the sky is clear and bright you can see a pack of doom wolves less than a quarter of a mile along, away along the highway ahead they are preparing to attack you must act quickly uh, your options are uh, gather your equipment and run for the cover of the trees or cut free one of the horses of the carriage try to break through the attacking doom wolf wolves to the clear road beyond it is uh, it's kind of it's assumed that kai monks are competent if not masters of uh, riding horses but riding it straight directly into a pack of doom wolves i don't know it's <laughs> 
But maybe that's your better option, being on horseback than being on foot. True. Um, so no option to fight them this time. Just I mean, yeah, I guess you're trying to avoid them at the minute, but you may have to fight them depending on your next decision. Um, well, I think I'm just going to dive into the woods because I'm using my camouflage anyways, and I'll just be noticeable. Just avoid them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Uh, you can see the shadow of the crown getting larger all around you. It suddenly strikes, pitching you forward onto your face with the power of its attack. So I guess you you probably stayed away from the wolves, but um, the crown's on top of you. Um, right, we've got random number here. Higher is better. Let's see what happens. Nine. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, zero to six. Uh he would have stolen your backpack and any stuff you had in it. <laughs> Which is currently actually empty, so it doesn't matter. Um, oh, damn. Arguably, this is worse. <laughs> uh, your backpack is intact, but you've been wounded in both arms and lose three endurance. Do you want to re-roll and potentially lose your backpack? You won't be able to carry any items, though. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you're getting beat up a bit here, buddy. You're pretty good in combat, though. I'll, I'll give you that. So, it's just these uh, ambient dangers. Uh, the f we got away, though. The forest here is sparse and hilly. It does not give much cover from an attack from the air. You move as quickly as you can from tree to tree to avoid the crown, but you can hear the sound of doom wolves close behind. God damn. Uh, you have an option for to use your camouflage or not. So, Camouflage. I mean, um... You make full use of your Kai discipline and quickly burrow deep into the loose earth of the wooded hillside. Covering yourself with your cloak, you pull a loose branch across your hastily dug shelter. Uh, random number to see if you remain undetected. We, uh, I think we want lower here for Isabel. Yeah. Got 50-50 here, Cage. Um, sorry, pull it up here. Seven. You've been detected. You know, take it. You might be fine. <laughs> I'm going to re-roll, folks. Uh... There you go, two. You have remained undetected, sir. <laughs> uh, you quickly move off into the forest before more doom wolves or Kran appear. You've walked for more than an hour when you reach the top of a rocky hill. The sight that befalls you on the other side is one of hope but there's also a daunting challenge to be faced. You can see the tall, grey-white walls and glimmering spires of Holmgard, its banners fluttering from the battlements in the fresh morning breeze. Stretching out towards the west, the river Elidil traces its course from the mountains of the Durncrag Range to the Holm Gulf. But from below the mountain peaks, you can see a vast black army marching relentlessly on towards the city. To your right, you can see the highway heading off over the rolling plain towards Hongard. At a run, you could reach the outer field works of the city defences in an hour, but you would be on the open for most of the time and vulnerable to attack by Kran. However, ahead of you, a wide and muddy river drifts sluggishly towards the Elidil. You could use the cover of the riverbanks and swim towards the capital. Or towards your left lies the graveyard of the ancients. These tombs and crumbling monuments to a forgotten age would conceal your approach, but it is a forbidden area. Many are the unnamed horrors that lie there in rest asleep. sleep waiting to consume the unwary trespasser. Um, so your options are try your luck on the highway, uh, running out in the open, very exposed, but it's the most direct route, um, trying to do, head down the river, trying to like half swim there, <laughs> uh, far slower and uh, far more, far less exposed, or... Be brave enough to risk the unknown perils of the forbidden area, the graveyard of the ancients. 
presumably nobody will looking be there or looking for you, but who knows what is there. Go to the river. Okay, river is. Uh, peering over the steep undercuts of the river bank, you can see a tangle of driftwood along the water's edge. A large tree trunk has grounded on the clay bank uh, next to a small canoe. Um, so your options are to uh, grab onto the log uh, to float down or use the canoe. Um, I mean, as you, either option is better as you plan on swimming, I guess, but um, what I mean... I guess you were in a canoe. You're obviously much faster, but it's not as stealthy as if you're just like in the water hanging on a log. Yeah. You're cool, buddy. Yeah. Um, I'll just hang on to the log. Yeah? Cool, cool. Stealthing it up. Um, after quite a struggle, you managed to break uh, free the heavy trunk from the riverbank. Gathering your equipment in a bundle, you start on top of the log and then slowly wade out into the river. The current soon takes you, uh, and you drift slowly downstream. After 20 minutes, you hear the sound of horses along the left bank. Um, you can hide behind the log, uh, or climb onto the log and prepare to catch the rider's attention. Hide behind the log. I'm going to... Uh, I've not been keeping track. I'm going to give you a few heels up in here, Cage. Because um, you've, uh, you've just been doing a bit of swimming things. We've uh, uh, we've gone quite a few quite a few sections there, so let me boost you up a little bit. Um, peering out carefully, you can see three green-clad men on horses racing along the bank. You recognise them as border rangers, the regiment of the king's army that police the western borders. One of them is wounded and is slumped over the neck of his horse. Close behind follow a pack of twenty doom wolves. Their Giac riders are firing arrows at the rangers, which fall all around them. One ranger drops from his horse and rolls down the riverbank, a black arrow deeply embedded in his right leg. Um, you can head over and help him, or stay hidden and continue to drift down river. You said a pack of... Doom 20 wolves. doom wolves that apparently 20. have... 20, and the Giacs are... They have riders as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna stay hidden. Yeah, one guy's already fooked. This guy's just fallen out of his sort. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I can't say I blame you. I appreciate I appreciate what I've uh, got from you here so far, Cage. You're taking the the mission very seriously. Aside from attempting to help the kids, which I respect, um, you are very much focused on getting just getting doing the mission. Let everyone else deal with themselves. You what you have to report is too important. Um. <laughs> After well, like I said in the in the chat, like generally, like for D and D like type games, I play a chaotic neutral character almost all the time. I don't play good characters because I don't I don't like being Mister Hero. You want to be like... some wild card lunatic? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's chaotic perfect. <laughs> neutral is the is to me is the epitome of I do whatever I want whenever I want as long as it suits me. Yeah. I respect it. I respect it. Well, I mean, you know, you step into the shoes of someone who's a bit more uh, on the uh, good side of things, but you choose to play him how you like, obviously. Uh, I understand, obviously, your options are limited, but <laughs> uh, I respect that greatly, sir. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, after nearly half an hour, you feel the current getting stronger. Uh, looking out across the surface, you can see that you are approaching a whirlpool in the middle of a large river bend. You will surely drown if caught in its current. So you quickly swim towards the right hand to river bank and continue your mission on foot, carrying all your equipment. Okay, I'll probably give you a point of heal, so. Uh, you walk for nearly an hour along the twisting river's edge. Uh, beyond the next turn, you can hear the faint noise of battle. You carefully climb a steep hillock to get a better view of the area. Okay, another another heal for you. That healing. It's working over time. Um, the outer field works of the city can now be seen. Drawn across the river is a line of barges chained together to form a floating barricade. You can also see soldiers running along the log walls of the field works and you can hear the faint noise of battle drifting from the west. 
Um, you can uh, approach the barges or take cover in the trees. Mm. You said the barges are done across the... Uh, um, yeah, the drawn the across the river area. in a line of chain together to form a floating barricade. You stay in the trees. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, well, here we go. Got a new picture. Let's go with that one. You climb the wooded bank of the river and see the log walls of the fieldworks disappearing into the distance. A battle rages about two miles away and the log wall has collapsed in several places where the Dark Lords are attacking. Most of the field works ahead are unmanned. The soldiers simply have left to supply reinforcements for the raging battle. Um, there is a gate in the log wall you can approach, or you can climb over the wall. I don't know why we've got a picture of this guy, whoever this guy is, but <laughs> uh, this is where he's in the book. <laughs> So I can climb over the wall or just go through the gate. Yeah. Mm, let's climb over the wall. Okay. Uh, cautiously, you approach the base of the logger wall. The tree trunks are rough hewn and afford plenty of footholds for your climb. As you reach the top of the wall, you come face to face with a crossbow. The soldier holding it in your face motions for you to descend the wooden ladder to the ground. You do not argue with him. Slowly you descend the ladder. Oh dear. Two soldiers and a sergeant run towards you, their crossbows aimed at your head. As they get nearer, they recognise your Kai cloak, and a look of relief spreads across their faces. My lord, says the sergeant, where are the other Kai masters? We are in desperate need of their wisdom. The Dark Lords press us most cruelly, and our casualties are high. You inform the brave soldier of the fate of your kinsman, and the urgency of your mission to see the king. He takes you back to the barges, where an officer accompanies you on horseback towards the high walls and the main gate of Holmgard. Um, I think I'll give you a, a little heel there. Um, you reach the main gates of the capital and stare in awe at the height of the city's walls. 200 feet high, the walls of Holmgard have withstood the ravages of both time and the Dark Lords. You and the officer race through the tunnel of the inner gatehouse, 100 yards in length, and finally halt outside the doorway of the main watchtower. Great crowds of soldiers and civilians are running to and fro. Uh, you can continue following the officer, or if you feel you stand a better chance of making your way to the King's Citadel on your own, you can uh, break away and wander off on your own. I mean, wasn't he showing me to the King? So I guess I'll yeah, follow the officer. Yeah, I mean, that's what he's, he's claiming he's going to do. Yeah, okay. Uh, staying close to the officer, you follow him through an arched portal and up a short flight of stairs to a long hall. Soldiers run back and forth, bearing orders on ornate scrolls to officers stationed around the city wall. A haggard and scar-faced man dressed in the white and purple robes of the king's court approaches you and bids you follow him to the citadel. Um, you can ag a agree to go with him or decline and return to the crowded streets. Agree to go with him. You follow the man into a small library off the main hall. He pushes one of the many books on the shelves which line all four walls and you hear a metallic click. One section of the bookcase slowly slides back to reveal a hidden passage. Um, you, do you want to follow him? Or uh, you can refuse and get, again, another option to go back out into the street. Mm, we'll follow him. Uh, you walk for nearly 10 minutes along a dark and winding corridor and then start to climb a steep staircase to a small wooden door. The man presses a secret catch and the door opens. You enter a large, plushly decorated bedroom with a huge marble bath that takes you up one corner of the room. Sorry, that takes up one corner of the room. 
Uh, the man suggests that you refresh yourself here whilst he seeks an audience with the king. You quickly bathe and change into some white robes that have been left out on a large marble table. Shortly, the man returns and leads you through a long corridor lined with exquisite tapestries. You finally arrive at a large door guarded by two soldiers wearing silver armor. You're about to meet the king. Damn, cage. Uh, you just blasted through it, bro. <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, there you go. There's the king. I'll just read this final section before we, uh, have a, a discussion about it. Um, you enter the Chamber of State, a magnificent hall decorated lavishly in gold, white and gold. The king and his closest advisors are studying a large map spread upon a marble plinth in the centre of the chamber. Their faces are lined with worry and concentration. A silence fills the hall as you tell the death of your kinsmen and of your perilous journey to the citadel. As you finish your story, the king approaches and takes your right hand in his. Lone wolf, you have selfless courage and the quality of a true Kai Lord. Your journey here has been one of great peril, and although your news comes as a grievous blow, the spirit of your determination is like a beacon of hope to us all in this dark hour. You have brought great honor to the memory of your masters, and for that, we praise you. You receive the praise and heartfelt thanks of the entire hall, an honor that brings a certain redness to your young face. The king raises his hand, and all the voices cease. You have done all that Summerland could ask of a loyal son, but she is greatly in need of you still. The Dark Lords are powerful once more, and their ambition knows no bounds. Our only hope lies within Durnor, with the power that once defeated the Dark Lords an age ago. Lone Wolf, you are the last of the Kai. You have the skills. Will you journey to Durnor and return with the Summer Sword, the Sword of the Sun? Only with that gift of the gods may we crush this evil and save our land. Um, yeah, I mean, and uh, there we go. That's the, uh, that's the story, uh, Cage. If you wish to accept the quest to obtain the Summer Sword, that is in Book 2 of the Lone Wolf series, A Fire on the Water. Um, I mean, maybe not today, but it is, <laughs> uh, is your choice whether to accept that or not, sir. I don't want to put you on the nah, spot here. Just, King, I just wanted to tell you what was going on. Like, that's all. <laughs> I'm good. No, kidding. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, um, uh, yeah, I'll accept the quest. Excellent. Well, yeah, okay. Well, first thoughts. Yo, Faith, how are you doing, my dear? Uh, it's uh, that was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um, so that legitimately was book one. That was the whole of book one, and I can say from experience that um, the, it is definitely the most kind of um, I want to say rickety. It's it's definitely the shortest book, and also um, even more so highlighted by our stream today. Um, well, you figure it's probably. It, it probably needs to be the shortest book because mm. a it just needs to set up everything mm. as far as the story goes and it needs to set up the entire game it needs to set up how you're playing it so indeed indeed yeah and and then obviously the author when he pu published this he didn't have the rest of the series he was like he didn't know if it was going to be successful at all um so <laughs> he's obviously finding his own feet what kind of stood out to me and i don't know if from your perspective or anyone else cage or anybody else in chat uh, is a lot of the kind of the descriptions as we're moving from uh, numbered section to number section were like you w you're walking in the woods do you want to go which direction do you want to go which now which direction do you want to go now which direction do you want to go it's, it's not a very descriptive um is very vague uh and definitely even from the next book uh going forward there's it's far more descriptive and far more actually involved in what's going on it's definitely the warm-up so uh don't let uh you or anybody else don't let that color your um entire perception of the series it does get uh far more intricate far more deep but that is the gist uh of what we're we're doing here so um uh, i've enjoyed that cage um also yeah, yeah really you did you did fantastically i think in fact 
when it mentions at the start of the, the wisdom at the start of the book there is only one path that is has the least of danger i think it's instinctively you you took it basically dude <laughs> there's there's far more battles and far more danger in that uh in that journey there that you very deftly avoided so bravo to you sir for uh using your intuition and wits to uh you know get the optimal result there um you take a bit of damage but nothing that your healing uh didn't uh manage with and the two fights you have you absolutely yeeted them uh, i think we've got some good roles um and obviously your 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 you know your skills and your mind blast um absolutely destroyed them so um good on you sir um any thoughts on or questions on your behalf or anybody in chat got any uh, thoughts or questions about anything nothing for me here no um, cool but it was enjoyable enough that you'd be willing to uh, give the second book a go again yeah, not putting absolutely. you on the spot cage i'm not <laughs> i don't <laughs> i have to make you oh i've got i better say yes i'll do that you don't you certainly don't have to buddy but um yeah cool excellent excellent yeah it, yeah travis it was a lot shorter even from my point of view uh remembering it but um it, um, say Root and uh, Atheline both said that, <laughs> like you said, I was playing Quest for Glory on speed mode. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, you got through. You, I, I, I like that though. You took the mission seriously. You're like, what's my mission? I've got to get to the capital as quickly as possible and as safely as possible. Mm -hmm. And you were, like I say, your options, your choices were very. You took it seriously, bro, and that's all I wanted uh, from you. And you, you did fantastically, sir. Um, well, like I said, you know, like typically speaking, when I play a D and D style game, I play chaotic neutral just mm. because I want to be that selfish bastard that only does <laughs> whatever, whatever benefits me. Mm. But the way that you know, and I know this isn't D and D, but the way that the character was put towards me, you know, like you said, when they reach the rank of master, they go out and do good in the world. Mm. You well, know? they're expected to. Uh, um, I would imagine to. most of them do, but maybe there's a bad apple here and there. Yeah, so I figure this is supposed to be... I'm supposed to be playing as a like the equivalency of a lawful good character. And Essentially, I yeah. need to... You know, I had a mission that I was basically set out for. I need to, to do that. I will help when I need to help. Mm. That's why I made the choice to help the children... Whereas, like, a chaotic neutral character, I'd be like, nah, screw those kids. They, yeah. They're on their own. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, you know that, that does nothing for me to help them unless someone is offering me, like, a quest. Go save these children. Of course. And then it's I'll be pay you for it. Then it does good it. for me. Yeah, of course. No, and I respect that. And that's the beauty of, uh, of tabletop RPGs, isn't it? That you get to, uh, you know flex and do all the crazy stuff uh that you can't do in real life <laughs> yeah, exactly. um but yeah so i mean uh it definitely in the second book it definitely does step it up um in terms of um the the length of the journey and interest in what's going on the diversity of the situations you'll find yourself in and arguably there's less stress rather than doing this secret stealth mission to quickly get somewhere uh unharmed as a messenger you are uh you have to go all the way east many 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 more miles than you just traveled uh to the kingdom of duranor where they they're the, like the ally kingdom um they have in their possession the summer sword the legendary magical sword of the sun that was used to fight against the uh the dark lords in the past so that's the mission of book two go there say hey guys can i can i have the magic sword uh, and hope they say yes and then return home with it um to uh help in the war so um so yeah dude um we uh we can do this on your schedule whenever you like cage uh we can do it once a week less um the day we're flexible on days especially if we were um willing to uh conform to my personal stream times we can do any of the five days of the week you like and as frequently or infrequently as you like um so you just get me whenever so yeah yeah i'll touch base with you as far as uh when the next time goes um you know per our conversation uh like this week is pretty well boned for me just because yeah. of the holiday 
Um, but I mean, honestly, next week, I the only thing I really need to do next week is just record some footage for yeah. the second episode of Cage Match. Um, cool. Beyond that, you know, I'd like to continue Castlemania, but I, that's, you know, uh, we'll definitely figure in some times. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, dude. So. I appreciate it. And like I say, yeah. there's no never any pressure, Cage. If you get bored or you know if you want to take it on a hiatus for weeks or whatever you just let me know i'm uh i'm honored that you would uh choose to engage in this endeavor um no, i appreciate you uh inviting me for of it, course so. buddy yeah when i thought about it i was like who's the best person i felt it was you i don't <laughs> know the best person, but... i don't know that was my that was my thought but uh you know you take that as you want i'll 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 let you get off and get have a little nap Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly like when you said we were done like with the book i'm like holy crap you know i was i was, I was definitely figuring it was gonna be a lot longer and you know like Ryan as did i said as did like I. it would have been a lot longer had the choices been different and you know and some of them some of the choices you know i i almost i almost made one way or the other like uh when i was floating in the river i almost uh did the choice of flagging down the riders you know, obviously that would have turned into a much bigger ordeal mm. had I tried to flag them down. Um, you know, and that would have taken some time. There would have been some kind of combat in there or, you know, possibly death. Um, you know, so I thought, so I definitely thought about that one. Some of the other choices, they were, let's call them what, the, what we need to call them. They were stupid. You know? <laughs> okay, I need to get to the capital you know that's to the southeast let's go west let's mm. go north you know okay why would i head in the complete opposite directions that i need to go you know what i mean doesn't make sense uh, the only thing i could think yeah. is maybe um the uh, the dark lord's armies were um maybe trying to cut off certain routes and it might be advisable to kind of i don't know maybe head in the opposite direction of where you're going to try and f flank or work your way around but it, it's like how how far are you going to do that you're going like, to circumnavigate the globe just to avoid the <laughs> you know yeah. what how, what are we going to do here but um uh one thing you could do before we wrap up cage as you complete the first book you could well you don't have to decide right now but um you can think about it until next time you get another Ooh. discipline don't you of the five that you I didn't choose do um so uh i'll just quickly pull up the list uh if you want to, to remind you what the ones you probably you've probably got them there that i've in Discord. yeah i've got the, i've got the list up here um so yes yeah, hunting tracking uh mind shield animal kinship or mind over matter so and now i have a, a better idea of you know how everything works too mm. so if you remember i tried to originally give you six yeah yeah you did I, I, <laughs> and, and hunting was one of them yeah so. is that your uh because i will say something about hunting it's not it's primarily about getting food but not just it is uh, there's it ties in a bit of a stealth element as well mm -hmm. um What do you think about it, buddy? But <laughs> well, I, I, I think I am gonna go with hunting. Yeah. Um, because you know the uh, the other ones, uh, you know, tracking definitely seems like it could have its use. Animal kinship, I'm sure it has its use. Mind over matter would be funny, but I'm not <laughs> sure how much of its use. Mm. I mean, I'm sure again, he wouldn't have put it in the series if it didn't have a use. Yeah. Right. every every discipline will have a use eventually it's just yeah. how often or how how specific mm -hmm. you know and uh i'm not i'm definitely not hurting in terms of hp but if i can mitigate that by being able to hunt mm. you know um i mean i i guess suppose i should ask you know how how does hunting work like when it said i needed to eat a meal did it was there an option that said if you chose hunting you know there wasn't but um if if we had then uh it would it's kind of like assumed um that you don't um i think the the later books do a better job of doing that they'll say 
um, eat a meal or lose three endurance unless you possess the hunting discipline, um, usually. Okay. There's some exceptions, like uh, it says like desert and wasteland desert are not wasteland. an option. Um, but like, anything Which... that's temperate, forest, woods, plains, you t can just, it's just assumed. Um, Which, you know, and, and based on the, you know, map that you showed me, there is going to be a very large portion of time where I'm going to be traveling across the wasteland, but... Yeah, I mean, indeed. Indeed. I'll you know, up again. I think if I can avoid yeah. using any of the meals that I gather by hunting instead, mm. you know, that's that's also a, a, a good thing. So Yeah, much much further distance to go, but um, who knows? Like I say, this, uh, I feel the first book is definitely the warm-up. Um, mm hmm and uh even from the the very next book there's a lot more things going on like i say there was definitely moments in that where you're like oh okay you're in the woods and you're like just picking compass directions <laughs> you're like okay, work, okay what am i supposed to do this south and east south and east let's keep going um but yeah guys i hope you in, uh, enjoyed that um cage i'll let you get off to uh do what you want to do uh for the rest of your day um thank you thank you so much uh, for being here if anybody in chat who doesn't know legion cage you should know him go drop him a follow uh he's an excellent streamer and he does all sorts of different <laughs> his face <laughs> he's like well, no I'm not a little I'm bit something. of self-deprecation is great cage but don't take it too far buddy i think you're awesome and th these guys know that my opinion counts or something so um he does all sorts of collaborations all sorts of interesting things on his channel um and uh twitch is a better place for uh having him so um <laughs> right well uh thank you cage uh thank you we'll I see you next time you. we'll uh we'll be yes. back some point soon guys with uh, book two of lone wolf a fire on the water um at uh cage's convenience uh so uh we'll see you next time buddy it'll, it'll probably be next it'll probably be next week uh excellent probably early on like i said we'll get with it are you cool. going to continue playing Elden Ring today? Uh, yeah, we've got plenty of time. So, yeah, I guess we, well, we'll probably just do it just chatting for everybody because uh, that is the, these guys' favorite thing. So we'll <laughs> jump over there for a minute. I'll probably run away and make coffee and then we'll uh, we'll take it on there. But I'd be shocked if we don't get a couple of hours of uh, and f several dozen deaths in Elden Ring in. <laughs> but uh, indeed. Awesome. Well, I will, I will join you in chat for that. Uh, Excellent. So. Bless you, Cage. Thank you so much, buddy. And uh, I'll speak to you soon. Take care, See man. You guys. guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, there you go, Root. I knew somebody would like it. <laughs> oh, my Xbox One has turned itself on. Does anyone's PlayStations do that? My Xbox does that frequently. Uh, it does just, like, turn itself on randomly. Um, there you go. Let me just uh, disconnect from this channel. There we go. But, uh, yeah, I'll, um, no, thank you, Cage, for being an absolute bad man. Greatly appreciate it. Let me, uh, get rid of that. Yeah, far shorter than I thought it was going to be. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I know from maybe from your guys' sense of, uh, listening to the story, it, it, it there definitely was moments in that where you like, you're heading through the woods. Which direction? Ah, you're still heading through the woods. Choose another direction. It it definitely greatly improves uh, from this point on with more, um, far more interesting uh, situations, far more uh, interesting consequences, what should we say? Right, no, I don't think we do. I... It, I've, it's not the only person I've spoken to, Root. Um, my Xbox One will just r randomly, infrequently, not rarely though, infrequently, just turns itself on. Um, and I've spoken to other people who have an Xbox One who go, oh, yeah, yeah, it does that all the time. I'm like, what the f Um, your 360 turned itself on, Cage. See, my three, none of my 360s have ever turned themselves on, but the Xbox One, um... Um, yeah, no doubt. I probably do, Root. I wonder if that's related to it. 
Uh, the sex box of wisdom. <laughs> it's for you, Ryan. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, thank you for dropping that uh, gift sub there, Ryan. Uh, I didn't miss anything too much in chat, and I hope you enjoyed that. Like I say, um, that is literally just the the appetizer for what's to come in terms of not only um, na the overall narrative and the, the mission in each book being more kind of involved and um, meaningful to the overall arc of the, uh, the saga, um the uh actual moment to moment situations that uh we get into are far more uh far more interesting um i will um i'm gonna step out for it's a bit early but we've, as we've got a solid break here i'm gonna step out for uh three minutes and make coffee and then we'll come back and uh we'll do whatever you guys want but i guess um i guess we'll do some elden ring um but uh there's no rush to get into that if you want to so if you want to keep just chatting going guys uh drop a, like 500 different questions or comments uh and then i'll get to them when we get back
Right, sorry to keep you waiting there, folks. We've got some uh, some caffeine here, though, so we're good to go. Um, I guess we'll put us on just chatting for a second. Um, Let me just cut that. Done that. Um, so it's sorting it. I'll get your uh, comments and questions in a second. Sorting some stuff out. Uh, stream info. Oh, I've already got saved it. Genius. Um, all right, we can get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, yeah, let me add uh, Cage's name to our... Um, to our uh, collaborators panel. Credit where credit's due. So let me change that to Legion Cage. Sake of accuracy. There we go. Right, sorry about that. We're all sorted. Um, here we go. Here we go. Uh, Rui, it looks like you popped off a, a full blown TED talk here. So let's get to that. Um, start a new Final Fantasy marathon. <laughs> That's your job, Travis. That's your. I'm passing the torch on to you, sir. Um,. It's not to say I wouldn't necessarily go back and play different versions of the games at some point before the foreseeable future. Uh, we, we're done with Final Fantasy. If we do do any more Final Fantasy games, it's going to be spin-off games that are not part of the main series that we haven't covered yet. Uh, Favourite Final Fantasy class for each game? Oh my god, Root. And also, and also not best, I think you said. Uh, I won't fully answer every single game with both of those things, but I can give you a brief rundown of my opinions. Um, yeah, we'll only go main series, I guess. Um, Yeah, Scotty. <laughs> Thank God, Cage is gone. <laughs> we had a wonderful time with Cage. I was honoured to have Legion Cage here, Scotty. I'm sorry if his, his face offended you. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so here we go. Here we go. Final Fantasy One Warrior is the uh, is the best job. Um, closely followed by Red Mage. Um, I don't know any of things with the worst. Uh, exactly what Travis said about Final Fantasy 2. Don't even bother with ma black magic. Uh, white magic's useful. Just go melee. Uh, and all the characters can be built in any way. But I feel overall, Firion uh, has the best. Uh, is, is the best. Um, Final Fantasy 3, all the characters are identical. Um, but it's got every job. Mm, can't say for certain, but thinking back, I feel that uh, Ninja might have been real, real good. Um, following on to Final Fantasy 4, uh, although he's a pain in the ass and a, an absolute little prick when you first meet him at Edge, um, 
I do like his ninjaism. Uh, in fact, he's a you know ninja. Um, that being said, on the flip side of that, uh, the 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 sweetest best character is Rydia. Um, Final Fantasy V. Um, again, all the characters are the same, but Job. Um, I think Ranger was pretty damn good, and I feel that. I don't know, there's definitely a couple of jobs I didn't really get into. I went out of the way to learn blue magic and I was never really got much out of it. Um Final Fantasy VI is gotta be uh Sabin as the martial artist. That's my favourite. Uh Final Fantasy Seven, or again, all the characters are the same. I feel that even though she's arguably the most annoying and you would yeet her in, out into the sun, probably Yuffie uh overall is probably the best character, I feel uh eight again they're all pretty much the same but i feel uh selfie is the best because she has the best limit break technically uh greatest potential um nine yeah zidane is the best character um you could argue vv is best for aesthetic or vibe uh but zidane plays the best i feel um uh ten um Toss up between uh, Waka and Riku as uh, the best. Cause again, there's no classes. Everybody's the same class. Um, toss up between uh, Waka and Riku as being the best character. Um, worst character is Kamari, closely followed by Lulu. Um, uh, Eleven, my favourite uh, overall, if I could only pick one class in Final Fantasy Eleven would be red mage with a uh subbing um ninja for shadows and dual wield sword um feet is also very very good um in uh final fantasy 11 uh blue mage gets a, a shout out i guess um black mage can do a lot of things that neither job can do every every job in uh final fantasy 11 is excellent corsair gun toting dice rolling pirate hard to go wrong with a corsair um i could say a lot about any any class or job in final fantasy 11 uh 12 again the, the the classes in that are kind of weird they're non-specific and you pick two for any character i feel uh overall van despite what people say about him he does have the best stats um i think it was uh bushi was the uh like kind of a samurai build i don't know we had that for him or the maybe the foe breaker is good is 12 was a bit of a different beast uh 13 again a very different beast you need all of the combination of jobs i think yeah ravager commando and medic are the most important of the uh of the six different roles um 14 14 when i played it summoner definitely the best job monk definitely the worst job which is tragic because aesthetically monk should be one of the best it isn't it's shit in 14 in my opinion maybe they changed it um close runner up second would be ninja uh 15 again they don't they don't have jobs do they uh so <laughs> uh probably um probably uh ignis uh chef is <laughs> Is the best job in 15. Uh, I hope that somewhat answered your question there, Root. Um, everyone likes a bit of ninjaism, don't they? Um, but yeah, um, how's, uh, how's work going, uh, Scotty? Yeah, I mean, is it too much to ask Travis to be a summoner also has a gun blade? I, I, I don't know. I feel we need some uh, revolutionary Final Fantasy game that allows you to... Um... Imagine like in 14 where you can switch um, your... You know, your, your class is determined on what your current equipment is. Uh, your main weapon hand. Imagine if your class could be changed uh, on the fly by changing your equipment or some other mechanism so you could be like all jobs in one and make any kind of wild combination 
like Travis's, a summoner with a gun blade. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense, does it? It's Final Fantasy. Um... <laughs> Cecil's Paladin is the worst character in Final Fantasy IV. Uh, I like Cecil as a person, but yeah, I kind of see what you're getting at, Cage. I um, I feel that uh, he's he's cooler as a Dark Knight. Um, honestly, let's let's just be honest. Uh, <laughs> Yuffie is I don't know how how they presented her in um the uh Final Fantasy 7 remake DLC but uh, in in Final Fantasy 7 she's an she's an asshole she's like a liar and a little scumbag and i don't know why they, after it's all revealed and you finish her storyline why do you even have anything to do with her but i feel that technically she maybe not um a limit break isn't the best but um kind of her base stats are very very good and quick um so yeah blue magic generally speaking root is uh spells and abilities of enemies that you have to learn directly from them it can be incredibly powerful uh and it can be also incredibly time consuming to be to go the path of the uh the blue mage no oh, no travis no no poor Aerith. no she's lovely um yeah vv i can't forget vv red mage um yeah, Legion Cage confirmed chaotic neutral now. Um, Lulu is great aesthetically, and she's and she, yeah, she's better than Kamari, but she's only slightly better than Kamari. Uh, Cage, I'd take any other character over Lulu, uh, apart from Kamari. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, with the Joyce. Yeah, definitely, Cage. Um, that was and uh, the I had I've got the um the enhancing sword, uh, which increases uh specifically increases damage of um your end spells for Red Mage. Very useful. Uh, I've almost got the uh the relic sword, which is primarily for Paladin, but Red Mage can use it, which I would probably literally switch out the Joyous for that. Um. I, Rue, I love black magic. It's terrible in Final Fantasy 2. Uh, at the start of Final Fantasy 10, it's really powerful. But as you get into the end game, it loses its luster quite severely, um, unfortunately. But as a concept, black magic is very, very appealing to me. Um, interesting, yeah. Uh, and uh, to be fair, uh, to be fair, Rue, in 12 um again because you can build any character in any way it doesn't actually matter i'm just pretty sure that van whether you like him or not does technically on an average have the best stats of any character uh not in everything obviously but overall as an average he does why because he's the main character i guess but uh balthier would have something to say about that i'm sure um uh <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy 15 is a tie for all the worst. I don't know. I uh, I freaking love Final Fantasy 15. I didn't really like the ending. The ending got weird, and the the ending ending was super depressing. Honestly, how it like ended ended. Um. Um, nin ninja's not nerfed. In fact, my brother tells me ninja in fourteen uh, cage is um, is one of the top tier uh, DPS. Um, and monk, yes, absolutely, monk in uh, Final Fantasy eleven is fantastic. It didn't get nerfed, so I don't know how they changed it. At level eighty cap, monk was a comparable damage dealer DPS to any of the other DPS jobs, but they had positionals. So to my mind, if you have to hit a positional, you, you know, you've got to one second be behind, one second be at the flank, one second be behind, one second be at the flank, and constantly moving when the other DPS don't have to, you should get more damage for doing that. Yet they don't. You get equal damage for having to do that. And if you don't do it, you get significantly less damage. It's like, what's the point of Monk then? 
just for people who are like mo like really real twitchy people who like <laughs> who like twitching about while they're playing i don't know seemingly um but uh yeah ninja in 11 is massively underutilized on the era that i've uh, played on over the past year um because uh generally other for damage other jobs will do better and for tanking a paladin subbing ninja will tank much better um but ninja is bay as as a concept and in uh and in 14 was one of my second favorite job and does excellent damage and is super fun to play and let's be honest ninjas are you know ninjaism should be um you know everyone should like it shouldn't they Ah, X and Travis, yes, Summoner in 14 was my number one favourite job. I only played the level 80 cap uh, shortly after Shadowbringers came out. Um, this was like a few years ago. Uh, and things maybe have changed up, but yeah, Summoner, my number... If I had, had, could only choose one job, it would be Summoner. Uh, Black Mage was not one of my favourites. Took me a while to get into the swing of it, but I felt it was pretty cool once you did. It's just, um, wasn't, uh something i was uh you know it wasn't my, one of my favorites yeah root well don't um don't stress it root but uh recommend that you uh you get on uh some of the older final fantasies when you get when you get opportunity um don't, don't stress it but some of them are definitely worth looking at yeah trading in your summons for for a gun uh <laughs> recommend um damn bro i respect that it takes uh it takes a dedicated fan uh and enjoy of video games to get on with final fantasy 13 uh most people i know deride it and tell you it's trash and i'm like no it's not i've played it on stream and proved that it's not um <laughs> yeah look Yuffie's trying her best, but she is. <coughs> yeah, no, 100%, uh, Root. Final Fantasy uh, X-2 is way underrated. The diversity of the... Uh, having all those classes and jobs um, somehow uh, function as an amalgamation uh, and also to maybe remain distinct, but also um, if you could add all of them in somehow and make everything viable... Uh, in a uh, a single m m o that would be fantastic yeah i mean you know travis that you know that's not uh you think about lulu is that's you know that's not important to a concept of a character but it you know let's uh <laughs> let's be honest it's not uh, an upsetting bonus is it um uh yeah i know most people probably do call her yuffie uh red mage it's just because i'm um you know i'm uh barely an englishman um but um yeah yuffie definitely double f so it's gotta be uff <laughs> um yeah i mean i uh I made a point route on our Final Fantasy X playthrough of like leveling everybody just because um, I think I think we did as we were going through the game certainly. But yeah, she's not in the end party. The end game party in Final Fantasy X is Waka, Riku, and um, Tidus. They are the three best characters. You know, and we beat Penance guys, uh, not on the first attempt either. So. Uh, Oh, right, yeah. I I always called him... Uh, you weren't here with us back then, Root. I always called him Tidus uh, growing up. Um, When we started this playthrough, it was pointing out to me that is the co correct pronunciation, whether you like it or you do not like it. It is Tidus. Tidus. Um, and I got used to it, and now I do refer to him ha as that. Um, Van is Vanilla. <laughs> uh, he is a bit... Uh, bless him. It's not his fault. Um.
Yeah, Excalibur. Yeah, Excalibur uh, cage in Final Fantasy XI. All I've got to do is get a Necro Psych, but I, I've kind of uh, dropped away from playing Final Fantasy XI anymore because it's... You know, I couldn't take part in uh, events anyway. I'm the only person in this time zone who plays on the server. So, you know, my bedtime is before everybody starts doing stuff. So, what can you do? I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff done. Um, but um, you get to a point where you you know I'm just logging in to run around on my own to do what I don't know. Level on my level up my crafts. I don't know, just kill some random notorious monsters. I don't know. Yeah, I can appreciate that, Red Mage. Uh I I did overall enjoy the vibe of 15, but I don't know. And the battle system, while definitely very fluid, it's not it wasn't massively to my tastes. <laughs> Stuck in the gas station route, yeah. That's a bit of a thing, wasn't it? Yeah, do you need a road trip uh, in a Final Fantasy game? And if you do, that's the thing. The uh, the, the setting and story I, of uh, 15, I kind of quite liked, but you're just driving from point A to point B. There's not really, like, much. It's all just, like, random wilderness. There's not like, oh, look at this cool thing. Or any, like, reason to, like, necessarily go anywhere? I don't know. Yeah, fair enough, Travis. Yeah, yeah. Some people prefer the mo the modern era. Some people prefer the uh, retro era. Um, and for every uh, every step they take into the future, now we all like nice, lovely graphics. Of course, we do. Um, streamlining the gameplay. I am absolutely not against um, strict turn-based combat. I, I enjoy it. Um, Yeah, she summoned a gun. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, no, uh, 10 2 is very underrated, in my opinion. Um, fair enough, Red Mage. Fair enough. And Travis agrees with you there. Um, interestingly, you find it more. Uh, you enjoy it more every subsequent, subsequent time you play it. Interesting. I think I can probably uh, somewhat relate to that, Lee. I think I possibly enjoyed it slightly more when we played it on stream. I wonder if it's just the streaming aspect, though. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, thank you, Lee. Um, I am. Um, I'm always very dismissive of the the Final Fantasy Thirteen haters. Um, yeah, you know. Um, yeah, definitely. How can you not like pain? Uh, it was definitely the vibe of. Um, you know, playing dress up with the girls, which uh, I wasn't against, but, and it doesn't matter as long as the gameplay is good. Um, and while overall, I wasn't really as much into the story and the um, the game as a whole as 10, the first one, I, um, is, I love the leveling and job system in it uh, one of the best in the series uh and i love the like kind of the freedom of the kind of like it's not an open world but it's uh, non-linear in how you have to you can go to like, any location in the world from the start of the game basically um and there's chapters when things change after you do do the um the main thrust of the storyline so that i loved uh i didn't like the fact that it felt like there was a lot of missables in the game and to 100 percent you'd have to jump through so many hoops to even get close to doing that um but yeah it was it was very very interesting final fantasy 13 sold you sold you lies did it red mage i don't know i'm not so buddy um yeah i remember that i just I, I knew we'd leveled up um our, our main party like maxed out i just couldn't remember if we'd i'd gone to the effort of doing like the uh the three additional characters four 
the Kamari, Lulu, Auron. Who's the seventh character? Yeah, Yuna. <laughs> the main character. <laughs> Yuna's also a good... Uh, the fourth character. She's better than those other three I just mentioned. Um, Tifa? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, Travis. You don't know, do you? Yeah, if you don't know, you don't know. Um... Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, Root. Yeah, that's, um... There's no voice acting in most of the early games. In fact, 10 was the first one. But because, um, you can change Tidus's name to your name, if you want, um, they, uh... You know, they kind of, uh... They don't have his name said, Yo, Sween, how you doing? Um... Yeah, no, that's what I was going for. Because, uh, Cage, because the Joyous is excellent. Because in a, a, it has the double attack uh, feature, which procs very frequently, I find. Like, it's about 50% rate, it seems to be to me. Um, uh, and it has a very uh, low delay, even by other, like, standard swords. Um, and on uh, as a, uh, you can uh, augment it to do a bit more damage on... Uh, the server i've played on even with all that i just feel uh the enhancing sword is better than it because you've got to go with excalibur in your main hand right um if you have it which i haven't quite got it uh, <laughs> um but i feel i just like the the benefit of the enhancing sword because it's pretty decent stats and it does an extra base amount of damage with the end spells and uh, it has like a latent effect where it just ups your accuracy and attack if you're under the effect of an end spell. So, I don't know. I'd be willing to let the Joes go for that, in my opinion. Um, maybe I'll try it out one day. Who knows? Um, but yeah, just running around as a red mage, nin red mage ninja is, is, uh, is a joy for me personally. Yeah, I'll get it, Travis. I'll get it, bud. Um, motivating yourself to make some food, Root. I wish I was there. I'd motivate you. <laughs> uh, Root, time for food. Like, oh, do I, do I, do I, yes. Oh, God, I do not need. <laughs> I need motivated to do a lot of things. Make sort out food is not one of them. <laughs> um. There we go, Aphelene, you're on the side of 13. Nice, Travis, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's funny, Travis. I, I've kind of knocked it on the head now, but um, uh, over the past year or so, I think, yeah, I think I started literally a year ago and I've kind of dropped off in the past month. I've been playing Final Fantasy XI on a private server. Uh, that is how I met Aphelene. Aphelene was playing on the same server and we became good good buddies um, uh, from playing it. But um, it's there and available. Um, it doesn't have many people on the server, but the people that are there are very dedicated and uh, are willing to help anybody out. So if you need the, the feel of going into an MMO and there's loads of people hustle and bustle running around, you won't get that. But what you will get is the functioning game that runs very well, has pretty much all of the content as it should be, and there's very helpful, friendly people there um, to help you do stuff. Um, it is a steep learning curve in Final Fantasy XI. I, uh, I started uh, Poots, Cootie, and also Akuma, made characters and played a bit of the game. Um, and I kind of taught it to them and helped them out. But they're like, this is too retro and too old and weird for us, <laughs> basically, <laughs> uh, is what it came down to. Um, and I don't blame them because it is, it is, it's hard. You, you, ca you can't really sell Final Fantasy XI. You just have to go into it yourself as a 
very curious uh nowadays like almost historian just to see what it was going on there um but i, but I loved my past year of, of playing it but um and i've still got my character and i can still log in anytime but uh it's difficult for me to uh feel like i'm getting much out of it at the minute um Yeah, Travis, I respect that. I respect that. Uh, one to nine is the foundation. Everything that came after that owes it to the beginning, obviously. But um, it's hard for me to judge. However good they make them in the future, however good 16, 17, 18, whatever comes out, um, there's a certain magic to the earlier games that will, for better or worse, will never be recaptured. But we still got those games forever, so it's all good. Um uh, what's this <laughs> what uh what uh platformer do you think you would survive if you were sort sort of art online into it? Um platformer? I mean, I'll probably just go Donkey Kong Country and just sit in this house at the beginning and just eat his bananas. I mean, really, I don't. <laughs> um, you forget to be hungry, do you, Root? My God, that sounds like a nice problem to have. Bless. All right, so if you're on your own, you can just forget and get distracted. Well, that's an excellent work ethic there. And it's good to, um, you need to eat, obviously, but it's it's good not to eat too much. I think a lot of people eat when they're either, um, they feel bad emotionally or uh, they're bored. Um, you will be healthier and you will feel better if you can uh, fight against those, uh, those feelings. And uh, sometimes it's good to stuff your face. But, um, if you turn it into a habit, uh, you will, your body will not your happy body um and uh yeah not not a good uh place to go um but yeah so it's kind of it's kind of a good route but yeah don't 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 be going like it's and you can even like fast for like multiple days but um not if you're having to sit down and do work and concentrate yeah don't don't do that route Yeah, oh, well, um, there you go. There you go. Have a look at that. Uh, if you need any information or advice, um, I, like I say, I've been playing there for, uh, the past, uh, year, Travis, although I've kind of dropped off. Um, Atheline, I don't think you really play on there too much now, do you, Af? Because I think you lost your macros and it seemed like a pain. And then I think you and Spoon are like doing other games and stuff. Um, Baff is actually a, a GM on the server as well. So if you've got any, in, need any information, have any questions at all, Travis, let us know. It can be a bit awkward to get set up, I found. But if you just take it a step at a time, just read all the info. Um, you need to kind of run it through either a program called Ashita or Windower. Um, and then there's like various plugins and stuff you can set up to make the game a bit easier and a bit more manageable to, uh, understand and get around but even if you just uh make a character just log in and just give it a gander for a couple of hours uh travis you'll uh you'll at least have your own personal insight into the game um exactly exactly right i'll try anything once yeah you got to haven't you Yeah, I mean, but here's the thing, friend mage. You say the game pushes you down a corridor. That's every Final Fantasy. It's just it was far more obvious in uh, in uh, Final Fantasy uh, uh, 13. Let's take 7, one of your favourites. You start the game, you're in a corridor, aren't you? Essentially. You have to go forward. You have to go forward, and you keep going forward until you get eventually get out of Midgar. There's no options. 
oh, you can oh, you can go down that corridor there and open a chest and then come back. <laughs> you have to go forward and then you get out of Midgar and you're like, hey, I'm on the world map. But then you have to go to uh, Coral, don't you? Uh, not Coral, uh, Calm. Sorry. You have to go to Calm, don't you? And get the cutscene. You get the backstory. And then you have to go through the swamp. So yeah, you are wandering around in the open world, but there's nowhere to go. You have to go forward down the corridor. So <laughs> I see what you're saying, but uh, that particular uh, argument. Um, the level up system is linear. Uh, and I guess if we could use seven as an example, it's also linear apart from you choose, I guess, which materia is getting leveled up. So you could argue that is different. Um... Controlling other party members, I would take it a step further and say you don't even control the main party member. All you control in Final Fantasy XIII, you don't control the characters, you control the job, uh, the role uh, paradigm. I think that's what they call it, paradigm shift. At any given moment, that's all you control. It's all auto attack. You're just choosing the job combinations at any given moment. They're very different systems. Some people don't like it. I, uh, I love it. Um, well, the characters were uninteresting. Uh, I would say no more, no, no less so than other Final Fantasies. I can definitely think of less interesting Final Fantasy characters than the ones that appear in 13. Um, so yeah, <laughs> not to poop, that was just my, not to poop what you said there, Red Mage. Your opinion is extremely valid. Um, but, um, that's just my thoughts on your, uh, reasons why you don't feel it's very good. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, um, Travis, 10 did that. 10 was purely uh, turn-based. No time at all. Absolutely turn-based. You could even see the the order of the the turns as they were going to happen by who was going to do what. Um, but also, it is also very linear. And you're going down that corridor in 10. Um, yeah, you, there's something to be said, Travis. The very early ones. 1, 2, and 3 does have that sense of like i remember but when we were streamed one i was like i was not wondering i was like oh i don't know where to go next and travis was like oh do you want a clue and i was like yeah please tell me <laughs> uh and he told me like, well, how to get the airship i was like excellent cool yeah I'd, it wasn't obvious to me now i might have just been being an idiot can you imagine such a thing folks me an idiot what i can't imagine how could that possibly be a thing <laughs> um but, you know, so I don't know. I don't think it... I think it's just... It's just... I don't know. That was... Yes, Red Mage, that was a bait and switch. Now, she does technically have that in the game. Uh, the Gravitech. Uh, st Story-wise. But it's not a thing that happens in combat. Which, that was a bit of a bait and switch. Um... Oh, Sween, if I could only forget to eat. <laughs> um, damn root. Well, look, root. Look after yourself. I can't. I can't be there to look after you. I don't even have any food to give you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, what's what's Raven gonna do? You know. Cheese it. Oh yeah. That sounds good. Coptimus crime. How you doing, sir? Are you well? Um, I be gonna well after we've uh I've sated these ravenous uh lusters of just chatting, we will be uh getting on a bit of Elden Ring in a bit, cop. Um Turkey R or Pastrami. My I'm sure we've gone on catching up on chat here, but um I wouldn't be able to decide. I would either make a pastrami and turkey sandwich or make one of each. I'm greedy when it comes to food. I just... Um... No, this is true. There are plenty of optional areas, but there are also optional areas in Final Fantasy XIII. Uh, there might be less of them, and they might be less obvious. Uh, whereas, uh, you're right, compared to, say, something like Seven, there's a lot of secret stuff you can miss and you don't need to go and do. Um... But, you know, uh, 
Yeah, so it's like the corridor has always been there, Red Mage. It's just the perception. They did, they decided not to try and hide it in 13, and that might have been distasteful to you, um, which is perfectly uh, perfectly fine. It's not <laughs> it's not no problem with that. Um, the job boards, yeah. So 12 is an excellent Final Fantasy game uh, route, but. It's all got a weird system. I love the fact about 12 in that it's, if it, it does feel more open world than a lot of the other main uh, line games. Um, and I love the openness of combat. You're not, hey, random encounter. It's like the enemies are right there. You walk up to them and attack them or you walk away from them. Um and it's all very fluid and setting up the gambit system with your auto attacks and use abilities in this order order love that but the actual license board thing not not really to my taste is it's an excellent idea but i don't, I don't know something about it i just felt that um later ideas iterations of it um or, uh, in fact, earlier iterations of it, the uh, the board in Final Fantasy X is like a very similar idea, which I feel is superior. Everyone's on the same board, but just start in different locations based on their perceived job, and then everyone the drawback every every character eventually at end game becomes the same character, but it does give them everybody the opportunity of ultimate power. Nobody's like locked into any one thing. Um, Whereas you can make potentially tr different choices in uh, 12 and be like, hmm, was that the right thing to do? Have I cut myself off from using a particular weapon or item? Have I... Is this going to be viable, this party setup? It's all a bit weird, but... Yeah, this is a good question, Sween. Uh, and I've been asked this before, um, of what is the... For a brand new... Uh, yeah, wolf. Yeah, food is life. I need, I need it. <laughs> uh, what is the best Final Fantasy to play for a brand new... A, a newcomer? A, a gamer who has never played a Final Fantasy game before? That is a tough question. Which there's no right or wrong answer to. I feel it kind of depends on the person and what they. If it's just like I, if they're, uh, if they're, what is their intent going into it? If it's just to like dip their toe in to say, oh, I've played a Final Fantasy game, and I'm probably not going to play another one, and I'm not even necessarily going to complete this one. I'm just going to uh, just give it a go to see what the series is about. Um, as opposed to someone who's like, hey, I'm interested in the series and uh, I'm just going to get into it. There's no doubt, there's no denying that Final Fantasy VII is the most uh, iconic of the whole series and probably will be forever. Um, for that reason, you could say that anybody and everybody should give Final Fantasy VII a go. However, by to, to, by modern standards, it is a bit. It doesn't look great. They got little Lego men walking around. Um, it doesn't. The materia system is great, but it's, it is fairly rudimentary. I feel, um, and uh, you know, it can be also be a bit annoying and, and fiddly finicky when you're like oh now i've got new material and i've got to equip this one equip this one equip this one on here who's got this gear which party members am i using etc um it's it's perfectly playable and is a wonderful game but i feel um it just maybe hasn't aged well and the more that time goes on it's going to be harder and harder to get new people into playing og final fantasy 7 but it is and always will be the most iconic of the series. So if somebody was just 
Like if if aliens came down and they said, "Give us Final Fantasy," now Travis would say, "Give them the first one," because that's the purest epitome of what Final Fantasy is. Um, but from the cultural impact, I would give them Final Fantasy VII if we could only give them one game, because that would give them the broadest understanding of what it could be. If you have an interest in understanding the more retro era, Sween, I would say Final Fantasy IV. Um, for some, I know I have friends who say it's the the best of the series. Um, it is the it takes the old original old school gameplay of the original idea of the series, and it gives it a very involved. Um, storyline and characters which um pick you up and sweep you along uh, and it is very interesting and very fun um highly recommend for so if someone wants to understand the you know what is a retro uh final fantasy and they want to get into it uh, that would be my suggestion however if someone who was maybe struck didn't care about understanding the I most iconic game in the series wasn't into like retro games I'm like, i don't really care about the origins i don't know what i just want to play the best good game my recommendation would be final fantasy 10 uh final fantasy 10 is a very well made game not only is it extremely turn it is hardcore turn based there's no atb at all um which harkens back to the you know some of the more fundamental ideas of the series it looks great it sounds great it even holds up by today's standards of games i feel um particularly if you get like the, the remastered version of it uh, as opposed to the original ps2 version um the story is very involving the characters are very diverse and interesting um it is fairly linear you can't really get lost the puzzles it has puzzle sections that are very light and uh easy to get into um the leveling system is very straightforward it's hard to say anything bad about final fantasy 10 um while it's not i'm not going to put it on a pedestal and say it's the best in the series or it's my favorite um uh, if we're if a more modern gamer wanted to experience like a single final fantasy game um not caring about legacy or understanding the history but just wanted to have an excellent fun game to enjoy and get a glimpse of into what the series kind of is about i would recommend 10 so that's sort of dependent swing that's just and that's just my opinion i'm sure everybody else here has an extremely different opinion but depending um but that, I don't know. I don't know, Sween. That, uh, that's what I would probably go for. That would be my recommendation to you. Um, Raven's very look lucky to have you, Root. Um, gibbering. <laughs> They're keeping me chatting, Ryan. What, what, can, what can I do? What can a streamer do? We've, got, we've still got three and a half hours left to stream. We will definitely be uh, getting some Elder Ring at, at some point. Um, damn. Fair enough. Fair enough, uh, Root. I would just eat everything, especially if it's meat um, or sandwich or anything. Um, Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, everyone's everyone's uh, excited to see uh, Coptimus. I am always. Um, God damn hell yeah! I feel um, although I, I, in that rant there, I didn't mention Final Fantasy V. I feel that is the underrated dark horse of the mainline series, relative to how good it is, compared to how often it gets discussed. If you devise that, you know, balance up that ratio. You could argue that it's the best game in the series. <laughs> no one ever talks about it. I never even heard anything about it until we played it. And it is astoundingly good, I felt. Um, for what it is, it's really, really rather good. Um, 
Yeah, fighting Bartandalus in 13 is is tricky, Red Mage. It's tricky. Um, my God, Ryan, you have Final Fantasy IX remake. Can you imagine if it's done the the remake of um, up to scratch with uh, on par with uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake? Now, obviously, um, the Final Fantasy VII OG is cut is Lego Men. And they've made it give a very realistic uh, art style, uh, photorealistic art style, uh, as mostly in um, the remake, which makes sense. Um, whereas the characters in Final Fantasy IX are more kind of like cartoony. Uh, they're more like they would fit very well into like a Disney thing, but they could still very much maintain that aesthetic and do a full modern remake much like the uh uh final fantasy uh 7 remake whether they maintained the turn-based combat or made it like the modern kind of vibe either way yeah we would all love to see that um final fantasy 8 final fantasy 8 is an interesting one a lot of people hate it i've even met people who say that 8 is their favorite of the whole series and then some people are like ha hey, funny joke and they're like no i'm not joking sit down and shut up it's a weird one uh but it is extremely fantastic in my opinion i it's not one that i would recommend to anyone as their first final fantasy game though at all um it's better than seven now i've heard other people i've heard people say this afraline and j uh, you are totally welcome to that opinion uh and travis agrees with you okay that's fine um Six is the best, in your opinion, uh, Red Mage. And uh, Coptimus will actually totally agree with you there. Um, you so, do you reckon, Travis, uh, give them nine to understand the uh, the essence of uh, what Final Fantasy is? It might do a better job if that... It definitely has less cultural impact than Seven, but it may be at its core is a truer... Final Fantasy. Um, you could make an argument that in on a technical level, I don't mean technical as in graphics or gameplay, but technically, what is Final Fantasy? You could make a definite argument that 9 is the epitome of Final Fantasy. There you go, Legion Cage. <laughs> Me and my can say that 4 is the best. Why do we say that? Because it's true. <laughs> Fair enough, Cage. Um, uh, you haven't got to choose anything, Sween. But um, my if I if I you put me on the spot, Sween. Um, I I would recommend ten to you because it it still looks, sounds, plays very well. Has the core tactical turn-based combat and is very has a very involving emotional story with good interesting characters uh who you know who are voice acted as well that that's what I, my recommendation would to you personally would be uh swing um urchins you hated 10 did you it wasn't just um tedus's laugh was it uh, and that's perfectly acceptable slick mick how you doing bro coming in here He's, uh, he knows, uh, we know that it's Seven is his favourite. Um, cringe cheesy. <laughs> I don't think it was that bad, but also fair enough. Um, yeah, you got to do the potionomics first, Sreen. It looks like that might be, uh, uh, take a while. Um, <laughs> a jibber ring. I mean, I don't know. That could be anything your imagination allows it to be, Sreen. Uh, <laughs> Don't blow out your gibbering. <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't sound like you want to do that. You want to keep it, uh, keep your gibbering nice and tight. Um, yes, yes, the job system. Yeah, the story's a bit silly, Travis. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, the bad guy in, uh, in Final Fantasy V is a tree. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Why? Because he he just he's very he's very angry tree he's very pissed off he's like I'm going to be evil 
because I'm a tree. Meh. I, I don't even remember exactly. <laughs> that seems to be the essence of it. It's, it's kind of weird and very silly, but I greatly, greatly, and if you can just lean into it and just go with the flow, uh, five is very, very fun. Um, You tried to just slick Mick. Look, bro, it's 13. It's not for everyone. <laughs> Interesting. Eight is sometimes your favorite. There's things in eight that are not... It's hard to uh, quantify, isn't it, Travis? There's things about eight. I'll put it this way, Travis. My first Final Fantasy was seven. Um, that's just the way it worked out. And uh, I was so in love with it that where I got Final Fantasy eight release day and was absorbed and hooked on it i wasn't like ah this and what i thought it was i was like oh my god this is amazing so um and that's that wasn't rose tinted specs there that was that was just how it how it was uh that's how it is um interesting urchins your boss says your favorite is uh his favorite is eight what is your favorite though my friend um eight was your first yeah the first he's always gonna have a special place uh af uh one one way or another um that's the that's the golden trinity there i uh i feel travis if you had to uh if you had to uh pick three in order excellent excellent roots welcome back good on you um is that little bot there swing <laughs> good point lee good point if you were a tree i don't know i suppose if i had human uh consciousness and i was just stuck in the ground and couldn't move and do anything I, it might send me evil i might want to just take over the world also not to men not to forget uh Final Fantasy, the Final Fantasy series has some of the best music in video games, period. And it's hard to put one tune above all of the others. Um, but Final Fantasy V does have the honour of uh, having the best song, and that is Clash on Big Bridge. And um, whichever version of that you go for, that is uh, it's the best song. It is the best song, in my opinion. Um... Travis, do it. Do it, buddy. Oh, it's a little bot. Excellent. Thank you, Swing. Get him out of there. Um, uh, Final Fantasy VIII has by far the best music. Um, I guess that's a hot take, but it's not one uh, anybody can uh, really argue against. Yeah, and Genova's theme, uh, uh, Urchins, is uh, obviously very, very good. Yeah, like the whole series just there it doesn't have bad music in any game, any any track. Um just uh Clash on Big Bridge though, so Okay, it gets me going. <laughs> um So Sween, what you might have taken from all this is uh consider the passion of the fans and we are talking when people say best and worst we're talking minor minor degrees apart from a few exceptions where you know slick mick hates 13 um Affeline adores 13 so there's it appeals to different people in different ways different things but um none of it is bad i've noticed how i noticed how nobody here is being like oh my god is final fantasy 3 is the best final fantasy 3 it's absolutely the best. Um, I don't know if anybody feels that. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy Three is a good game. It's just um, it's my least favourite of the main line. Um, yeah, fair enough, Travis. Yeah, that's the opening theme, isn't it? It's very intense. Um, 
I when I remember when we streamed it, it was uh excellent. Yeah, what <laughs> yeah, just what's Final Fantasy 3? What's that? What even is that? You don't even need to add it to your list. There you go, that's Travis's uh order there. Fair enough. Fair enough, Travis. I can respect that. Um <laughs> Um, something that i'll tell you this slick mick anything that i come across in existence in this reality in this universe which i can simultaneously say it bore i it bores me to the extreme and also makes me want to vomit i would describe that as hate <laughs> I, I, anything that elicited that reaction from me i would i would describe that as hate uh <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I'll link you a version of it. It's an excellent... You've got the original, Root. Uh, oh, yeah, Root. Thank you for dropping out a, a Who song. That's pretty damn cool. I like what those uh, fellas are doing over there. That's uh, very cool. Um, but, yeah, there's, uh, you've got the original from the video game. Uh, there's also excellent covers of uh, Clash on uh, Big Bridge. Um, electric guitar cover is very good, I've uh, got. And also a fellow playing on violin. Also very good. I can't decide which is my favourite, but... Um, I shall, uh, I'll, I'll link you some of those. And you have a little listen later. Um. Okay, Swing. So you've seen a lot of 15. Yeah, 15's been the latest one. And also, I, I feel that 15 is like the least Final Fantasy-like of the series. It doesn't maintain the core of the series. The vibe. But it's... It feels the most removed in ways, which was, you know, it's a fantastic game. It doesn't suffer for that removal from the rest of the series, but um, it's its own thing. Um, it's definitely not representative of the series as a whole. It's is the is the furthest removed in a way. So yeah, I would uh, I would say skip on fifteen, Sween. I'm on a different one. Um. I love, I love that Travis has a specific number. Now, me and Legion Cage did on his channel have a uh, a uh, discussion stream where we uh, we gave our scores for uh, the whole series. So technically, I have an order, and technically, I have an a combined order with Cage. Uh, I can't remember what that order was specifically though. Um, Yeah, Type Zero. I tried playing it for five minutes and couldn't get into it, Travis. Maybe we'll come back to it one day. Eight six seven five three oh nine. Excellent. <laughs> You're not dumb, Travis. <laughs> not dumb at all. Uh, Slick Mick knows as well. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's what we're doing, I guess. But uh, some people here, myself and Coptimus, are eager to see some Elden Ring. Uh, so I guess we'll get into that. Uh, <laughs> so we've got three hours, unless uh, unless you've got uh, other things you uh, you've got other things we need to discuss, guys. Get on it. Yeah, you want the jibber ring? You want me to tighten up that jibber ring? Uh, now you need to uh, let me know. One sec. <laughs> exactly. Look, don't. Yeah, it's all Root's fault, Travis. Um, you you know you just got caught up with their uh, enthusiasm with your enthusiasm you know feeds off each other doesn't it that's that's what this thing whole thing is about um so it's all roots fault um what a lovely uh what a lovely uh problem it is to have <laughs> no yeah travis they're these most of the regulars um they support me and they're here whatever we're doing but their favorite thing is just to you guys talk to each other in chat and i run my mouth and respond to everything you guys say uh, video games what is what's that i don't care about 
um but that is the the core of what we do here um but uh you know i'll, ne I'll never want to keep you guys wanting um of course but uh here we go i'm gonna change our category here we go okay here we go i need to uh let's take our um Elden title Boom. Um, yeah, no, it's the conversation. Conversation is the most important thing. You know, would you uh, rather never talk to anybody about anything? You're just trapped on your own forever. Um, but you had access to all the video games ever. Or you could never play video games again, but you uh, could talk to everybody in the world about anything else. I, lo I do love uh, video games, but... And there's only a certain appeal to be just on your own, doing your own thing. I mean, I'll do that a lot most days, but... <laughs> um to never talk to cool people ever again about different things would be uh would be a problem um but anyway travis thank you so much for being here buddy um you go uh take care of the uh boring adult shit <laughs> very important it's boring but you gotta do it and the sooner you do it the sooner it'll be done and then you can enjoy the rest of your day um but yeah no thank you for being here bro travis it's um i feel like in a way we've come full circle the past, it just, uh, it's kind of highlighted Travis, like, coming back in yesterday, um, uh, the past two years have been, um, a pretty epic and crazy journey, and, uh, absolutely worthwhile, but, um, here's to, here's to the next year, guys, be interesting where, you know, a year from now, we can be like, oh, well, three years, three years of this nip show, be quite wild, because two, you know, you can do, anyone can do two years of anything, really, if you put you put your mind to it, sir, you take care of yourself. And if you need anything, you can just message me anytime on Discord, Travis. Obviously, uh, been the future from uh, you and a lot of you guys. I can't necessarily answer in the middle of the night for me, but I will always reply to everyone eventually. Uh, and uh, yeah, as soon <laughs> when I get up in the morning. Uh, there we go. Um, but uh. Yeah, so while I got little of Potionomics, uh, yeah, just back in time, cop. We're we'll just getting into it. Um, Potionomics, screen is um, it's kind of like a trading game, right? And also like a built-in card game. Like you're trying to sell potions to NPCs, and then you use like abilities and powers, uh, to try and maintain their like their stress level. But you got to kind of get as much money uh, as a trader trying to sell this stuff. Um, but obviously close the deal. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Excellent. No worries, Red Mage. You, um, you could do a chopper. Uh, yeah, we don't want to get any, uh, any spoilers up in here for you. Red Mage has seen loads of this game already, so <laughs> I don't want any spoilers. He's seen loads of it. Um, yeah, you'll get on that new Bleach episode. Is that episode five? Damn. It's tempting. It is tempting. Uh, Especially because Red May just told me it's freaking amazing, but I can't, I can't be doing too many uh, weekly animes. One is enough for me. Um, ah, so the core gameplay is a card game. Excellent, Sweeney. I do love a, I do love a card game. I kind of miss Magic the Gathering a little bit. It's just it got more tits, and uh, some of the people you play against in it are uh, obnoxious obnoxious little shits and so like, however good something is i don't want to be like dealing with obnoxious little shits and also feeling that i think more you know things are getting on my tits you know maybe one day yeah it looks pretty cool you're not ryan i'd play magic the gathering with you all day every day in fact when i get to heaven there's going to be you know, I'm going to get there. I'm going, oh, what's heaven? And God's going to be like, everyone gets their own heaven is. Uh, and I'll walk, off you go, walk through, open the door to my heaven. And there will be Ryan just chilling with cheeseburgers, uh, whiskey. I'll probably want on the whiskey. That's just for him. Uh, and, uh, 
and we'll just play Magic the Gathering forever. Um, so yeah, no, definitely not you, Ryan. Um, oh, it's episode seven. I thought it was up to just up to five. Um, but yeah, it sounds like a really cool game, Cop. Um, yeah, it's kind of like a card game, but it's like kind of like trading, but like a potion merchant. Um, I guess you craft them as well. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we, the thing is, Root, we need the hot tub first. That's the only problem. Um, yeah, the fact that they make a game like that, Sween, and they put in a lot of uh, different characters and character development. That's um, it, it sounds really cool. What little I saw you play of it. Um, <laughs> hey, look, like, I don't get to decide. Uh, Route. it's obviously uh my subconscious but yeah if, it's up, if it was up to me i'd uh i'd be making heaven on earth for us all right now but alas my uh my jesus powers are somewhat lacking um yeah we'll have to wait and see won't we uh yeah i mean that's what that's what good-looking fictional characters are for, Swing. You know, that's their purpose. So, don't <laughs> don't don't feel bad about it. Now, if it's affecting your gameplay, that's on you, and you have to make a decision, don't you? But um, all right, guys, let's, we've got three hours left to stream. Um, we had lots of fun earlier with Legion Cage. Um, with uh, our first Lone Wolf book, very uh, a far shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um. But I'm pretty sure they very much pick up from here on out. So sometime next week, day to be decided, we will get into book two, A Fire on the Water. Um, and I'm, I'm personally very much looking forward to that. I remember the second book a lot more. I've got a very decent idea of what may be coming up along the way in that one. Um, excellent. So uh, you in the kitchen, Urchins, and you uh, have you... Uh, You've uh, got us on, on in the background to listen to while you're working. I, I appreciate that, bud. Is any number of streams you could be um, you could be uh watching and listening to right now, um, be choosing us. So I appreciate that. You literally waste. You literally undermined your own business, Sween, because you're a massive flirt. Why am I not surprised? Um. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that's the game, isn't it? But anyway, let's uh, see if we can remind us of what we did in Elderly Ring yesterday. Yeah, we're not up to 2,000 uh, 2, deaths. We're at 214, which is, I mean, it's bad enough. Let me fix this webcam, because this webcam doesn't like me. And, uh... <laughs> no, no, Aff, it wasn't. It wasn't true. It was a lie. Um, I mean, <laughs> Sween, there's, there's no shame to be had in that. Oh wait, I need to turn on my um my laptop. Sorry, I didn't turn my laptop because um I didn't think I'd need it. But as we are at a con out of the console, well, I kind of do. So I'll be behind in chat for a minute. But bear in mind, bear with. Um, no, exactly, exactly, Sween. There's nothing wrong with it. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. Video games. You don't have to do what the game wants you to do to enjoy it. It's pretty new as well, isn't it, Sween? I think it's only like recently come out. I don't think it's on Game Pass or anything. Although I could could be mistaken. Um, right. Okay. Where were we? What were we doing? I think we cleared this cave out yesterday, didn't we? It's like the last thing we did. Yeah, it was the snail. It was the little snail thing we fought, wasn't it? Right, okay. So I need to... Uh, my next mission... Okay, there's a road there. Is to find um, the map of this area. Because I'm looking at it like... I, I know that, you know, we got here. And this is kind of send us in this direction, roughly. But uh, I, I want to kind of pinpoint the academy. Um, honestly. Okay, we've got the finger reader crone there. Is that a broken bridge or is this the road that's going up there? 
So maybe this is the academy up here. It's just this road goes wee. Oh, sorry there. Goes like that. Um, but yeah, it's all shall become clear when we find the map. Um, obviously, I don't know what's down here. I don't know what's in this giant swamp, apart from awful things that want to kill us. Um, so my best bet is to try and find the uh, the map, so I can we can make sense of what we should be doing. So uh, let's get to that. So I get my uh, laptops out. So I think I need to be heading uh, north and east. For the most part. Well, I mean, is that the academy right there? Maybe it's this building. That seems kind of s kind of small. Unless the academy is the whole of this area. I don't know. I'm not speculating about it. Let's go. It's pretty impressive, whatever it is. I don't want to stay away from these land octopuses. Scary old things. Made to the temple quarter. Okay. I see all sorts of hellish things hanging around. All right, well, clearly, we need to um, check all of this stuff out at some point. Yo, Sly, how you doing? Could you see you play a bit of Haunting Ground yesterday, Slight? I uh, also played that game randomly. I think I was going through a period of just collecting any game that seemed to be survival horror. However, kind of outside of the genre it was. I, I do, I did play a little bit, but I never, um, I never, like, probably got into it. I think I got stuck early on. Um, and obviously the fact that it has no combat also kind of, uh, maybe works against my uh, thought of it anyway. Um, uh, the Broadly Path, the Elden Broadway. That's what we're looking for. It's like, it's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. How you doing, buddy? Are you well? Yeah, that, yeah, that's clearly the Academy, isn't it? I just, uh, I can't t tell exactly which part it is. We'll, we'll find out when I get this map, though. All right. Although, I don't, I'm in two minds whether to, um, whether to go straight to the academy and see if we can make some headway in there, or do you want to see me just stomping around in this wet old swamp for a while? I don't know. So not there's anything, uh, good might come of this, but there's got to be stuff here, right? There's got to be all sorts of, like, treasure and random things hidden away. But it might be um, more for us to just, like, get our teeth into. Okay. So I can see the road there. I'm not seeing a, a map yet. So is it all the way over here? We seem curious if the map was, like, right there. But then again, I'm, I, my brain is saying, oh, well, the map marker wouldn't be right in... Uh, because it's too near the edge of what we've already uncovered, but I mean the other map marker was like what there? So there's no reason to suggest anything in particular, is there? Not certainly not in this game. So we try in this direction. God. Wow. 
magical plant say oh whoa whoa god damn it aha it is it's all the way down there okay <laughs> which is presumably up on top of here so we need to find a way up on there ah academy gate town whoa giant crab I am bro sorts of crazy ruins and stuff to uh, explore yeah I'm kind of in two minds about it I mean if you started getting into it Sween no, I mean uh, I'd love to play Bloodborne oh, it's uh, slightly different to uh, this and the Souls games but There's uh, enough of it. It's not really uh, too much of an issue. You know, if you've if you've got into it a bit, you should be able to. Should be good to go. Oh, excellent! Here we go. Some grace. Now, oh, too too much grace, can you? Yeah, that's fair enough. That uh, is like that, isn't it? Sometimes if it's been a while, the four bosses in the in the in the uh, space of things is not really that many um right okay north leonia let's have a look right here we go this has given us a much better idea oh my still map over this way interesting um right okay so this has got to be the academy right this thing surely and so it looks like this road is what goes in here ah finger reader crone there right okay you know what i'm kind of um i'm tempted to see if we should uh try and cover more map sections before we like head in here and again, maybe I should not be heading in there right away. I should be, like, trying to clear out these uh, ruins and stuff. Maybe I should do that in my own time. I don't know. But, yeah, we've still got friggin' uh, map sections over here. Hmm... What I'm going to do first, guys, that coffee's gone right through me. So I'm going to step out for one minute and think about it while I'm peeing.
Um, that's a lot of uh, sip emotes you got there, Corey. Hmm. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, part of me wants to go directly into the academy uh, cop to um, to just get like a, a, a big dungeon, much like uh, Castle Stormvale, to get like her teeth stuck into. But undoubtedly, there's all sorts of treasures and secrets and stuff outside here that maybe it's more sensible for us to be um, getting that done at the minute. Look, there's a telescope there if you want to get a bird's eye view. Um, of stuff. Um, look, we've even got a like that has got to be a thing, right? But I'm I'm curious. Yeah, if, I mean, if we look at the world map, half of me wants to just put all that aside for a minute. Because um, now I've like I guess I'm not crazy tough, but toughened up a little bit. Um, and we've you now we've got Torrent. Part of me, I wonder if this is the whole world map. I don't know. Uh, wants me to uh, go and uncover the rest of the world map um, as best we can. I know definitely there's a map marker there and a map marker there. Um, just so I guess I can make a more fully informed decision. I assume there's nothing down around these areas. I should assume that. But clearly there's a map marker up this way somewhere. Um, God knows about up there. Just um, I'm at the point where I kind of just want to see the rest of the map. I think that's what I'm going to do for a minute. Um, would that be up there or down here? Hard to know, isn't it? I'm going to uh, I'm going to go map hunting for a second. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Cobb. Just quickly do that. Um, oh, I see you can try to get into the academy, but maybe you can't. Mm. Yeah, we're going to spend uh, a couple of minutes, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes just riding around the map on uh, our goat horse. Um, <laughs> uh, just looking for some maps. Because, uh, um, you know, who doesn't like a map? And it kind of uh, allows us to inform our decision a bit there. Now... As Cop said, and um, as they are, does seem to be the case. Um, the maps are on roads, and the roads are technically marked on your map, even when you've actually not got your map. But I guess I shouldn't make any assumptions about where one thing begins and another thing ends. So. Let's head south for a minute. Yeah, look, that's the thing up there. All the things. Oh. Is this the first time we've seen stars? I don't know if I've seen stars at all before. Honestly. Huh. Yeah, um, but yeah, with uh, Torrent, um, it's, yeah, unless I'm an idiot, it's quite easy to get past enemies, I feel, for the most part. Oh, there you go, I've got another minor Erd tree with uh, another uh, avatar there. Okay, I won't worry about him for a minute. The last one beat the shizzle out of us. Uh, good to know they're there for later. I'm sure you get something good for killing them. You can't climb up there, can you? I'll be all sorts of crazy. No, I don't see how you would. Now, can I even uh, get up here? I don't know. I have to come around from a different direction.
Okay, I'm in a poisonous swamp. Um, I'm heading directly south, so let's uh, keep having a little look in this way. Even if you don't find the map, you are technically uncovering the fog of war on the uh, the not proper map, if that makes sense. I stole that little crab's uh, smithing stones. Whoa! I've yet to fight one of those big crabs. I've been killed by one, like, once, though. <laughs> oh, this is all sorts of scary. Ominous. Gonna bump into a swamp dragon or something. Oh, wait, is that... Yeah, it's a white one, isn't it? Oh. Of course. There we go. Hey, Ashes of War. Vow of the Indomitable. I mean... Okay, I'll, let's get... Are we safe here? I think we're safe for a minute. Um, nice, let's have a look. It's the first uh, kind of shiny looking one as well. Uh, ah, Vow of the Dumbledore Sacred. Ah, okay, so well, these blue ones are the sorcery infused Ash of War. Maybe this is the uh, Faith uh, one. Um, grants an armament the sacred affinity and the following skill Vow of the Indomitable, skill of the ancient warriors of the Erd Tree. Hold shield aloft to imbue yourself with golden power. Granting momentary invincibility. What the hell? Usable on all shields. Uh... Um, that could be useful. Because you're just using a, you're just using FP to power that, and I assume you you're losing your parry ability on your shield. But invincibility for a period. That could kind of... Well, it depends how long it lasts, but that could kind of mean... Um, as long as you've got the FP, you could just, like, pop your invincibility, then uh, just kind of, like, absolutely stomp, steamroll a, a boss. I mean... And then just keep... As long as you have the FP, just keep it going, but... Who can say if that... I mean, I'm sure it's not that vo as viable as all that, but... Crystal bud, yeah. I could. Uh, I need more of that in my life. <laughs> so, I'll be, okay, and this is bringing us down here. I don't really see any way round. There must be. There must be a way round, right? This is just that literally that we're looking bats. I don't care. Not worth fighting them. Right, they're still coming after us. Oh, well, one of them died apparently. Right, so we cut across there like that. Apparently, it's still land here, but I don't see how we would necessarily get into it. Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it now. I'm just going to assume the map for this section is maybe to the north. Um, but if, as we've made it all the way down here, and this just seems to be a little kind of peninsula plateau thing, a little spit of land, and there seems to be a tower or something at the end. Might as well have a look while we're uh, here. That yeah, some kind of ruined tower there. Um. Yeah, I love it. The 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 the, uh, the appearance uh, and graphics might not be to everyone's taste, uh, cop. I'm sure it looks even better if you're on a high spec PC. 
and it does on Xbox One, but I I uh, I I just look like looking at stuff. Just like the enormity of it. You're like, oh, you see, you see that there in the distance? Yeah, you can go there. Oh, what? I, up, up there? Yeah, you can go there. What, even over there? Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can go there. You see that giant tree there? Yeah, we'll be chopping that down soon. Or, or not. I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. But, um, yeah, I, I always loved that about in the Dark Souls games. You'd see things in the distance and be like, oh, yeah. But this is just taking let's say, that same idea to the nth degree. Who's you throwing something at me? Who are you throwing things at me? Oh, little goblin fellas. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, look at this little smoke screens and everything. I guess I could go back and kill all those, but I don't know. I need to at the moment. Maybe worthy of investigation, though. We might have something. Oh, whoa! Well, right, I, I feel I should go back there for some revenge at some point. <laughs> um. Oh, you know what this is, don't you, kids? Another ever jail. Malefactors ever jail. Um, is there a uh, Marika statue around? I'm happy to go in there and give it a go. As we've, especially as we've come out this way. Ah, no, maybe there is or maybe there isn't, but there is just down here. A little uh, updraft. To, yeah, so if we respawn there, we can just easily get back up here. Okay. Um, only got 800 runes. Not too much to lose. Not to mention if it's like the others. We should kind of uh, respawn. Um, I should probably want to go in with um, fresh heals. But it's very unlikely we do it on the first attempt anyway. So, um... You give good XP, do they cop? Uh, okay. I'll, uh, I shall maybe remember that for later. Um, let's just dive in here. We'll see what, see what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Who lives in a house like this? A Dan, the, the thief of fire, and he did uh, indeed put fire on us. Uh, <laughs> that was a quick one, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, I, probably, I guess if he's using fire, I'll probably be not a terrible idea to uh, equip our... Um, our fire resistance uh, uh, talisman. I feel that we need our arsenal charm on at most points. Um, and I do like the curved sword because that's better guard counters. And of course the claw because that's better jump attacks. Which I do want to try and make use of. But um, for this fight, maybe just having some fire resistance might be a better option. Um, and this is putting us like directly next to it. Excellent. Cool, cool. Now I'm going to need to um, take the uh, time to specifically um, collect our runes each time. But, uh, so be it. Okay, so kind of pointless using a, a fire on him, I guess. Uh, do we have uh, we got enough to uh, have our catalyst? It'd be medium load. We do, X. Not necessarily going to need that, so let's uh, unequip that. Okay. It can blast you with fire at point blank range. Yeah, basically, Ryan. He's like, no, I don't have. Who are you? Disturbing my sleep. I don't have time for this. Can you go away, please? 
Right, let's see what he's got. What you got, buddy? You got a little, little swingy stick, haven't you? Ow! Oh my god, he is, uh... He's quite slap, slappy. What's all that? What's all that? What's all that you're doing, bro? Here we go. Time for the flame. Oh, wow. What the f... Oh, oh. Oh, I see. Oh, got some nice bombs going on now. Okay. 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 His normal attacks hit hard, but... Ah, he just healed himself, did you? All right, buddy. All right. All right. I'll play with your bomb, dear. Okay. Careful not to walk in the flame there. Oh, he's like, no, I only had one, I only had one of those. <laughs> okay, by far the easiest ever jail uh, boss. Flame of the Fell God. That's a spell. And wow, crazy amount of runes, which is for, yeah, easy, easy cop. Did you find him easy? He's like, swing, 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 swing. Hit. <laughs> ha, have my very slow moving fireball bomb. No, I'm going to walk away from it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, interesting idea. No, I'm not, you know, it's a, it's a nice change to have a boss that I can kill on the second attempt rather than just get utterly yeeted constantly um but there we go only one death on that guy i'm pretty happy with that um okay uh what did i so it was a new spell i think wasn't it i think it was yeah let's have a look summons a raging fireball that explodes and sets the area ablaze so i guess it's essentially what we've just seen there 41 faith Jeez Louise. Maybe it's better than what he was showing off there. I don't know. This legendary incantation is one of several that draws directly from the power of the fire giants. This is a ball of raging fire said to be in inhabited by a fell god. The fireball floats towards enemies and explodes, setting the area ablaze. Um, easy for us to avoid, but maybe not for the AI. Maybe bosses would struggle avoiding that. Um... Arganthi, Arganthi, the Arganthi, the chief guardian of the flame, had kept this incantation a well-kept secret until it was stolen by Adan. The fell god still lurks within the, the fire giants. Wow, I can't imagine having fought him on faith. But, <laughs> never mind, that's not the point. Um, interesting. Okay, that was cool. That was a cool little uh, diversion there. Um... Now, did our, our little uh, nomadic merchant bro, he had a couple of things more I want to buy, didn't he? I think I'm sure he did. So let's, um, let me just jump down here and buy these, whatever he's got. I'm sure he's got something. Okay, that's a, that's a good way to start the, uh, play, the stream today. Um. Oh, screw you, buddy. Ah, not a. I don't think I've got anything to sell at the minute. All right, what did he have? Ah, okay, I wanted to buy the um. Ah, of course, we've got the uh. Yeah, so I've got the uh. The lantern. Oh, whoa, whoa! For some reason, 
I thought talking to the NPC wouldn't, uh... Wouldn't hassle us there. But silly me, eh? Yeah, you want some too, boy, do you, bro? I'm glad they didn't hit him. Imagine if it hit him. That'd be a problem. I like he just sits there and he doesn't acknowledge him. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, get the S doc just to um, discuss the collection. I'll just probably swing it around a second, I guess. Um, and then, of course, we want to uh, we'll get the uh, astrologer's staff. Okay, I can't really use it yet, but who knows? Let's hold out hope. And... Um, I'll buy the, uh, the hood as well, I think. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so yeah, the S-Dog. It counts as a, a rapier, I guess. A thrusting sword. Yeah, it's just like super long. Okay. That's pretty cool. Okay, seems cool. I think we'll stick with our um, our uh, bloodhounds fang for now. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, right, so let me check my little uh, little hood out here. So it's giving you. So we're losing. Okay, so it's very light. Um, we're losing a bit of point. Point of poise. Um, get more focus, vitality, resistance. Um, immunity and robustness are down, and all physical is down fractionally. But all, uh, all magics are up slightly, so they're kind of comparable. This doesn't really matter. I guess we can rock the hood for a minute. Um, might need to save on weight as well. I don't know. Um... Okay, let's take off the fire. Let's give back our uh, guard counter, I think. I, have, I feel like if you're playing, I don't want to say properly, you should try and uh, lean into um, doing guard counters more than jumping attacks, but it doesn't matter. That's just because I'm very guardy. No, thank you, Ryan. I was trying not to. Um, but, it, you know, it all panned out well. Um, cool. Uh, right, so next. So, yeah, that was, uh, I enjoyed that. That's cool. So, I cannot see the road down here. So, let's telly back there and head directly north. There's just so much to this game, isn't there? I wonder. So we're going to... I'm going to do this... Obviously, we've got two and a half hours today. We've got all day Wednesday, all day Thursday. I'm off Friday. And I'm at the moment, I'm inclined to do a full week of it. Bar um, Lone Wolf of Cage, if, he's, if he can pencil us in for uh, next week. Uh, one day, his choice of day. Uh, as long as I let you guys know uh, that are interested, should be good. Um, so we've still got a lot of time with this, but when we we still aren't really done with this, far from it, are we? So then when we drop it down to a single stream per week, I wonder uh, how I wonder how far it's um, you know how long are we going to be playing this game for? If we're doing one stream a week on it. I mean... Three months? Six months? A year? I don't... <laughs> it's hard to wrap my head around how much there is. Maybe I should... Start doing sections of like... Maybe like just random wilderness. Uh, off stream. 
Hey, gold tinged poop. Excellent. Where's Ansel Crystal Bud? <laughs> Getting spoiled up in here. Oh, wait a minute. This is another Ever Jail we just stumbled on. That is as well. All over the place, aren't they? Um, cook oh, the cuckoo's Ever Jail. I mean, I guess we'll give this a go, right? Um, I guess I should probably uh, equip my little uh, talisman there again. Um,. It's got to be, uh, we've got to have stumbled across a Mar Marika statue nearby, I guess. I don't know, maybe you need to stumble n across it, but um, anyway. Let's dive in here, I guess. As we're riding that wave, um, this one's not going to be uh, as easy as the last one, is it? Okay. Let's see, let's see what we got. Oh! Bowls, the carrier knight. Bowls, you're a big boy. Oh, he's got. Oh! Alright, it's like that, is it? Oh, shizzle. Oh, sh oh, shiz. All sorts of shiz. Alright, yeah, you chonk. Trying to run away like that. That's gonna work, we'll see. Okay. Well, that those ma that magic you made is a bit of a problem. Well, that's not the only problem, is it? Honestly. I think on um Okay, a few adjustments we can make is let's not worry about using our shield. I need to dodge this guy's attacks. Uh, which, uh, in that case, no point in having our guard counter. Might as well change to jump attack. Uh, um. A fire might be good, or maybe not. I don't know. Let's, um. Yeah, I don't know the best way to, uh, fight a big boy like this. Honestly. Let's, uh, give it a go, though. I think as a giant, though, if you do enough damage to one of his legs, you can, like, knock him over. But of course, uh, trying to stay alive while all that's happening is uh, another thing altogether, isn't it? Let's get stopped like that. Oh, okay. Trying to dodge those. A little bit tricky. Oh my god. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh my god. Ay, ay, ay. My, uh, oh, he fell over. Okay, maybe I was supposed to make, take advantage of that. Um, holy hell, big boy, big boy, and then some. Um, hmm, okay, let's try a few more times. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not optimistic about this guy, but I don't want to like give up immediately. I oh, did not get my runes. I didn't, did I? I got zero runes back then. I think I only had like, a tiny amount, didn't I? Less than 100. Oh, nice.
Okay. This is how you're supposed to do this fight then, obviously. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, cool. Okay. If I can take it to him and just make sure I don't get hit. Just gotta not get hit. <laughs> Got down to like a third hit points there. He fell over. Um, can't uh, can't complain about that. And he, he didn't. All, he also didn't take the time to stop and um, do his uh, magic buff, did he? Because I, th I guess we're right right under his. Uh, under his feet, got his chump. <laughs> well, let's let's say that after I've got him, cop. Because if I don't, then if he's a chump, what am I? <laughs> I like that though. That was clearly the way to go, wasn't it? I'm trying to not get stomped like that, but oh, I wonder if. Uh... He takes more damage. Oh, yeah. I think he takes more damage on his head, maybe. Or maybe not. I don't know. Oh. Okay. Got to avoid that. Got to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, stay inside. Got to stay in the pocket. Definitely. So in that pocket there, Cobb. I think when I knock him down, though, mate, I don't know if maybe he's got, um... I don't know if I'm supposed to be, like, attacking his head, maybe. Or if not, maybe he's got, like, a, a, a point on him where I can uh, do the, uh, do, like, a, a crit because he's knocked down. Which maybe that's not the best idea. Maybe you're supposed to just um, because you won't necessarily get more damage. But I feel maybe in this case that's the uh the thing to do. Okay, if we knock next time I knock him over, I'll go, I'll try and reposition to get towards his head. There we go. Let's see. Okay, I mean, maybe. Ah, I'm getting. I'm gonna get uh two. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, not what I wanted to happen, but. Oh. God damn it, I thought I'd got it then. Come on, get up. Get up, bar. Uh, do you think so, cop? I guess so. But this is a fun fight. In fact, he's so chunky and he's slow, but I just ch chunk at his legs. <laughs> um... Yeah, I uh, something that uh, getting faked out though by uh, Dodgers when they're doing a big wind up attack. So I'm like, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and I always go too soon. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> never, never, re never red mage. I mean, I say never. I've done that in other games, haven't I? But my rage is fairly, uh, fairly calm though. But yeah, we can get this guy. This guy and all that. He's just he's far scarier than he looks. There we go. Shame I didn't get the second uh, head uh, attack there, but I don't know. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so I don't know what the. Uh... Oh. I know what they're going to do for me, if anything. 
Ugh. Yeah, I feel it was better to get the heals in there. Oh, heal again. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Couldn't even see where I was then. I was just guess dodging there. Which I shouldn't have done. Just because I can't see. I can see what he's doing. Even if I can't see myself. Um. Uh. Of this game, Red Mage. Well, not surely not on this boss. Who knows? Yeah, I mean... I've still got that Crucible Knight in the back of my brain. He's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, do dodge towards. Yes, indeed, indeed. Cop. I should probably... It might not be a terrible idea to even take the lock off, maybe. Um, so I'm not getting like, caught up in his legs, necessarily. But, yeah. Yeah, I just panic dodge. That's my, <laughs> that's my uh, weakness in this game. Oh, no, I've been attacked. I've been attacked. <laughs> There we go. Oh. Oh, he's out of the area. Oh, he's out of the zone of the... Uh, oh, that's... Okay, we got him. There we got him. Great blade phalanx. Yeah, I'll take that, bro. I don't know if I can use it, but that's not the point. I'll take my lack of runes as well. Excellent. That's not too bad. That's a, that's a fun. That's a fun fight. It was easier than the previous guy. Uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um... Yeah, I'll find in the big chonky uh, bosses. I remember fighting, um, there's like a particular dragon fight in Born in the Dark Souls. I don't remember which Dark Souls. Uh, which is, you do, you know, you're doing yourself a disadvantage if you, at least if you remain locked on, you need to like be flexible in being locked on and being not, just because for very large targets. Uh, man sized targets. Uh, staying locked on is a very sensible thing to do, but um, it, you know, you just got to be adaptable, haven't you? Okay, let's have a look at this new spell. Um, wasn't that this one? Great Blade Phalanx. That was obviously what he was popping out, wasn't he? Um, forms a defensive arch of larger magical glint blades. Obviously home. They don't always hit, but they be chunky damage. 29 intelligence needed, though. <sighs> One of the sources of the Karian royal family creates a defensive arch of larger ma magic glint blades overhead, which automatically attack nearby foes. Used by the enchanted troll knights, that guy. They were the comrades of the young Granala, bound by oath. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Anyway. Cool. Oh, okay. We've got some... Uh, we're going to spend our, uh, our runes again, couldn't we? Probably not going to die, am I? I'll speak too soon, but I think it'll be alright for a minute. Oh, we got another singing bat lady. Thing is, um, there's no benefit to killing them. Uh, well, not the last one. Unless there was. Um, unless there is uh, for that one, but I'll come and check that later. I like the song. I don't think a, a bat lady would uh, have such a cool song. Hey, there we go. Oh, I might actually go back now and then. Now we've got some grace. Just don't want to re, re, uh, re uh, tread our steps yet again. Um, 
Okay, so it looks like um the this marker, these ones, three are definitely sending us towards the academy here. Uh, this one is definitely not, is it? This one's telling us to go elsewhere. The foot of the four belfries. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to jump back here, spend our uh, runes and whatever this guy had left for us. I think it's just a, bit, a couple of bits of the mage gear, which um I don't know we necessarily need at the minute, but the collection grows. I think I've, I've finally nearly got to a point where I've bought everything and we can actually forget about that. Now, some people probably think I'm weird and they're like, why be so OCD? Why are you buying sh random shitty items you're not even necessarily going to use? Just level up is. <sighs> Sometimes I'm my own worst enemy. Um, but once we've got all the items, not then I can just forget about them. Does that make sense? And then I can just put all our runes into leveling up. Um... I can't, you know, I can't help myself sometimes. Anyway, there you go. Major's body, hands, and feet. Um, also arrows and uh, some smithing stones, but um, I don't know. I should be buying smithing stones, really. Okay, I'm not going to head back to the round table hold just for that tiny amount there. All right, yeah, finger reader crane. We'll come and see you in a bit. So it looks like there's a little bit of a town outside of the academy. Who knows if we can even get in there yet. Uh, but compared to, honestly, looking at this, compared to um, Castle Stormvale, it doesn't look like there's that much to it. Obviously, that's not going to be the case, is it? But then again, actually, if you look at the size of Castle Stormvale, It's actually, <laughs> I'm telling, I'm telling myself lies. <laughs> the academy is actually larger, um, which is staggering to think. Um, okay, let's get back up here. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel because even if it's stuff that I, I just like having all of the equips. Uh, even if just to, to have the option there, cop, and um, I like kind of clearing the. The, you know, rather than uh, most people I expect would play this and just go, oh, I've got another level, leveled up, leveled up, leveled up. And then just kind of forget about those items and maybe they're, maybe they it's, they don't suffer anything for that. They're, it's, they're absolutely fine. Um, but I don't know, I, I like doing that. I won't like buy, so for example, that, I mean, maybe I will buy that guy's smithing stones if they're, he's only got a certain amount. I don't know. Um, but I like the idea of, uh, not neglecting the items. So once they're got, they're got. And if we clear the deck, we can just go, oh, okay, the only thing we need runes for now is levelling up. <sighs> Jeez, talk about music tournament ominous suddenly <laughs> aha i see a road i see a map there we go northeast i've got some someone's camp here yeah there's clearly enemies aren't they oh oh okay Giants pulling along uh, their little cart there. I'm assuming that guy's not friendly. Oh no, he's like the opposite of friendly. <laughs> Yeah. 
can sit at a sec to reset. Garuda! How you doing, sir? Are you well? Ah, uh, I do not. I do not call. I knew there would be something there. There'd be some benefit to dealing with that mess, but I didn't know there was uh, specifically a treasure in them. I think that's only the second one we've seen. Uh, hopefully, I'm not missing out on those that I've uh, I've not dealt with them as I've come across them. Well, I mean, if we are, then you know. All right, Western Liernia. Right, here we go. Right, all sorts of things up here. That's another uh, ever gel there, isn't it? Um, now, can you walk on this lower section here? I would hope you'd be able to. I'm just trying to see how we get back up, get up on this plateau here. So we're down here. I don't know. Okay, well, it definitely needs to be explored, doesn't it? Definitely. Um... Right, what is this thing? That's not the academy, is it? But now I can uh, kind of imagine that there's not necessarily anything we can get to in that direction, or at least the map for it might be over that way. Um, so I wonder, this road here, can you only get to this up here by? Yeah, we've got the finger crone on that side, going through the academy here. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe you can come from uh, up on uh, this way here. I I get the uh, feeling, though, that that's kind of uh, filled in that section of the map for now, practically speaking. There's a lot to look at, a lot to do. Um, I'm going to come back down here to uh, Limgrave for a minute. Um, we're just going to try and grab this map and uh, that map over there briefly. Um, what's the quickest way? That one, maybe? Just uh, get this map uncovered a little bit. And uh, then we'll we'll probably go back to the lake area. Uh, and um, try to start picking that apart for a minute. Um, oh, okay, cool, cool. Excellent, thank you, cop. No, 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 yes. No point in wasting time, is there? <coughs> it's hard to tell from the map which parts you can get to and which parts you can't. But that was, um... That was my vibe. Yeah, yeah, so... It loads up. There we go. Yeah, yeah. So, this section you cannot climb up to. Maybe you do go across that bridge. Uh, and this section you possibly cannot climb up to either. Um, yeah, in fact, I don't... Yeah, I don't think you can even get up here at all, can you? To any of this. I guess you can head up that way. I don't know, but... Worry about that later. We've um, got a whole gigantic swamp lake thing to examine. Not to mention... Oh, unless you were thrown to this thing cop this plateau here um oh this is yeah okay so you can get up to this side but you can't get to that okay that's mysterious isn't it i bet we can head down there we're running up there got this oh much to look at here um but yeah for now i just want to uncover this side of the map just to get a, a vibe for what's going on um Oh, I wonder if that, um, that bro over here, 
has got anything to say yet. He speaks to you, but there's nothing uh, nothing comes of his conversation. He said he's a hunter hunter of bloody fingers. Now, surely the bloody fingers are the uh, invaders, right? Let's have, a, let's have another word of them, because we haven't had a, a player invaders, but... We have, uh, we did fight that technically, technical invader yesterday, Don't didn't we? be a fool. Turn back. Pick his hat. Before it's too late. No, he says exactly the same thing. Turn back and do what, buddy? What's, what's he want us to turn back and do? I mean, come on, bro. Do be serious. Oh, that's just shiny there. Oh my god. Oh, they got the shiny for me. All oh, right, cool, cool, cool. Get out of here. Oh, unsheath. <laughs> thank you, thank you, crabs. Stomping around. Oh, cool. And a new grace I've not found yet. I don't think. Oh, no, I had found this one. Was that the one I just came from? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um... It was, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. And finding new items. Backtracking. Um, let's have a look at it. Uh, usable on any katana. Grants affinity as a skill to armor. Unsheath. Keen. Because uh, the uh, keen affinity. Uh, I should probably look up the affinities. What the difference between them all lasts before I make, I can make an informed decision. Unsheath. Skill of swordsman from the land of reeds. Sheath blade, holding it at the hip in a composed stance. Follow up with a normal or strong attack to form a swift slash attack. Excellent. I don't think we even have any kind of uh, katana at the moment, actually. That doesn't matter. We've got a new item. That's cool. Right, okay. So we want to head up this, all the way up this road north for a bit and then start turning east. Just a bloody lantern. I was like, hang on, is that shiny gold? We're in fragment. Yeah. Damn, they got um a setup around here. Yeah. Ah, look, here's the other one. I should probably mark this one. Now, do you have to just kill all of the uh, the enemies with the uh, in camp with the uh, train? Waypoint ruins. We've we got some more ruins here. I didn't know about. I thought I'd been over this area, but I guess I hadn't. Too much. Indeed. Okay, there's some more ruins for us to check there. Okay, when we headed. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! It's good, yeah, buddy. Okay, let's head this way. Oh, hello. We got a little ghost here. Oh, it's ghost to. Oh, no, I thought it was block then for a minute. Oh, sapling, sweet sapling of glorious gold. Has your crystal tear drop ripened? Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out, won't we? At some point. <laughs> oh, you literally can just ride up to the back of it, grab the item, and just get out of there. Um, I assume because it's a chest, you have to open it. You can't just uh, grab it on the horse, right?
Lovely crappy items for me. Very nice. That's good. Yeah, dude. Okay, I guess I do need to uh, dismount, right? anything to do with it. Oh, we've got a bunch of giants up, have we? Okay. Oh! Be careful here. Do you have to kill them both? Or is it just enough to stop it? Aha. Oh, a great axe. Well, la di da. I mean. Okay, that's unfortunate. Okay, give a thousand runes, that's kind of cool. Right, so I assume that this is like done now. And, uh, cop and that this, I've got the treasure that will just like sit here now, not doing anything. I feel like I should, um, make sure we hit, grab the other one we just went by. Let's worry about it in a moment. Um,. What? <laughs> Does it? <laughs> um, yo, Ben! How you doing there, Ben? Are you well? What's going on, buddy? Uh, let me have a little look at this uh, great axe. That one, wasn't it? 30 strength needed. Great axe akin to a huge lump of iron. <laughs> Recognised as the weapon of choice of Badland chieftains. Too heavy to be wielded by those of merely ordinary strength. Uh, blows from this axe will flatten enemies. And the f oh, and what an asshole! Oh, my horse got geared. That's unfortunate. What ass? Is, uh, could they not see I was reading there? Chain draped tabard. That's not. Well, that's not very good. Oh my god! Watch freaking shield up. <laughs> there you go. Um, assholes. Um, yeah, oh, it's, uh, it's elemental resistance, so better than the, uh, chain armor. Uh, otherwise it's fairly, uh, it's fairly com comparable. 
anyway, before I was rudely interrupted, I was getting excited over my great axe I might never be able to use. Um, and the force of its charged attack is a sight to behold. I can't even imagine. Let's cook it for a minute, even though I can't. My chunky axe, mate. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, not getting the stats for it, so it's kind of pointless, isn't it? You're right, are you, Ben? I'm pleased to hear that. Um... Uh, right, okay, we want to be heading basically directly east. We don't have to go round. That's fine. Let's go. guys even get up here they can okay oh kind of feel bad for them well also not So, uh, Ben, have you got the uh, the new Pokemon game? Um, I can't remember if you're uh, you're into Pokemon. Yeah, no, yeah, you weren't you playing it with uh, Tubes and Ravian? I think Cage was telling us earlier. Uh, how how's it going? Yeah, this is. Uh, I didn't understand earlier until Cage told me about it. He was like, "Yeah, no, it's an actual multiplayer. You can actually play it with up to three friends, and you like working together like co-op Pokemon." I was like, "Damn, it's it suddenly sounds much better than I thought it did." <laughs> I was like, "Ah, oh, it's always an, oh, an, another year, another Pokemon game." You know, not not to <laughs> not to judge. That's perfectly fine. I'll take it. I'll take another Dark Souls every year. That I won't be upset about that. I wonder if they make a sequel of this game. Scary bear over there. I understand that uh, Elden Ring's been like wildly popular. So if they made an Elden Ring two, I'm sure it would uh, it would do well, wouldn't it, in terms of sales? So. Although what it would be, I don't know. Sometimes it's awkward to pick things up when you're on the horse. Right, Limgrave East. We've got a Chonkel tree. Is that another Everjail there? Stuff down here. Right, yeah, this is the Badlands up here, guys. Um, but I didn't, uh, I got there, I got into the, uh, the little, uh, grace there, but that's as far as I got. Uh, ooh, finger reader crone down the road there. Um, obviously that's where we got kidnapped to the start of the game. Um, so we found uh, the rest of Limgrave, which is cool. Um... I feel honestly i should uh probably before we even head actually back north trying to do that or should we not just finish because we've done the peninsula right we've explored there we've still got bosses to fight there but one, one thing at a time um um oh actually i can remove that can't i don't need that there um i should probably finish exploring this area before we head back up there Honestly, uh, but before we do that, let's um, let's get this other map over here in the, in the Badlands, the Rotted Land. Yeah, we've got a little ruin there, big old tree. 
some kind of tower, maybe another jail, I don't know. Little uh, structure down there. Bunch of stuff down here. And I've got ruins up there, waypoint ruins. We need to check those. Um, what else? I'm not sure if I've been up there. Right, and this is the Summon Water Village. This is what, I met D on the road just over here. And he was like, yeah, don't go in there. They've got a bloody mariner. And I was like, what's your problem with mariners? It turns out mariners are undead. Uh, I need to fight it. Um, and, oh, okay, we've got a telescope and a finger reader crone over in this direction. Okay, I'm going to um, tell you over here for a minute. Let's see if we get through this area. Um... Sci-fi uh, uh, Space Souls game. They have technically AF. Um, what's it called? Uh, the Surge. It's very uh, mech mechanical like. It was made by the same guys who made Lords of the Fallen, which is like a knockoff Dark Souls game, which is actually pretty good. Recommend it. I feel it's if uh, Lords of the Fallen plays um a little bit easier than the souls games i feel it takes a bit of an adjustment but it's a very similar idea they clearly ripped off the idea which is fine um and uh the surge which i believe there is a sequel is sci-fi souls made by the same people as the followers of the fallen um it's pretty good there's no real like lasers or any crazy stuff like that um, and it is like still melee combat use like pole arms and claws, but it is sci-fi setting essentially um, It's pretty good. I got close to the end of the first game But kind of uh, somewhat lost interest What is that? But um, And I haven't played the uh, sequel. Okay, we're going to Go for a little ride through the the rotted land Oh. What have we got here? Is that a gold one? Is that a gold bug? This freaky giant rat things are, but... Oh my god. And there, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, balls. Okay, we'll try that again, yo. I do not like these freakish dog, th giant dog things coming after me. Oh, they're fighting amongst themselves. Nice. Holy hell. Okay. Yo, parrot! How you doing there, parrot? Yeah, well, we got the great rune. It's not really up and running because we're not using uh, we not used any of the arcs on it. Um, yeah, I mean, even worse than my ex girlfriend's, honestly, Wolf. I um, if I'm being perfectly honest, no, I'm joking. They were fine. They were just mentally ill. I wonder if that's something to do with me. I don't know. That's the attraction. I don't know. That's what I just attract mentally ill women. I don't <laughs> Which we're all mentally ill. I'm not judging. I'm just. I'm just saying. You know. Some people are more sane than others. Uh, <laughs> I'm better off being single. Anyway, how you doing, Parrot? Are you well, sir? We've had a. We've had a little bit of um. A little bit of progress. Nothing too crazy. Uh, since last uh, we saw you. Um. Oh. Well, I hope you're doing well, buddy. I don't want to lose these. This would be a travesty. I do want to try and kill that bug, though. Without the, f the freaky giant rat dog things getting up in my grill. I don't feel like I'm ready to deal with them. But the gold ones, do, you know, the, same the, the, the white ones do give a, uh, a cool item, right? That's a problem. 
because it as you saw the bloody thing runs away and then it disappears but i guess i want to if i can maybe corral it this way Ugh, look at them what even are you There you go, a spell. Nice. Whirl o flame. Oh my god, a whirl o flame. That sounds cool. Let's run away for a second. Okay, I didn't disturb them. Nice. Let's have a look at this whirl o flame. Whirl o flame. Um, sweeps area before cast with stream of fire. Oh, and you only need thirteen faith. That's cool. Superior incantation of the fire monks. Creates a spiraling stream of fire that burns the area before the cast off. Uh, charging uh, enhances potency and reach. Mm. Uh, fire beguiles those who gaze into it. And so the guardians of the flame are also its worshippers. Indeed. Indeed. Um, no, yeah, lost the fear. Well, I've lost the fear of anything. If as long as we got torrent, you can just ride away from things. Uh, we're not actually going into this area. We just, um, I just made, I decided I want to, I want to uncover the map a bit. Um, we are kind of, so just give you, you a rundown. We've done the peninsula, and by done, I say we've explored. There's still bosses and weird stuff to do things with. Uh,. <laughs> We'll worry about that later. Um, then we... Um, uh, yeah, we killed uh, Godric the other day. Which was fun and not too bad. We've done a couple of Ever Jails. I think, in fact, there's only one that we haven't done, which is the Crucible Knight, but not around. And then we got up into this uh, this area in the north. I haven't explored any of it. Uh, we have done this cave over here. We've done that. We've done that Ever Jail there. Um... Uh, and there's all sorts of ruins and stuff. I guess this is the academy where we need to be heading. Um, but we need to get exploring into this. But I was like, yeah, I want to I wanna uncover the map as best as I can. So we started heading over here. And I, and as we've done that, I've noticed actually the, the whole of East uh, Limgrave. We've not even looked at any of this. So really, I'm inclined to kind of at least explore this before we head up north. But... Right at this very second power, I want to get to that there, and I want to maybe have a chat with the finger reader crone there. So that's where we're at. So I don't want to... I am scared of this red skied place. For now, but needs must and all that. Uh, so we're just going to head over this way for now. But yeah, good old Torrent. He's, uh, he's, he's very liable. He's, 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 a, good, he's a good boy. These things are ho horrifying. Um, we head down to maybe the crone first. Oh, we got some grace. Excellent. Uh, more importantly than any of uh, what we're doing, parrot. How are you, sir? Are you well? Okay, this... Oh. Kalem Ruins. Might as well activate that. That's the whole thing. Let's not get into it right now. We'll come back to it. Well, I think I need to head through to get to so where the road goes. Alright. Undead on fire. Lovely. Oh my god. Urban. Cool, here's the uh the telescope, isn't it? I mean it all looks like hell, honestly. Let's be honest, this just looks like hell. Okay, we've got a, a tree and a bit of a structure over that way. I see the big tree there. Okay, a little bit of a... Uh, structure. 
structure there. Giant tower there. Something in there in the distance. Another tree over there. Another structure over there. That looks worrying. Um, okay. Not much we need to worry about at the moment because we're not really uh, spending a bit early for this area, I feel. I feel this might be the area to go to after we've dealt with the academy, but who knows. You. Please. I can read them. Your fingers. Please, your fingers. I want to give you. I want to give you a, a couple of fingers, lady. I suppose there's nobody here watching. I don't. I don't mind. Oh, oh, bless you. Oh, oh. She likes my fingers. Are you one for festivals or flowers? Oh, um, I've got to lots of flowers. A grand festival ah. to make the this is the war festival that the uh, pot the knight I'm at. The hardened bud of a flower to be. All right, festival to the south. But flower to the east. No, well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to eventually, aren't I? The heart of the scarlet rot. Um. Oh. I guess maybe she was into the fingers. You, please, your okay. We've already done it. Okay, so, um. Alright. In interesting. Um. There's going to be another map down here, I'll bet. Um. As we're on this road. I think maybe I'll just head south for now. So yeah, some kind of like weird, um, according to the pot guy we, I met, which unfortunately was off stream, um, he was heading over here. There's some kind of like battle festival, some kind of like fight tournament or something. He was like super hyped about it. He was like, yeah, mortal combat. And I was like, oh, I'm just trying to survive over here. And he's like, well, well maybe I'll see you there. Maybe you're just shit. Uh. <laughs> oh. oh, no. There we are. Ash of War, Lifesteal Fist. A fist of life stealing. Grants uh, finishing skills to an armament. Yes. Life steal fist. Occult. Interesting. Uh, the occult affinity. I need to look up the affinities and find out what they do. I don't know if that. I don't feel that's cheating necessarily. Um. Skill that demonstrates mastery of the art of controlling vital energies. A slow, controlled punch with an energy-infused fist that renders foes unconscious and steals their hit points. Only effective against foes of human build. Usable on claws and fists and claws. Okay. Sounds pretty cool. So you knock them unconscious and you steal some hit points. Which means if they're laying on the floor, surely you can just murder them. But you can only put it on fist and claw weapons. But and and also only works on humanoids. Okay. I assume it doesn't mean big chunky night boys in giant armor either. Okay, yeah. Keep following this road. It's curving around to the uh, east, and we'll uh, get to another uh, map. Uh, this place is. Not the freaking plains of oblivion or something. Not far off. Oh, here you go. And this is skeleton fox. Trapped me in the dungeon, why didn't you? Kidnapped me. Yeah, I'll come back for you later. Don't worry about it. I don't have time right now. Well, I will come back for you. Don't you worry about that. Oh, 
schism. Um, yeah, I mean, look, if there's anything you're scared of, cop, then I'm, I'm doubly scared, honestly. <laughs> Exoics. I guess that's his name, and he's kind of decaying, but also... Oh, is he still coming after us? I don't want to fight you right now, friend. Okay. Chonk Dragon. Okay, we've got the, the map here. He was, like, around there, wasn't he? Okay put uh, that there to remember he's there or uh, highly unlikely I'll forget oh shiz look at all this what the hell okay that looks awful um okay so I assume this is the town where the tournament is taking place uh, our uh, our pot homie is going to this just looks like wasteland um so i wonder if it's quickest to go around this way to get that fi presumably final map of this section of the uh, the map here oh dear that was scary um urchins uh we will definitely go and say hello and make friends with that guy uh and when i say friends attempt to Kill it and probably die many times as we're doing. Uh, not quite at this moment. No. See, it definitely had a cool look to it, didn't it? I didn't realise. I thought it was just rotted crap uh, that's lying around, calcified whatever that's part of this world. But all that stuff there. But no, it was a dragon. Uh. <laughs> okay, so I think, yeah, if I head around this way. If I can. I don't know if I can get this way, but... So, just a guess. I mean, you can go down there. But I don't... Oh, jeez. Look at that, bro. Oh, is he tagging us from all the way... Talk about aggressive. Um, okay. Unless there's a, a little whirlwind. Uh, whirlwind. A uh, little thing to jump down. I'm guessing we cannot... Oh, oh my god. We cannot go this way. Okay, now... Someone doesn't. Oh, jeez! Look at the size of that pot. Is that a? That's a dude. Oh my god! Jesus wept. I'll take those though. Yoink! Something got killed. <laughs> uh, I might have to go around from the other direction. It seems like. Ooh. I'm to trigger this guy. That's where we're passing through. I want to die on the way. Oh my god. Right, okay. I'm not seeing a simple way of uh, getting down here. Oh. Oh, wait, hang on. Unless it's just simply dropping down. Not Maybe not there, but a bit further along. I'll be 
careful of that dude shooting gigantic magic missiles at us. Okay, so we'll go around that way. Yeah, that should link up over there. Stay away from that bro. He stood about there, isn't he? No, so he's guarding whatever's up there. That should be fine. Um. Uh. You thought you saw a, a merchant there, uh. Yeah, that one. There's the finger reader crone. I know I saw a. Well, that one. I don't know if I noticed the merchant anywhere. Maybe there was scope. I don't know. So I've, I've got runes I need to use for sure. Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, here's this this weird, freaky wall I came across. And it's like, don't go this way. And I was like, hmm. Kinda need to, though. Kinda need to. Oh my god. Put that rot on me. Ugh. Thank you, dogs. Uh, drawstring lightning grease. I don't think we've even got any regular lightning grease yet, but that's cool. Um... Oh, that's okay. No way. So the cr uh, the crossroad, though. Well, that down over here. I don't know. As a matter, I'm sure we'll we'll stumble across them anyway, at some point. Uh, right. So we want to try and follow this. Get down here, and head this direction. I'm just going through the map. Trying to avoid all the death on the way. Okay, I've got a big boy here. Putrid Avatar. No oh, thanks. Maybe later. Oh, did I? Am I going the wrong way? Oh, is it, does it not connect up? Oh, damn. I don't think it does, does it? Well, there you go. Okay. Um. Nothing we can uh, do about that then. Okay. So, so I, uh, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to send us over here. No, it, it's definitely not, Colt. I'm, as soon as we get, <laughs> so we'll get that last map, which I hope is the last one. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I know we'll have to deal with this place eventually, but I like to build up to things, you know. I don't. Um. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely feels that red mage. Like I don't want to be here right now. Okay, this is in the. Uh little cave that's outside then i guess well technically i guess we could dive into that mine and try and clear that out now okay so let's see if i can just get on a torrent and go around from here maybe i can't looking at everything and expecting to what is that? Uh, looking at everything, expected it to just uh, turn into a giant uh, or a, a dragon or something. Ah. 
Okay, we made to uh, Celia, the Tower of Sorcery. Unrelated to uh, Rhea Lucaria, I assume. But who uh, who can tell? I don't want to be going up into your big scary tower right now. I uh, just want to be heading north. Don't know if oh if it's gonna be an option, but I will take that. Boom, golden seed. Ow. Okay, I um I don't think it's going to be this way. So unless it's... Uh, and go around the other way, which it doesn't look like I necessarily can. Then we can head down to... I don't know. It could be that I have to abandon this and come back to it later. Oh, we've got some golden footprints down around here. I saw this on a different beach. Uh, footprints, but a little marker. Something. Oh, God. I feel like we're trapped in hell walking around this place. That's one of those bugs, but that's one of the... Uh, strange that it's large. I should try and kill it, but it's the colour of it is the one that replenishes your, uh... Let's give it a go. Oh, okay. I assumed he was going to try and fight us because he was big. Okay. I guess we want to kill him. I'm just going to need uh, a bit more, uh, firepower, maybe. More about him for now. Okay, let's see if we can get through this way. Um, my god, yeah, you can say that. Yeah, I, I need as many uh, golden nuts as I can get, I feel, cop. What, 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 what? Oh, okay, yeah, just don't fall off. Excellent. Okay, cool. Yeah, I assume. I, sh I kind of assumed that it would be the same as uh, the poison. I've got some suicide in little things here. Are they giving me their souls? Oh. Oh, wait. Wait a minute. That's somewhat disturbing. we have got to run and get the item. Smith and Stones. Okay. Seems to be a dead end though, doesn't it? So yeah, the little clusters explode when you go near, and the uh, the snakes just kind of feel like, eh. We're, we're not aggressive. We're, we're friendly. Yeah, that's giving me free runes while doing that. Yeah, so that's like the the big rock puddle there. Um, so that's kind of locked off. Um, although that seems to be a road heading in this direction. In fact, if we get to the other side of the town, or even just directly, uh, roughly east, I'm about to just take this road up this way. Maybe. Or even if not, just cut across here. That road goes somewhere, doesn't it? 
Okay, let's try that. Swamp of Aonia. Oh my god. Swamp of Extreme Foulness. Oh. I mean... As we're passing through. Let's reset. Excuse me. Yeah, if there's a load of those red mage, you can just like ride through and uh just oh what's this? Read a message. Stop by the shack beyond the southern gate. Alright, I mean is that a friendly message? Nobody knows. We are heading in the direction of the southern gate. So maybe we'll stop in the shack. Poison grease. Alright, yeah. These uh guys are unpleasant and are gonna be a pain. Thankfully I'm not dealing with them right now. Okay. Okay. We made it out of that awful place for a moment. Get a breath. Okay, I've kind of uh I need to be up there, I think. <laughs> Oh my god, we're in hell right now. Oh, I need to get that guy there. There we go. Got it. Sacred Ring of Light. Okay, I'll look at that in a moment. Is there any way out of the swamp? I don't know if there is. I think we might be uh, stuck down here. You Okay. After all this, I think this is going to be easier if I... Uh, I'm just going to fast travel over here and then just follow the road. I just got freaked out with the dragon, didn't I? Um, yeah, I'll be fine taking them one at a time, cop. Just uh, dodge their magic and jump on top of them, smash them with you a large weapon. Um, but I'm not even supposed to be here right now, I feel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, so sneaky, that dragon. Stay asleep, bro. But I've got no... Uh, Oh, no problems with you. you. Just chill there for a moment, buddy. Come on. Not been harassed at the minute. I think I'm alright. Um, cool. Let's have a look at this. I've not even used any of these Ashes of War yet. And I know there's a way to duplicate them. I just haven't. Um, Sacred Ring of Light. Usable on pole arms. Um, sacred affinity. Uh, used by the commanders of the Clean Rot Knights. Uh, Clean Rot Knights. So it seems, uh, a bit of an oxymoron there. Uh, gather a sacred ring of light in the armament, then fire it forwards. Can be fired in rapid succession. Okay, any pole arm. Not a great spear, so. Okay, that sounds interesting. Yeah, there you go. Ah, there was. Yeah, there you go. A little merchant in the distance. You are not wrong, cop. Buying or selling. Um, to the point. I don't know that I've got anything to sell, buddy. I think we're, we're tidy on all... Uh, I think we've got any duplicates or anything, have we? In fact, I'm... Uh, no, we haven't. Um... We're just buying them, bro. What you got? 
Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, it's got a new cookbook. The fact that we... Some of the nomadic cookbooks, we've got like 1, 2, 3, 9, 12, and now 15. I think we're... <laughs> I think we're missing a few, aren't we? Uh, another stone sword key. Excellent. Definitely want that. They can't have too many of those. Um, all right. Some ammo. Champion's headband. I think this is the, the armor type that uh, Nefali was wearing, I believe. Um... Yeah, fair enough, Cole. Excellent. So you didn't do this, I think. A great helm. Sturdy great helm made from iron. Hmm. No, it is uncomfortably heavy and obstructs the vision of the wearer. It provides considerable damage negation. No doubt. Uh, headband reserved for the Badlands Bravest. Proof that the wearer slaughtered countless foes. Following the example of their chieftain, Horalu. Uh, oh, is that... Relation to Nefali. Uh the brave warriors of the Badlands shun excess adornment. Uh Champion's Pauldron. That's body armor, isn't it? Yeah. Badlands Bravest. Yeah, same armor. And also presumably the braces she's wearing as well. And also the feet. Just foot basic foot wraps, aren't they? We've also got a uh, gravity's advantage knowledge. Um, we've got the cook, the cookbook, and I guess I'll buy the knowledge as well. Yeah, I know that you need to pick these up, but gravitational power that pulls can bring flying foes low. Okay, that sounds cool. I don't think I have any of that gravitational power yet. But good, good to know. Uh, rot bone arrow. Uh, fletched or otherwise, and rot bone bolt. Interesting. Uh, where's the rock? There we go. Uh, Aeonian butterfly found in the swamp fairy. Okay, I guess that's. Uh, I've got to go gathering um, butterflies. Uh, yeah. Okay. If I want to make those. Never mind. Okay, cool, cool. Excellent. Another merchant we need to come back to later. You. I see you up there, giant boy. Are you are you planning on jumping down on me? I wonder if it, this is the place of the uh the 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 boss of this area is Radan. Is his name? He definitely clocked us and wants to throw things at us, I don't doubt. God, even the giants uh, use magic. Stop by the shack. Oh, is he pointing up? Okay, just ahead here. I thought that was Grace then. So it's the same message from the same guy, just in two different spots. Oh my god. Okay, that guy there, but I mean...
too many enemies. <laughs> I just want to look at my map. <laughs> right, okay. So I reckon you must have to, to get up there. Yeah, because that's like a, a little ledge, isn't it? Um, let's go to head into that crap down here. I don't know I could. I might just leave that one for now, guys. I don't even know if we can get up there. Um, um, ah, interesting. Okay, so we just have to go talk to him. So, yeah, I'm not seeing immediately how to get up to here. So, you can't get down here. This is all, this is too far to drop down here. Um, unless you have to, you, know, you get there. Yeah, that's too high up there. Unless you get through to that place, through, uh, getting through the, t the sorcery town. Oh, yeah, and this is a cliff here. All the way down to there. So unless you can like ride around here. Which I don't even know what this is. I mean just open plains, just random rock. Um this might have to wait. Um or unless you can get into the gate there, get up the top, and it leads to uh this plateau. Either way, I'm not gonna I'm at the point of not worrying about that map. Um I will uh, try and get back to that bro in his shack, though. He's, you know, he's clearly left a message to, like, you know, hey, come say hello to us sometime. Doesn't mean he's friendly, does it? But Gowry. Oh, there, bro. Pleasure to see you. A pleasure indeed. We do not here, mate. I am Gary, a great sage. In my day, anyway. Okay. I'd hoped to ask a favor when one of your ilk came along. Okay. A strapping young tarnished, able to cross the scarlet swamp of Aeonia. I don't know if I've got that far yet. I'll provide fine recompense. Okay, what are you proposing? Should you accept, I will teach you the secret of Celia. The town you see there. Okay, well, we don't need it right now, but... Ah, then you are willing to lend a hand, are you? We shall see. I need your help to heal a certain young girl. Okay. Her name is Millicent. You will find her beyond Celia. Okay. Resting at the church atop the cliff. Stricken by the rotting sickness. Okay. Well, that seems reasonable to help with that. The sickness that afflicts Millicent has no cure. Except... When the earth tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. Damn. But Millicent's suffering can be ameliorated. Ameliorated? For this, oh, you are to find a certain needle. Seek the deep scarlet swamp of Aeonia outside Celia's bounds. The needle, made from unalloyed gold, is lost somewhere there. A golden needle in a swamp. <laughs> okay. First, you must find the unalloyed gold needle. Okay. It's hidden somewhere in the deep scarlet. Then I will tell the secret. Okay. So, this bro, Gowry, his friend Millicent, apparently up here somewhere on the cliff, somewhere, in a church, has the rotting sickness. He believes that somewhere in this mess, I assume he means in this mess here in the swamp, there's a golden needle. And if I bring that to him, he will give me uh, advice or cl a clue how to deal with this area. We're not even supposed to be here. Not even supposed to be here, right? Um, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna quickly um, I'm gonna ride back south. Uh, and head down this way, just because I feel there might be a grace either on the other side of this town or uh, around here somewhere, just to pick it up for later. So that's what I want to do right this second. 
But yeah, that sounds reasonable to me, bro. I need all the help I can get. Uh, and if it's going to help somebody, if it's going to help your friend out, we can we can do that. Um, yeah, so it looks like you might be able to walk across the top of this. It looks like there's no way in here from down here. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait, this is the uh, awful skellies, aren't they? Yeah, they're the super stamper skellies, but... Okay. So, it looks like you came from up there. My God. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, this, this place is hell hate it. A foul place. What the f freakish burb there. The freakish is this toxic mushroom. Okay. Oh! No. Let's go. Let's get away from that thing. I was just trying to sit. Ew, it's coming right after us. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> what do we have here? It's another golden seed. It is. We've got a golden death going on in a second. Oh my god. Wow. Visualize the horror. Yeah, I don't blame you, cause this place is a horrifying. Horrible place. Can't even outrun those things on uh on Port Torrent. Uh <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Uh, I like we just that's just where we are and what we're doing not tag me there okay interesting to put us there now there's only okay it's put us further on there's only like 800 runes there I'm just gonna keep heading uh this way I think or is that a person there uh, it's, yeah I mean yeah it's, it's people that want to murder us that's who's there. Oh, are they fighting amongst themselves? That's good. Oh, look at that. These soldiers, they're kind of making a bit of a statement there. But they still don't like me. Yeah, it's, too, it's almost too much. I was starting to feel like I was not overwhelmed with the game, but the more I, the more I play, the more overwhelmed I get. What's this? Cannot be used now. Okay. Now, I guess this is where the the, uh, the festival is taking place, right? I wonder if there's another grace further in. Let me just uh, poke my head. I'm not planning to really go this way, but... out of uh, morbid curiosity. Okay. Fuck. Oh, okay, I just lost 800 runes there. That's annoying. Um, slightly annoying. It is what it is. Um, oh my god, this rotted land. It's quite. It's really rather hellish. Um, 
I think they've done an excellent job with it aesthetically. And all the creatures like are all deformed and they got all, like big heads and like li little arms and Yeah, Kaled, I hate you. Absolutely hate you, Kaled. Right. <laughs> okay, let's uh let's uh, we've got uh, just about an hour left of stream. Let's go somewhere less foul. Um <laughs> Let's just do that. Okay. <laughs> um so let's yeah let's get check over east the east uh part of limgrave which we've not explored at all kind of uh got put on the back burner for a bit okay so i'm gonna get back here and i'll just head up and check this little ruin here this little waypoint ruins it's gonna be far more friendly than this bs we're dealing with over here <laughs> uh, who knows might find a couple of random items that may may or may not be of use Right, yeah, we've got just about an hour to go. I'm glad, um, I like the fact that we've uncovered a chunk of the map there now, though. I'm pretty happy with that. Is this like the whole of the world map now? We've basically uncovered. Sorry, when it loads up. Obviously, there's a chunk of this island. And there's, uh, stuff still up here. And obviously, I've been there by accident. But actually, there could be a bunch of this. I mean, this island could like me. You know, we might have uncovered like two thirds. It could be like a whole third up here still to go. My God. Anyway. Right here we go. Head north. Oh, I still need... Just use my bloody seeds, don't I? I swear to God. Sorry about this, guys. We go seed it up. That's going to give us... We've got two, haven't we? That's going to give us two extra sweets on our flask. That's going to be up from... Up from uh, from uh, six up to eight. Which is pretty amazing. For now, until I start using... Making more use of magic and specials... Gem, for general exploration, I'd rather... Forgo... Uh, FP replenishment and uh, just have extra heals personally. Um, there may come a time where I feel that's not what we want to do, particularly for boss fights and stuff. But for now, I will just stick with that. There we go. Oh, I used both of the golden seeds, did I? Okay. Sorry, beg, beg, what, what, cop, sorry, what, that's, thir this is 30% of the map. This is not, this is not 66% of the map we're looking at. This is 30%. Oh my god, this game. <laughs> and yeah, the map is very not, uh, you, it's hard to not like the aesthetic style of the map, I feel. For sure. What the hell? What the actual hell? Um, okay, it was actually seven, not eight. My, uh. I thought we had six for some reason. I don't know. And we're also on a plus four. We need to level up and get more vigor. Honestly, but... Got to get the items. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. I'm sure people have completed this game as level one. Without getting hit. Using, using no items. I'm sure they have. Yeah, I can't even f fully wrap my head around how, how uh, much more of it there is. So I assume that we've done that one now. It respawns because all the enemies respawn, but... Here's the ruins. Which there may or may not be anything here. But it is a marked location. So let us, uh... Let's explore. Oh, scary flower. 
Ah, it's already tagged us. Okay. Okay, I suppose we can get any uh, poison effect there, honestly. I don't want to be uh, necessarily blocking these, I don't think. I'm probably better off. Uh... Oh, let's try not to get poisoned, eh? Spraying out like that, though. Kind of, uh, kind of tricky to. Uh... Oh my god. I'm going to use your magic instead, buddy. If they like fire. I bet they don't like fire, do they? Being uh, foliage. Okay, cool. Miranda powder. Is that just uh, what these uh, these uh, flowers drop? Immun immunizing cured meat. Okay. It's a golden ring. Okay. Uh, te ah, temper meat, yeah. Cured strip of meat dried out after pickling the green medicinal solution. Temporarily boosts your poison immunity. Cool. Um, and uh, the Miranda powder. It's going to be a crafting material, I assume. So many crafting materials. Um, there it is, isn't it? Pollen from a man eating Miranda flower. Um, threat history. Perfumers have prized this extremely fragrant form of Miranda pollen. Not yet scattered into the air. Okay. Cool. At least I know uh, I can handle those flowers now. Uh, setting it on fire. It definitely it seemed to have like a little bit of a dot on it. Like it was taking tiny amounts of damage. And it also seemed to be not happy that it was on fire. So maybe a, a good way to deal with them is to um, set them on fire and then just rush in with your sword. And chop them up a bit. You up there? Okay, it's just ruined fragments. Paste to check. Ah, I see some stairs going down. And ah, possibly stuff over there, small little flowers there. Cool. Yeah, cop. I can, I can see why you got uh, drawn into this game so much. Do you know how many hours you put into it? I know you said you've not co quite completed it yet. You've only got, you've got a couple of bosses still to go. Um, <laughs> just burn it, burn it with fire. Aff, yeah, I mean, it depends what it is, isn't it? But murderous, poisonous flower things that want to kill you and poison you. Yeah, I feel, I feel like fire's probably not a terrible way to go, is it? around this corner. Cool. We've got someone in pool there. Where were they? I definitely saw them from up there. Switch to the target at the last second. Didn't help. Oh, one slice. There we go. A glowstone? Oh my god! Not a glowstone? 
Who to funk it? Hundred thirty hours. That's uh, that's a lot of that's a fun that <laughs> a lot of time. Um, right. Okay. I'm, I mean, I'm liking the, what we've got so far. I, like, I do like this sword, but um, yeah, I don't. My problem is commitment. Ask anyone. Every, yeah. <laughs> uh, ask a. Uh, ask it. Uh, uh, literally anyone who knows me. But <laughs> I, I mean, commit. I commit. Commit to streaming. Just not uh, a weapon. But. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, here we go. It looks like we are going down this way. Ooh, we got a little boss fight. A little boss fight. Right, I guess... <sighs> Just going fully prepared. I've got a bunch of heals. We're not going to be able to summon our wolf, so are we? That's, um... That's the problem. Just go for it. Mad pumpkin head. Well, you look scary, sir. Okay. Big swings. Big swings. Multi swing. What else you got? I wonder if I could target his legs. No. He's um, not got too many hit points, has he? And in fact, I just took that on the chin there. Okay, I think it might be a... This guy's technically a lower level enemy here. You see, he's uh, quite relentless with his attack. Uh, clumsy. Okay, um, that's all right. That's not bad. Mini boss there, first to first uh, attempt. He uh, obviously was. Um... Oh, I think well, he's kind of intended that I should have maybe fought him earlier on, but I don't mind taking an easy one. Take a break for a second, jeez, Louise. Um. Uh, uh, to to committing to a particular weapon, uh, I guess, or uh, or relationships, but <laughs> no, maybe maybe in some ways, cop. I I don't. I can commit. I just I'm I'm um I've got to pick and choose what I commit to. I guess that's the issue. Okay, All right. So we're heading further underground. Maybe there's such a little treasure waiting for us. Oh, what the hell? Someone study or something. Okay. And so there doesn't seem to be anything here. When in doubt, wreck the place, I guess. <sighs> hey, some. It's kind of weird, though, to have a room with just nothing in it, I feel. Just, just just a show. Hey, look at the crystals and books. Can I take them? No. Just look. Can I destroy them? Yes. Does it do anything? No. <laughs> okay. Um... That was that. Just a, just a little mini boss. Maybe he's just angry because he was he wanted to get in there and he just couldn't get in there because he's too big. 
Okay. I mean, I guess that was the extent of that. Um, if we just check this little, what these little things are here. Could just be little gravestones, I don't know. Either way, that's her. This is something in the room, but it's very unusual to um, have the, the a treasure for a boss fight, m mini boss or otherwise, in the actual room with them. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's cool. I enjoyed it. anything up here. Oh, a good stone staff, eh? How does that... Oh, let me... Let me... Let me uh, go with that. Let's deal with the wolf first, yeah? Um, how does that compare to our demi-human queen staff? Um, seems to be not as good. So I guess the glintstone staff is the most basic of all staffs, and we just got lucky by getting the slightly better demi-human staff beforehand. Same weight. Uh, same stats required. Um, slightly better sorcery scaling. Does that mean the astrologer's staff is actually not good, even though it requires more intelligence because the scaling is a lot less? I wonder. Either way, that's just something for the collection. Yeah, the scaling number is the most important, right? It's just weird that something would be worse or uh, less numbers. What? No, I didn't just kill your friend. No, I would, I would never do that. See? <laughs> okay, oh, okay, cool. So you seem to get a lot of uh, rune items, golden runes, like in um in these little graveyard type sections. Cool. Which, you know, not much. I think the, the basic rank ones are only like 200 runes, but they, uh, they all add up. Right. Okay, where next? I guess we'll, um... Yeah, I looked around there, but, uh... Nomadic Merchant, uh, Village Outskirts, um... I guess I'll keep heading north to see if this is anything. Or well, that is anything. Um, let's see what we can get. And we, we need to get into the Summon Water Village. I know D told us not to go in there. He's like, bloody mariners! Stay away from those mariners. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the thing is, D, we know we uh, we got a job to do. I just been ambitious trying to go for that. I think I might be. Ah, maybe, maybe cop. I don't know. There's an NPC supposed to be in that room. 
Yeah, no, it is, it is sus, isn't it? There, there should be that room there, but there's definitely nothing in there. I checked all the all the walls for secrets. I smashed everything up in there. There was uh, not a thing, nary a thing in sight. Uh, maybe the goat can do it. Maybe the goat can do it. F, but uh, we've uh, we've moved on for now. I'm not too, I'm not too worried. You can't, I feel this like. With it, with the size of the game and the fact of how open world it is, I feel there's only uh, so I can't. It's inevitable you're gonna miss some things. Okay, that's just a little red bug. Don't worry about him. Everything on time. Okay, we've got uh, twenty-five minutes. Okay, yeah, so I want to try and stay up here. Oh, you, however, little friend. Oh. I was like, oh, it's it looks like it's about to explode. <laughs> that can't be a thing. <laughs> okay, cool. Another somber smith in stone. Nice. Ooh. Yeah, I've definitely not been up here. Ooh, hello. What is this? This looks very uh, intriguing. Artist Shack, eh? Uh, homing instinct painting new. Uh, key item. Uh, no. Spell. Uh, it was a piece of paper, wasn't it? Ah, the furled finger trick mirror is, um... He's a talisman. Oh, I did wonder. Um, oh, okay. Info. Examined using X. A work of a wandering artist. Reminiscence of a painting titled Homing Instinct. This painter is said to have captured the landscapes seen during the last moments of those welcomed into death's embrace. The soul of the painter and the vestiges of the dead's last moments can be discovered by visiting the location depicted even now. Ah, uh, so I have to try and find that spot, uh, which easier said than done. You got a big tree. And there's an archway. And some graves. Fuck my life. Okay. <laughs> so if we ever find that, we might find something good there, is what you're saying. Okay. That could, that could be anywhere in this game. It doesn't look... There's no red sky. So it's probably not like the scary land. But still. That could be anywhere. Okay, uh, new grace though, artist shack. Uh, so I want to try to head north, so I'm going to jump up there and then jump up here. And check out these. Okay, not a little graveyard down there, but... Probably head to north to this village first. I might even be finish us for today, I don't know. Assuming I can deal with it. I got a bear. I'm not picking a fight with you, buddy. Promise. Just just passing through.
Okay, so um, no getting up there. So maybe you get up here from down here. Um, I think maybe to get on here, we have to drop down from here. Or in fact, from there. Okay, let's try that. I'm generally, um, in, you know, in games in general, a fan of maps and exploring them, which I think definitely obviously lends itself uh, to this game, which uh, well, it might not be for everyone. Can I make that? That's not too far, does it? No, that should be fine. There we go. Cool. Another little gra grave site. Give me this golden rune. Is that a rank six golden rune? My god. Damn, it's only the second one of those we found. Very nice. Rank four. Uh, a Fevel, a Fevel's cookbook. Fevel? Who's this? Who are you, bro? Show me a cookbook. Yeah, Fevel's, I guess. A record of crafting techniques left by a man who was utterly captivated by Saint Trina. He continued to search for her in his slumber. <laughs> uh, to make sleep pots. Okay, cool. Thank you, buddy. Uh, your loss, our gain. Cool, rank four. Um, I guess that's everything here. Um, I guess we should uh, explore this stuff before we, we actually head into the awful world of awfulness. Um, can even check that little hole there, and then we've got all this stuff down here. Um. Right, half an hour. Um, yeah, right, cop. It's like here, find this place in this picture. It's like, what? What? I might find it accidentally, but I'm not going to find it by your clue, am I? <laughs> Let's be serious. Right, I'm going to travel up here, and we're going to poke our heads in this uh, village. I, it seems to be like this undead in there. And there's one of these mariners that D is warning us about. We seem to be an undead guy in a little boat, uh, which is kind of freaky. But, uh, and that, this was like after our first stream, I was just looking up there. Um, so I might just stay away from him. Uh, well, at the time, I was like, oh, I'm just going to stay away from him. But now, I don't know, it's time to maybe just wreck him. Just run in there. There he is. You see him. Now, I know you can target him. I don't know how deep this water is. So if I can just come up behind him and just rack him with my uh, sword I'll, I'd not be upset about that but let's um, start looking in the ruins a little bit okay there we go got un undeads here I don't think I can get behind these guys not easily ow <laughs> I took the hit to uh, get the one on that guy. <laughs> yeah, now I know that that's how you get rid of them. We all good. And they seem to be somewhat low level as well. Which uh, is obviously good. Okay. 
Yeah, I, th I think I crept by here. And I had to look around. I was like, oh no, skeletons. Scary. <laughs> um, um, pots, you mean the, uh, the, like, the grenade weapons? I, I never easily really use them in Dark Souls. I mean, consumables are, for me, are like an option if I feel that they will give me some kind of advantage. But if I feel I can manage without them and they're not really helping out, cop, I'll just kind of hoard them. And it's quite normal for me to get to the end of a Souls game with all these uh, consumables. I just I was like, ah, I didn't. Ah, I guess I didn't need those after all. Much like I would in any other RPG, honestly. But um, who knows? Who knows in this game? I might decide to, you know, start making grenades and throwing grenades around and. I guess the advantage is of the uh, consumables, of course, is um, uh, it's just crafting materials, isn't it? Doesn't require FP, you know. Obviously, you know, it takes up an item slot, but you could be throwing knives, throwing uh, grenades around, and all sorts of things. Uh, and all you're losing is your crafting materials. So, who knows? Maybe we'll come across a time or something where I feel that might be useful. For now, though, it's not like I want to go out of my way to be like, oh, I better start crafting this or crafting that. It's like it doesn't really seem necessary. Uh, this looks interesting, though. Let's worry about the turtles. We've got uh, a little uh, stone sword key here. Excellent. And before we go down there, uh, maybe I should... Maybe we should go down there and deal with the mariner on the way back. Yeah, let's just head down there. Could be something interesting. All right, turtles. I'm not inclined to beat up on these turtles. I guess I need to for some reason. Okay. Now, nah, let's see if this teleports me somewhere. Probably will. Oh, no. Okay. Ah, the green turtle talisman. Okay. Oh! Stamina recovery speed. I mean, yes. I think we'll be going for that. I mean, no, what? I mean, stamina recovery speed's pretty good. Um. Okay, which we obviously can't really test it out in unless we get in battle or something. Um, yeah, overall, better than uh, just having a little, like, 20% more damage on your jump attacks or counters. Just to have a decent amount of uh, stamina recovery. Let me just see what it says about it. Okay, let's... Uh, there we go. A talisman in the shape of green turtle raises stamina recovery speed. Turtles are known as a nutritious ingredient, symbolic of inexhaustible power. However, those who hold turtles to be wise creatures consider the practice of eating their meat to be barbarous. Well, either way, we'll, we'll, we shall use their talisman to uh, help us. Cool, just a little heal there. Yeah, yeah, cop. Yeah, I um, I, of um, in the in the Dark Souls games, that's definitely something I would always go for the stamina recovery. So you need just you know in the combat you need stamina to run, jump, attack, block, uh, dodge. Um, so you constantly, you know, even if it just gives you a half a second between being able to uh, attack or recover to be able to block an extra attack it's um well worth it that blob looks very suspicious i'm inclined to get after this mariner see if i can put him out of commission Let's see where he's going and drop down behind him if my little whack i don't have no idea what kind of attacks he's going to do but now He kind of looks... He looks scary. Well, he doesn't look scary. His boat kind of looks scary, but... Oh, 
oh, he saw us. Oh. Oh, okay. Boss fight we're in the middle of now. Okay, never mind. So much for the sneak attack. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Let's see what is what here. All right, he's bringing in his little buddies, is he? Uh, I kind of I fluffed that uh, sneak attack there, didn't I? Never mind. Whoa! Oh, whoa, whoa! Okay. Oh, I should probably uh, take this opportunity to uh, get a few of those out of commission. Okay, this is quite cool. Uh, I'm liking the idea of this fight. Oh, want to probably avoid that. Maybe I shouldn't be uh, focused on trying to get his uh, buddies out of commission. Just... Uh Slinging water around. All right, matey. Right, where you at, Mr. Mariner? All right, over here now. Okay. Tricky fight. Whoa. Understand why D told me to stay away from him. Oh, no. Okay. Never mind. Okay, I've got the gist of what's going on. This is for sure. Yeah, you know what, Cobb? I... Having, to, having put 130 hours into this, going back to any of the Dark Souls games for you will feel not um, anticlimactic. Uh, I don't know. It's um, It will feel like a dumbed down version. It's still the same thing. It's still the same combat. It's still the same vibe. Um, but imagine everything's just like one big, each area is just like different various sized castle storm veils. There's no open world at all. You're not, you're not, uh, you're not doing anything, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know. You definitely give it a go. If you're like into it, you just want to see it as like a puzzle or something to do or get into. But, um, it's, uh... It might be uh, it might be a bit tricky for you. Should I try and get my runes back first? Probably should. Maybe. Yeah, I know. What what we like? What we like, Root? Why am I harassing this guy? This guy's just a um, just a mariner, just trying to you know take his take his buddies to the afterlife. That's what he's trying to do. And here I come along, stomping about. Um, okay, let me get these lilies while I'm in. Okay. Well, at least I know what's going on now. It's 
to get one decent attack on him. Oh. Oh, for crying out loud. I think it mattered, did it? Okay, you can teleport around. That's great. cool that he uh, yeets his... Oh, he didn't do it that time. I was say, it's kind of cool he yeets his own buddies, but... Yeah, this is not a difficult fight. This is just a battle of attrition. You just have to be, um... Have to be careful. And you can even get some extra rooms while you're at it. Not, uh, not many, obviously, but... <laughs> okay, we've got the magic users we need to watch out for. And crossbowmen as well. Okay. I wonder if he's got more prepared this time. Is doing his AOE there. Yeah, he was. Uh, didn't seem to hurt his buddies though that time. Yeah, toss your water at me, buddy. There we go. Nice. This is a fun fight. It's a. Uh, it's tricky. Can it, it's clearly going to get out of hand at some point, maybe. But there we go. That's cool. It may be advantageous to try and deal with some of these in a second, but um, he's only got about a little under half hit points left. So if I can uh, just stay out of the way for a bit longer. There's plenty of space. That's something. Um, obviously, uh, that guy's a, a bit of a shizzle. Okay, that's a problem. Order spears. One heel left. There we go. Nice. 
Bat nice battle of attrition. Enjoyed that. Death root. The item. Uh, skeletal militiaman ashes. Oh, the treasures. Oh, the treasures we're getting. Um, right. Um, here we go. Summons two skeletal militia spirits. I guess spearmen. Um, these are the ashes of militiamen who live in death and will continue to rise again until properly finished off. Oh, wait. Hang on. Does that mean as a summon they do? So they're the crappily spearmen skeletons, but if you're in a boss fight, the, bo the boss may not go to finish them off and they just keep coming back. I wonder. To be fair, most bosses have such large, chunky attacks that maybe they would get squished anyway, but... This is the grotesque fate of those who come into contact with Deathroot. Interesting. This also gives rise to those who live in death. The beast clergyman are found at Bestial Sanctum in the distant east collects and devours these roots. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between to the underground roots of the great tree, sprouting the form of death roots. Okay, that's one. Okay, somebody far to the east will eat that. <laughs> somebody in this horrible place. Uh, <laughs> and then they'll uh, then they'll be like, you know, be happy with us? Um, uh, I don't know, but yeah. Cool. Okay, so those two skeletons, I bet they're real weak and shitty. But they could have... They've got great potential, uh, in essence. Interesting. I don't know whether to put points into them or not. Oh, hello. see cool i should go back to d and tell him about we killed the mariner and see if he's happy with us or upset because he told us not to Okay, I think that's might be it for the village. There seems to be too much here, honestly. Down. I've got about 10 minutes. Okay. I think that's everything for uh, the uh, Summon Water Village. Um... guess we'll uh, probably leave it there. That looks suspicious. Let me just head over that way. Okay, so we've got uh, a way to get uh, up and down just here. It's good to know.
Okay, we've got a giant there. Oh, okay. I think this might be uh, directly on where we're supposed to be going. It might be a bubbles. Whoa! Okay. Oh, okay. He's using his uh, stomp powers. Little shit. Yeah, I shouldn't. Uh Of course, we're out of uh, flask, aren't we? Of course we are. Oh, dear. I didn't rest after that fight. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, asshole. Okay. Uh, is he going to come all the way after us? He probably is, isn't he? Okay, now he's losing interest. Watch him yeet me from back there. we decided to come down this way <laughs> uh red mage take care buddy if you're still there i'm sorry to uh uh keep you waiting there um yeah no no i get what you're saying cop um yeah it must be that mirror. <laughs> maybe <right? laughs> yes. um jump out there a second Yeah, we need to wrap up, but I just want to check this little uh, gap real quick. It's kind of like on the border between Limgrave and uh, Kaelid. So it might not be nightmarish. Um, or it might be. Shack of the Rotting. Ah, uh, pres oh, oh, jeez, preserving boluses. Um, what do they do? I already got this. Uh, alleviate scarlet rot build up and cu and cures rot. Nice. Oh, little graveyard as well. Cool. We've got some uh, slime up in here. Oh, never mind. Some golden runes. I wish you could, uh, I guess because the game pauses, that's why they don't want you to be able to check your map. While the game is, uh, while you're fighting. this one. I can, uh... Oh, that I can't. There's a blood build on it. There we are, that. Ok, 
Okay. Weird. Um, I, get, if, I feel like it's off the edge of the cliff, right? Yeah, that's a giant below there. Hard to tell. Okay, I'm uh, literally stood where it would be. So I just assume it's down here. Aha. Okay, this is what we were looking for. Like I say, I don't know if we really want to go in here. Gale Tunnel. Um, if there is, uh, hopefully, a... Grace. Doesn't look like there will be. seen a way to even get down here so uh, like realistically so I just jump for that there I'll do some crazy jumping oh there's grace there I think that's the way, probably the way we've got to go right got a roll, roll for your life kind of thing okay I think this is it yeah okay Oof. Okay, cool. All good. Be all good. Excellent. Let's hit that. Summoning pool functional. Let's hit this grace. And then uh, when we get back tomorrow, we shall let fin finish exploring this cave here um yeah okay now it seems to technically be in the uh Kalid area but if it is it's probably the most straightforward and simple don't you know, think i'm being on the edge there it might be the the most simple of the dungeon so um we'll clear we'll have a look in here tomorrow and hopefully we can clear this out um, then we need to, uh, kind of basically check around this lower, uh, plateau down here. What's, what's the opposite of a plateau? Valley? I feel like a valley has to be bounded by a higher area on both sides. I don't know. Anyway, this area here, um, that would should cover us for Limgrave. So we'll do that tomorrow. Then if that's all good, we'll start thinking about heading back up north god this game what a game only six only 60 hours in it's nothing we are most assuredly making some measure of progress um it's it's hard to judge anything but we have defeated a couple of uh uh ever jail guys we've uh defeated uh, you know a random boss or two. We uh, jacked a great axe from uh, the caravan. Uh, we got a load of map markers. And it wasn't even a full stream today because, of course, we were doing Lone Wolf with uh, Cage earlier on. Um, 
Thank you, cop. Yeah, I like that. I like that. But then try and check out and clear an area uh, one at a time. And we've definitely come across bosses down on the Weeping Peninsula, which I've not, uh, at the time, I was like, hmm, yeah, this is kicking our ass. Uh, that's fine. I've marked them. We come back to them. They're not going anywhere. We've got loads of open areas to explore. But my God, Kalid, it's like the plane of oblivion out of the Elder Scrolls. It's worse, honestly. It's just foul, foul creatures everywhere. All mutated and freaking. And a dragon just wakes up and then <laughs> and there's just rots everywhere. And then when you get into any kind of settlement, there's just mages everywhere. Uh, horrifying. Wonderful game, though. Greatly, greatly enjoying it. Uh, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it so much. You're um, always a pleasure to have you here. So that was our, the end, this is the end of our successful Tuesday stream. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Young Vince, Kratos MVN, for the raid earlier. And thank you to Ryan for yet another gift sub. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Chins, for being here. I hope you enjoyed it, buddy. Um, and I hope that means that you've just finished up work. So hopefully fingers crossed uh it's uh you didn't have too bad of a day it was all good um what's this uh incoming uh friend request from somebody who i've never spoken to before on discord i mean that gives you a bit of a vibe doesn't it i wonder if they're a graphic artist um Excellent cop. Yeah, that's the thing. Because those bosses, we have to defeat them at some point before we finish the game. And the longer I put it off, not that I need to put it off intentionally, but the longer I put it off, the the more prepared, well, you know, a slightly tougher, slightly better weapon, whatever it may be, to uh, go and deal with it. Um, thank you, Sea Star. How are you doing, my dear? Thank you for being here. Um, yeah, did they? Did they root? Oh, did you get one? Yeah, that's the only problem, um, guys, with a, a, a Discord server, community server for streamers like the Conflux, is it does attract bots and uh, graphic art. Or maybe not even bots, but actual graphic artists who are so desperate for work because I assume they're um, there's more gra there's more am there's more uh, freelance graphic artists looking for work than there is work to be had. So they do stuff like they'll, um, you know, they'll just dive in a Discord server and like, I know, I'll friend every person in here. Uh, and if they have to send 100 friend requests uh, and get blocked 95 times, uh, there might be one person who goes, oh, hello. And they're like, buy my graphic art. Oh, okay, I guess I should do that, as you've told me to. I don't know. I, it's, it's strange. There's got to be better ways to do it. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly, Root. Yeah, so you'd be like, oh, sorry to bother you, isn't it? But I see that you're a streamer. I know this is really inappropriate, but I am extremely desperate for work. So here's my pitch, and I can go, okay, thanks, no thanks. But to send the friend request without even without a message, I I'm not going to agree to be somebody's friend when I've had zero communication with them. <laughs> not even a hello. Not even a hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly, cop. And I don't hate on them, but there's these ways to do it. Because I'm, I'm, I'm peddling my wares here. But that would be like, to me, if I'm... Um, it'd be the equivalent of joining random servers, Discord servers, and be like, Hey! All right, there, guys. You don't know me. I'm just I'm brand new here, but I'm a streamer like you, and you should come to my stream. They'd be like, "Fuck off, dickhead," and rightly so. Uh, <laughs> you know what? What are we doing here, folks? I don't know. I shouldn't hate on them. Life is tough, and not every everyone learns different le lessons through life. I, mean, I I just feel blessed. I'm not like right or no better than anybody else, but um. When I look at everything I'm, how I was raised, my own childhood life experiences, uh, the good things I've had happen to me in my life, and the awful stuff I've had happen to me, uh, my open-mindedness, um, all the you know, science and philosophy I've read, uh, 
you know, and open myself to the arts and um, open myself to other people you know, in, in conversation and understanding. I feel that, you know, it's um, brought me to a place where I'm fairly balanced out. Uh, you know, I've got my neuroses. Of course I have, you know. I've got issues. I'm not the person I'm supposed to be. I'm constantly working on that. I'm not mentally, physically, or emotionally as strong as I should be. I need to put effort into trying to make those better. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of people who, in all walks of life, they just don't know how to behave. It doesn't mean they're meaning to be assholes. They just don't know how to behave. <laughs> Whereas to me, from my perspective, from my point of view, that's the most natural thing in the world is uh, good behavior. Just be, be, treat other people well. Don't friend request someone you don't know. Don't peddle wares to somebody if unless you think they might truly benefit from it. Jeez Louise. Um anyway, Scoo! Hey, oh, you're there, Scoo. How are you doing? No, to be fair, Af, I can I, I only imagine how tough it is. It's tougher doing what they're doing than what I'm doing. And they've got more talent and skills than I have. <laughs> what well, I don't have any talent or skill. I'm just here doing a thing. So I do feel that. But um, you know, and it's unfortunate, but you understand. Maybe maybe people don't feel differently, but if I get a friend request or uh, a, from a stranger or um, somebody, a stranger peddling their wares to me, you it's having the, on me, it's having the opposite effect. Before, I didn't know you and we were neutral. Now I know of you and I don't, I'm more inclined to go to a neutral party to h employ them. I don't want to employ you now. Now, in reality, I know so many different graphic artists uh, who are, you know, friends or uh, friends of friends that I would go to them first if I need something done, as opposed to a rando. You know, it's like that pr proven reputation there and proven artwork. But um, I don't know. Not everyone thinks like I do, which I guess is better. But uh, thank you, thank you for the dropping the lurks, Skew. I appreciate it, sir. Um. Yeah, it's very oversaturated, and it's, you know, much like streaming, you know, and bless them. But um, there's ways to conduct yourself, and if it is so tough that you can't compete in the market without resorting to that kind of behavior, I feel, I feel bad. I feel bad for them. Because they put all their time and talent and effort into that, you know. Surely there's graphic art, there's... There's got to be jobs out there that are not freelance, that are working for somebody. I don't know. I shouldn't judge. Yeah, you have no idea how to behave, Aphelene, in the best possible uh, sense of the uh, the sentiment. So that's that's kind of different. <laughs> um, right, you got one as well. Yeah, I think that's what they do. They they find they stumble somehow stumble across the server, join it. Go, oh, you know, if a server that's clearly designed for streamers, and then they will a friend request every single person in the server. So how many times you got to freaking click to do that? Assuming it's a real person, not a bot. I can't imagine it being that tough. I don't know. But yeah, do do just ignore them. Um uh no uh i i haven't even looked yet root do you know somebody that you have a few channel points you're willing to commit to uh sending us over there because uh you're more than welcome to if you uh want to um welcome back ryan you've risen yeah we've had a good good uh had a good uh stream ryan we're slowly making progress it's like uh, i feel like eldering it's like you've got a block of marble and you just ching 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 you're chipping away at it trying to uh, make something out of it it seems like an insurmountable uh quest a mission endeavor but you just keep ding 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 ding, ding uh, chipping away at it you will uh you will get there uh unicorn scotch excellent did i i think it's really at five thousand points i feel like i should have uh i should be less than that i think i should be like less than five thousand but i'll take it for now uh root i'll uh but yes a uh, friend of yours friend of mine so let's go uh let's go say unicorn scotch um 
playing Gotham Knights. Perfect. That's as absolutely perfect. Let me set this up. But yeah, thank you all for being here. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Root. I appreciate that. I'm always happy to decide, but um, I'm a. Uh, I'm even more stoked. But yeah, I didn't realize the 5,000 points. I'm probably going to reduce that down to maybe encourage more people to go for that. I know uh, flexes and raffle tickets are people's favorite things, um, which I appreciate because you're invested in the channel or someone saving up for VIP. But um, it's better, in theory, uh, that you guys decide the raids than I do. But obviously, I don't want... But having it as a channel point redemption of a certain amount it ensures that it is meaningful rather than just going you know firstly you know you know someone just being like oh yeah that that guy i'm like okay well that, what's the, <laughs> it's not uh you're doing it on a whim uh, or even if it's free it's like you could you know how do i dif differentiate between regulars and people who i trust and then some rando comes in and goes raid my friend oh raid me it's um Let's find out. Don't worry about it. Even if it's not, it doesn't matter. Even if uh, if it's a friend of yours, uh, Root, then it's a friend of mine. Um, but uh, it doesn't matter to me because I've had we've had plenty of raids in the past where we've you know we've got there and been like, oh, actually, whether it's been chosen by somebody else or chosen by me, and I've been oh, um, I'm sure not with your friend, but um, uh, we shall uh, we shall see. But um, I I appreciate it. Nothing is wasted. Same as when, like, with viewers, if you get a troll or someone who doesn't like the stream, that's good. That's a that's a positive. That's a, a good thing because that's a, one less person. <laughs> Benefit the doubt and all that. But anyway, thank you so much, guys, for being here. I need to go get food. Let's go see uh, Root's friend, uh, Unicorn Scotch, uh, and um, uh, see what they're up to. And then I will return tomorrow, Wednesday. It feels like Wednesday today. It's Cage has done a number on me. Um... Oh, damn, Scoo, you're waiting on a call for hospital. God, it probably will be tomorrow now. I've got my fingers crossed for you, buddy. If you, uh, I can't talk in the middle of the night, but if you want to... If you have good or bad news tomorrow, um, and you want to come on the stream and talk about it, with, you know, with everybody, you're more than welcome to, buddy. There's no pressure, though. Anyway, let's go, uh, go see Unicorn. Get out of me, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.